what was weird is uh, I was streaming when I was streaming Dead Space. It was like yeah. I had to restart the whole PC to be able to make the stream work after about a, eight minutes of Dead Space. It was like I don't know what's going on, but um, I'm hoping it was related to the game and not just a general not a thing. Computer I guess we'll find on out. OBS or yeah, I'm hoping that we're. I guess, like I said, if one of you can pull up a stream, just let me know if it goes down. Uh, yeah, sure. Be unfortunate. up do. But yes, here we are. EFAP. Post The Last of Us Episode 3 mini. This is the next thing. It's back to, over to a game now. We like video games. I've heard you guys like them too. I've, uh, I've liked a video game or two. I've been known to enjoy the occasional video gameage. I've noticed that it's worthwhile, because sometimes we don't do it, to explain what a video game is. Basically, you have a press buttons and things happen on a screen and uh, you have to press the right buttons at the right time in order and then you get rewarded with uh, special lights and sounds basically i like lights and sounds so count me in yeah i mean uh it's brand new technology it's pretty neat i think uh hey who knows what they'll come up with next yeah i was curious to see if you guys like this whole video game craze dead space is the first one Really strange for a first attempt. You'd think they'd bring out something simpler. Um, yeah. And so, like, genre specific. Expect some new. Hmm. Yeah, you know, it made an impression. A few people bought it, talked about it. Now we're going to talk. It's going to be great. Or, as for um, uh, Act Man will be with us uh, within the hour, uh, is what he said. Um, so. I believe he's been playing it as well. I saw uh, a couple of people have given their takes on the game. Uh, generally speaking, I don't know if you guys uh, have seen different, but I've seen that most people very much like it. Certainly anybody who's completed it seems to favor it quite a bit. Yep. <laughs> well. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I guess it, it no sense like burying well, that. Sorry, guys. But um, yeah, I'm, I've, I've, I liked it quite a bit. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, yeah. And of course, we're going to be talking a lot about it. Because we don't just talk about pretty good shows like The Last of Us. Uh, we also talk about pretty good video games like uh, Dead Space Remake. That's Dead true. Space 2023. Yes, you can call it either if you want. Just don't call it just Dead Space. Because I'm going to be like, wait. The OG. No, that would be as ridiculous as naming the third Xbox console and Xbox One. That would be. That would be, yeah. That or the ridiculous. fourth God of War game, God of War. Yeah, but that everybody does that. The Tomb Raider, Thief. That's that's yeah. a common that's a common meme. The common everybody's L. afraid of the number four. Oh, I mean, it is a bit of a common L because every time you need to just put the year it came out, it's more words than just for well, God of War 2018. 2018 God of War. God of War Love and Thunder. Why wasn't it called that? No. Why? <laughs> no. 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 Love and I... Thunder. It would be so applicable. Thunder. I think if the original Dead Space was shit enough that you could say Dead Space nowadays and people would assume you're talking about the remake, but that original version, is it still holds up. Pretty stellar. Yes, it so, does. It's a pretty yeah. great game. Very, um, and that's the thing. I think we're probably going to go back and forth talking about, I guess, how well or not well they've done a thing, and then how it compares instead of, I don't know, any kind of very specific chronological... Imagine we broke down the entire original game in chronological format, and then went to this one in chronological format. <laughs> like, that would just take a little too long, maybe. I don't know. And we just don't like being long here. That's just not a thing we do. Not um, us. We're brief. Mm -hmm. We are we are the epitome of concision. But I Brevity is all of wit, as that guy said. What was his name? I don't know. I just wheel out the quote. Brevity <laughs> is the soul of wit. That the Shakespearean character. Wit is the soul of brevity. I think is what. It's brevity is the soul of wit. Who said it, brevity it, is the soul? Polonius said that in Hamlet, in Act Two, Scene Two. Oh. I don't know which line though. Um, um, I streamed the original, and then I believe it's called Strum. Recently. You strum. The past tense of stream. I done strum. strummed it. Strum, yes. I watched I some of your the, streams. I played the original, and then the remake. Mm. Stream which the is, remake. Uh, which is better. Yeah. I haven't played we, the original we, recently, but I played it so many times, like, I still know pretty much every beat of it. And, uh, great game. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, Rags, you can't be asking me that yet. We'll, we'll talk about it. All right. <laughs> we'll all right. That's it. fair. That's fair. Maybe oh, your I minds will I, change. I was going to say, it's harsh to make him answer that question so early. It's such a... Yeah, right, all right. Now, he, just, think... he just mentioned it. I don't know if he was setting himself up or if... Uh, you know, we can always right, get back well, to it. We can always Mola was it. Uh, Mola just asked me or asked everybody, have you played, you know, both games recently? And I was just saying, yeah. And then you were um, like, all right, let's... Let's lock him in. All right. Yeah, I just wanted to make you sure you were awake after. starting the stream. Really wanted to keep you on your toes. Uh, there's going to be no downtime on this stream. But uh, uh, to mm -hmm. answer your question, uh, I have not played Dead Space 1 recently, but I have played it many times through. Um, I've played Dead Space 2 many times through, and Dead Space 3, um, I'm confident in saying I've gone through it many times as well. Um, I feel like Dead Space is kind of like my sci-fi Resident Evil 4 in the sense of I've, I've just played it a lot. I really love the game's vibe and it's... There uh, are it's similarities to be made. There are, Space. yeah. That's true. You know, if you don't that, finish that, that was game even bleeding yeah. ammo, then you're uh, doing it you're wrong. doing it wrong. That's right. That's how you know you've that won. That feels very pointed. Um, that was even the 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 standpoint of the developers like they were big fans of resident evil 4 i think glenn Schofield specifically and he's like i want to do this game in space so they did pretty a much very is... good job making their own little uh sort of spacey uh horror -y version of you know third person shooter version of that i can absolutely see the influence yeah he was able to take that and make something truly uh truly remarkable with it so thank goodness for that inspiration maybe it explains why i like them both so much yeah, and but if you had to choose one, right? To... Which is it? Ooh, uh, man, that's a legitimately difficult question. I think it, mm, <laughs> it might be Resident Evil Four, but that is not a strong opinion that I have by any stretch because I like them both so much. But I, I think I'm gonna go with Resident Evil Four. I think, but even ooh, that's pushing it. Ask me in five minutes, I might have a different answer. All right, both of them use where you aim on the the bodies of the enemies in uh, towards uh, to create interesting game mechanics in very different ways because Re in resident evil 4 it's you knock them off balance and that's how you go in for the melee attacks and then you can get some bonus damage by using your knife when they're on the ground and it's a very this then that then this then that sort of system very gameplay or focused it's a very gamey game in a good way yeah. Um, yeah, and I like games that are very much games. They give you a lot of gameplay options and a lot of things to do. And I would say that the Dead Space games use the concept of like, hey, let's get the player to want to not just go for the headshot every time, you know, to, to give them reasons to aim at other parts of the body. But they go about it in a totally different way than Resident Evil 4, but I think it's as effective. And I, I don't know, I think that's, that's really, really cool. And yeah, it's also what I really is, hope uh, the Resident Evil 4 remake nails, which, uh, from the footage I've seen, it seems well, like the combat one, yeah. is pretty dynamic. We'll so, see. Looking uh, good. We will see. So then... I think, uh, Resident Space. Evil 4 has a sort of arcade feel to it, almost. It does have an We're... arcade feel to it, yeah. Iframes and, and, you know, the, the way the enemies behave and the, the different things you could do. And it's, yes. It very much feels arcadey in a wonderful way. And so it's pretty impressive that it manages to incorporate horror at the same time, like preserving the horror elements that it has. And uh, I think Resident Evil somewhat. 4 has going for it. Uh, sorry, what'd you say? I said, yeah, somewhat. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I think Resident Evil 4 over Dead Space has a, bit, a little bit more variety across multiple dimensions. Like you got a little bit more interesting environments, um, weapons that you can use. What I'm, um, what I'm, one of the things would, I'm wondering uh... about is if, if you stripped away, like if, if you just gave me the, um, like a test version of it, you know, before they make a map and like texture it, they just make the, the gray boxes and everything in the ramps. Mm -hmm. I'm curious if you gave me both games with that, if I would feel that they had, uh, like uh, if one seemed to have more interesting areas than the other, wow. because I feel like if it, like on, like, if we take away sort of the aesthetic elements, I wonder which one is actually more varied. Hmm. Right. Something I would say, now I haven't played Resident Evil 4 yet. Um, really? But really? Oh my God. Interesting. No, he is a failure. No, I'm, I, 
I haven't played a lot of Resident Evil games, um, but I uh, something I would say that I Dead Space, uh, the original, definitely feels like it. It is of the era of like the early seventh generation, you know, like early PlayStation Three, Xbox Three, Three Hundred and Sixty. That feels like a time when a lot of games were really trying to leverage like the new technology to create more novel sort of game experiences, mainly like using sort of physics engines and like baking that into the combat. Like you see that right with the use of like kinesis and all of the different wow, parts that you can like throw, <laughs> dismembering the necromorphs themselves, and then that changes the way that they move through the environment. Like it definitely feels like it was of that era. Um, well, yeah, that's the thing. And kinesis was... and stasis are huge. They're not like gimmicks. They are that part sort of, of yes. come and go. They, they are, are huge. Very... It's not like the yeah. game just forgets about them after introducing them. Yeah, the remake no, uh, in particular really revamps too. them as mechanics. And they're not just surface mechanics. They're like integrated into the world, the story, in a cool That's way. Yeah, you have to manipulate the environment with them. You have to, you know, grab distant objects with them. Uh, it's in insanely impactful in combat to where if you don't use it, you're just... Um, they, the game was intended to, you know, to play with it. And I'm curious if you could beat the Dead Space remake only using Kinesis. Um, I, I'm, I'm legitimately not sure. Enough, it, like, if there were enough things laying around in the environment that you could grab and throw at the enemies yeah yeah maybe. uh in theory i think i think it's possible to do in theory i gotta think about it uh because corpse bits themselves do inflict damage on enemies so yeah. i don't know if, yeah. if someone's out there and in, in, in crazy enough that would be an interesting thing to see if you could actually do that different yeah, every it's do much different amounts of damage too so there'd probably be some strategy of um target priority to be like if i knock this off this enemy and then throw it at that guy It'll do more damage and serve more ammunition than, and I guess um, ammunition in this case would be like the red barrels and. I'll do what I can. Point out a few highlights to the playthrough I had, and if anyone else has any, I'd welcome to show them. But since we're talking about kinesis, I did uh, grab this corpse, uh, seeing if it was worth anything. I decided to toss it out, and so if you got the stream up, this is what happened. It goes to show the power of kinesis. <laughs> <laughs> Off it goes. Felt like fucking Looney Tunes. <laughs> the kind of oh, shit yeah, that you know it's <laughs> that's a that's a an honorable miner's funeral yeah <laughs> they probably appreciate it they're not going to get turned into a monster <laughs> into now the whole yeah what a I guess the thing no, is, that would be like a, uh, a silly example of what you can like what these sorts of uh mechanics can do for you in a game where like when it's just you have a bunch of parts in the environment that you can use that are diegetic and, it, and like players can come up with really clever, inventive solutions to the problems before them, like with all of the different things in play, like different objects, necromorph parts, and then of course your own, you know, weapons as well. It's kind of like, um, you know, it's just all of the tools are available to you, and how you use them is yeah. up to you. But you have a lot of different ways to use them. It's just like a really, it's a, it's a really cool way for like games to be designed. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, in fact, it, you could say it's like just a really cool thing about games in general is that they can sort of uh, set that up for you. Yeah. Um, oh. um, what is, yeah, well, I guess, where do we begin on uh, this? Well, yeah, because we, we, we give an overall back. Maybe we... how we're feeling about this game for yeah, each individual person. I suppose we could. Sure. We go, um, um, I don't know what order. Let's go in alphabetical order based on the third letter of the person's first name okay. so i'm g is, is theo first then i think T i think mark is uh oh wait I'm no R. wait third no letter, i was yeah i was thinking of yeah. i was thinking of c that would be <laughs> theo yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm g i yeah. just wanted to keep things simple so yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. good Fox good page. thing yeah <laughs> So, uh, well, I'm N, so I'm after remake, Rags. I know that. Right? Sorry, what, go on. Sorry, what what's that, sorry? Sorry, go. No, after you. Oh, who uh, was I had nothing. <laughs> I was. Yeah. No, no, the person who's. The, we did the third letter. We've been over this. Uh, in, I thought he was asking a question detail. about the. Uh, it's very simple. simple process, yeah. <laughs> Regardless, yeah. Uh, Dead, Space is, Dead Space is a pretty cool remake. Uh, which is weird for remakes. They're usually not very good, and it's really easy for them to go wrong in really impactful ways. I'm not like tied at the hip to this being the gold standard of remakes yet. I think that 
time will tell in that regard in terms of how this ages as comp as compared to the original but it makes a lot of changes that seem really well considered in terms of actually improving the experience of the original in the same way that the original was trying to exist if that makes sense as opposed to changing things in a way that's trying to change something about how the game exists and the kind of experience it presents in a way that isn't positive for it which is the way remakes often end up going so uh, I've not had an opportunity to play it. It would like fry my PC, so that's unfortunate. Uh, but uh, I'm very pleased with it, which is again very unusual. Remakes go Wait, wrong very often. You haven't played it, and you're pleased with it? Yeah, I've seen full playthroughs, multiple. Oh, okay, okay. He's um, making sure we're on, the, making sure all on the same page here. Just making sure. Yeah, I know you. You've noticed a couple of things mechanically. This is the thing we usually say. Like you can obviously talk about it. Um, a story from viewing it, but less so mechanics. But funnily yeah. enough, there are a lot of you've seen a lot of play from this game, right? So you know how a lot of different I've... things have been changed. I would say so, and I feel fairly confident that if I say anything off base, there's plenty of people here who would know. So that was really off base. Easily just be... Oh yeah, well, we I'm would sorry. never correct you. So get your <laughs> shit straight. Yeah, you're like intimidated or something, you know. Um. Okay, which means Fringy's next. No, I think uh, Rags, Rags is next. G. Wait, yeah. Wait. Oh, you're correct. Sorry, yeah. Rags. Yeah. Somebody Rags. in I don't chat actually hate you. I, somebody in chat has helpfully laid out that the order. Wait, or what? Or does that rob it of the fun? <laughs> if I tell you what the <laughs> That's actual what this, order is. This is fun. You are correct. What we're doing here. Okay, this is you know fun. what? We, I won't tell you the order then. I won't yeah, tell you. Spoiled it. <laughs> Right, is that well, how? Yeah, you it... <laughs> Did you do the entire you alphabet? <laughs> Just, why would you do it like you this? Do it. <laughs> I think that's funny. The, in <laughs> the entirety of the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> it's like counting syllables with your fingers. You know. It's uh, it's a cheat oh. code. It, uh, it's about min maxing, right? <laughs> Which we'll talk about. Um. All right, I'm very positive on the Dead Space remake. Uh, I have no major problems. I don't think that it does anything. Um, really that poorly. Uh, there's a few, um, uh, there's a few issues here and there that I think could have been uh, tweaked and changed. There are some minor, uh, things gameplay wise that I would probably point to, but overall very positive. Um, as someone who's played Dead Space, the series, a great amount, you know, many, many times, I was very, very happy to pick up this game. See the incredible improvements that this, you know, the, the kind of graphics can give and the lighting. And, and it feels like if they made Dead Space today, what it would, you know, what it has the potential of really being. Uh, a lot of care and a lot of effort went into making this game and give it, uh, and to give it the same sort of vibe as the Dead Space series. It slots right in, gives you the same feels, uh, and it plays very much like um, Dead Space 2 and 3. Uh, in a good way, though, um, it it I'm I'm very very happy with it. We could have gotten a far worse product, um, and I think that this is a going to be used in the future to uh, sort of judge how remakes are done. Um, and we'll get into all the specifics as we carry forward these hours today. Yes, I okay. found there was a lot of minor things on the mining deck. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, it was worth it, but for a second there, I was thinking, like, oh, Fringy's gonna be so upset. <laughs> it took me a second. <laughs> Free now you can Oh, well, go. that is... Yeah, that's... It's my... De Dead Space is a pretty great game, and Dead Space Remake is a pretty great remake of a great game. It is, uh... It is so evidently the product of very thoughtful choices with regard to how to take the original game and then uh, represent it what, without losing what, uh, what was present in the original game, and in a lot of ways enhancing the material that was present in the original games. Um, it feels like it really captures the vibe and tone of Dead Space. Uh, in terms of the core mechanics, it's like, you know, in, in a lot of ways, it just feels like refinements and tweaks. Um, narratively, feels like they've made a lot of very... Uh, they, they, they've uh, been very considered in um, making changes. I think I think that's the general feeling when it comes to this remake, is that they were very considered in making changes uh, to what was already present, instead of just, you know, making changes simply for the sake of making changes to make it come across as more of a new and original experience. 
Um, but it, 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 you know, consequently, it really does feel like this new and refreshing experience, even though it's a remake of like a 15 year old game. Um, but I think it was, it was like Rag said, this feels to me like what Dead Space, the original, would have been if the team that had made it made it now with the technology that's available to them. And, you know, perhaps to some extent with the 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 foresight of like where the franchise was going to end up going. So, yeah, I'm I'm really happy with it. I enjoyed it a lot. Nice. Oh, sorry. John is John is okay. next. You Waiting for a prompt. The Actually, alphabet there's, been, and everything. There's, a, there's a helpful guide that's been posted if you need it. Be assertive. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. That's right. Um, I loved it. I had a blast. And I have to admit, like, I was of two minds of, like, this slew of remakes that are coming our way. Because, um, like, if you're a survival horror fan, you're probably aware. We got this. We got Resident Evil 4. We got Silent Hill. And uh, there's another one coming. I can't remember. Uh, Alone in the Dark. They're remaking that, too. So a are lot they? of survival oh, yeah. horror remakes uh, this year. Out, yeah, there's a bunch. So I was, like... I'm kind of looking forward to them, but at the same time, it's like, maybe people should be making new shit. Um, but you know what? If they do a really good job with these, I'll happily take it. And this was the case with Dead Space. And I love the first one. It sort of came out of nowhere. I remember, like, I first got my PS3, and I'm like, I gotta get some games for this thing. And I was looking at the cabinet, and I saw Dead Space 1. And I saw the box art and I knew nothing about it. I didn't hear anything about it in anywhere on the internet or in magazines or anything. And uh, I saw the box art of like the floating hand in space and it looked kind of spooky. And I was like, hmm, what's this? Uh, that might look, that might be cool. Uh, I don't have high expectations, but hey, it's, it's survival horror. Looks like it's in space. I need PS3 games. So I'll grab that. And I was blown away. It's like, holy shit, this is really good. I can't believe it's an EA game. Like, where did this come from? And so I heard about this remake, and right away, like, I was looking at the developer videos on it from EA Motive, and they seemed to really care about the thing they were making. They were going into a lot of detail about the systems. Like, the, there's a system dedicated to just the way Isaac breathes in this game. And there's also, like, a flesh-peeling system that's its own thing. And it's just like, wow, it looks like they're putting a lot of care into this. So as soon as I got that sense, I was like, I'm on board. This is probably going to be good. And then I got it, and I had a blast playing through it again. And because it was a remake, I knew, like, they're probably going to largely stick to the, the beats of the first game, but there's probably going to be new things here and there enough so that it makes the playthrough of the remake interesting because you're always wondering what's going to be around the next corner, what they might have changed. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I loved it. I had a blast and I went right on to new game plus right after. And I imagine I'll be replaying this for quite some time. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's my piece. <laughs> I want to chance that I really hate the phrase flesh peeling system. Oh yeah. 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 Don't don't they call it something like that? Well, EA motive? I'm not sure what they, they call it. it the, that's all. I think it is the, the best oh, okay, way to yeah. describe it would be that each uh the models of enemies in the game, uh pretty much all of them, uh, as well as uh human corpses, they are they're essentially they have layers to them. They have the yeah. external layer, which is like the clothes, skin, et cetera, or et cetera. And then if they take damage from like an explosion um or something similar, then you that layer essentially the model changes to the layer underneath which could be just like flesh and muscle um and, and things like that and then there's another layer underneath where it's just like really almost skeletal, skeletal. yeah um, yeah well you see it like if you use the force gun on enemies up close it just peels oh, everything it off honestly yeah, great that's surprise a great, playing the that game that's a great detail yeah when i played uh, well, through and i got well. the force gun and the first time i used that thing i was like yo this is really cool the fact that now i'm it's like it blew off all the external bits and i'm fighting these spooky spooky skeletons well, so i feel like we should almost because there's a lot to talk about in terms of these systems and the diegetic uh like ways of conveying uh information to the player so yes. or like mechanical benefits of these sorts of systems. So maybe we should table it just for now. Wow. You mm -hmm. just you just silenced John, but okay. That's, that's, <laughs> that. 
Marcus. Mark, it's now your turn. All right. Um, I, 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 I think I can go as far as to say that this is probably the gold standard of remakes of action horror games from the early or mid two thousands, I guess. And we can only hope scope that was Resident getting smaller and smaller there as you went. Well, on. but I mean, like, there's enough of them coming out that it's uh, it's actually kind of a relevant scale. Because mm -hmm. uh, honestly, if Resident Evil Four can just be this for Resident Evil Four, I'm in. Like that's <laughs> I, I honestly think that it did a great job of feeling like Dead Space, very specifically feeling like the game Dead Space, while also feeling like a game that came out in 2023 instead of 2008. As Rags was saying, it implemented a lot of the best systems of oh, well, Dead Space 2, because I didn't really talk too much about my history with the series, but I have not played Dead Space 3 to this day. You and, should. Um, I, d I actually do plan on it. Uh, X-Ray Girl's playing through the remake, so I'm hoping that she'll play two after that, and then maybe I can co-op through three with her. And um, yeah, I think well. it'll be interesting, because I won't be able to say, yeah, what's coming up is scary, because it'll be new to me, too. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually, I played Dead Space 2 for the first time. I finished it after I finished Callisto Protocol, so it was just um, this past December. And uh, I loved it, and I, I played a good chunk of Extraction on the Dolphin emulator. It's the the Wii game. That's the and, Wii, uh, yeah, the rail shooter. Yeah, it's uh, it's actually not not terrible, like for a, for a, a Nintendo Wii rail shooter. Uh, but, uh, did you play uh, Resident Evil Umbrella Chronicles? Yes. Yeah, I did. <laughs> you ever play that? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe there was just a thing around that time of making rail shooter versions of other franchises. Uh, because it's the easy, it's the easiest genre to make a quick Wii game for. And I kind of, I kind of miss them. Uh, I wish that yeah. there were more. Maybe there are, and I just don't know about the treasure trove of all the rail shooters out there. But they, they never really. Um, they're like a hide, like seek and find games, you know, where there's a bajillion of them out there, but you just never hear about them. Virtual reality is the medium for them now. If um, like there, there are still really decent, what are essentially light gun shooters. It's just their VR games. Like mm -hmm. plenty of them All where right. you're you're on rails and you're just shooting because that some makes sense for VR. Yeah, VR movement. And um, I, honestly, one of the one of the earliest VR games I ever played is still one of the most fun, and it's a Space Pirate Trainer, which is Space Pirate <laughs> it, Trainer. It's you're just you're standing on like a platform. And you, you have a weapon in each hand. You can switch the weapon, be it a lightsaber kind of thing or a couple guns, a, a burst fire weapon, a little pistol, a shotgun. And you're just fighting these little drones that shoot lasers at you. And you, you can pull out a shield and block the lasers with a shield or dodge them. But uh, you're just standing there and fighting enemies that like going for high scores. But it's, it's tons of fun because the mechanics are really solid and it's flashy and kind of looks like Tron. Yeah, light gun shooters. Anyway, uh, Dead Space remake, re really, really good, and I hope that um, I hope that more remakes in the future do as good a job of capturing the spirit of the original while bringing new mechanics to the table. And if they're a remake of an original game to which for which there was several sequels, bringing improvements that were in the sequels to the original, I think, is a really good thing. Like adding the zero G movement from Dead Space Two. Being able to impale things with telekinesis, which I think was also a Dead Space 2 thing. That, that, that stuff's all really cool to see in this. And I think a lot of the storytelling changes that they made, um, in particular Isaac talking, ended up really benefiting the experience in, in a way that I think adds to it more than it takes away for sure. All right, then. Uh, yeah, JoJo, I know. What does JoJo think about Dead Space? <laughs> oh, she's super cranky about it. Oh, yeah, that's a shame. Like Lord, that's a shame. Normally, a shame. it's Theo's job. Not a yeah. fan, huh? Well, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go Today, now. Today, I'm afraid. Here I go. Um, <laughs> so, funnily enough, the 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 big old fight that Dead Space One and Two often have between people who prefer one or the other is between the fact that Dead Space Two seems to update everything to make it uh, smoother and more fluid and connect everything better. Everything just feels less clunky. But the first one has the benefit of the atmosphere being, at least a lot of people say, more consistent in terms of its approach to the horror, and that uh, a lot of people often fight over the Ishimura versus the Sprawl, with the Ishimura usually winning. Um, well, I mean, it, it could be 50-50. I feel like this game has sorted that out now, that um, it's got a lot of inspiration from the updates the series made as it went along, at least the ones that uh, a lot of the fans preferred. 
like the Isaac you play in this is much more like Dead Space 2 Isaac than Dead Space 1 Isaac. Um, but the thing is, yeah. they've updated the game itself to essentially match that. It was a bit of a shock for me when I was first playing it because every enemy is a lot faster and a lot more aggressive, which is fine because I get to be a lot faster and a lot more aggressive. So uh, once you get used to it, it's all like, it just fits. And at this point, it's just like, oh man, I feel like I've got the best of both worlds. My complaints at Echo Rags. I do have them, but I don't think they're going to be able to chip away very hard at what was a fantastic experience overall. And, oh um, yes, the scales are very decidedly tipped in one direction. It's uh, it's it's going to be one of my favorite games, but in, you know, there's this sentiment of like, you know, you mean Dead Space, the original is your, one of your favorite games, right? And it's like, but the thing is, this one, it, it does so much of that one. That one might say, basically, the two sides of this coin, it's like, if you're not faithful, people will shit on you for that. But if you are, to the point of being so accurate and entertaining, some people might be like, I not really give you credit for being good. You know, it's, it, it goes <laughs> to the older game. And it's because like, um, there is a review yeah. of the game that is already making the rounds that makes that argument. Um, I don't know what to say about that. I, uh, I, I don't know how a, a, an adaptation can win anymore. I don't know what it's supposed to do anymore. Like, if if being too accurate is a problem because it doesn't get any appreciation, but being inaccurate is obviously nightmare fuel for people as well, then I don't know. Um, but at that point, yeah, I would rather just talk about what experience this generates and how well this was made and whether or not it comes from Dead Space 1, Dead Space 2, or even 3 in terms of what mm. things they did in what places. I want to talk about what works and what doesn't. Um, it should be fun. But yes, huge thumbs up to this wonderful game that I'm looking forward to playing again. Thumb in the bum. Which leaves just the act man, but he's not here yet, though he's on the way. He said he's uh, getting Wait, himself ready. So. Was Is it the act man so we do he's the E in the or the T in act? Well, as you can see, Muller has chosen the <laughs> T in act. Interesting. That's I, an interesting creative decision. I know. <laughs> I In my head, I think I did it the same as a lot of people categorize like uh, movies where they knock off the thes sometimes. Yeah, I, I think you made. I think you made the right call. I'm with it. How I mean, you should have recorded it is yeah. Act Man the. You know, with a Act comma. Man yeah. the comma. Yeah. <laughs> the it's like your DVD collection, The Lord of the Rings. You know, <laughs> it's under L for Lord, obviously. Uh, the Steam Library collection does that. I saw someone mention this. Is it weird that I kind of view the word Warhammer that way in the Steam Library? The Warhammer all... 40,000? Well, no, because <laughs> what every single Warhammer game and Warhammer 40k game is it says Warhammer. Yeah, once or you get Warhammer to the W's down there. And I'm just like, oh, I just want to say Vermintide or Darktide. Like, it's so much easier for me to find. I saw someone mention that he hasn't finished the game yet. It's going to be a bit awkward to talk about everything if he hasn't. <laughs> um, I'm sure that depending on his progress, he'll have plenty to add. Oh yeah, I just, I want to talk about the ending, as I imagine all of you will have stuff to say about how they did certain things in the story as the game progressed, you know? In any case, um, shall we start, we're going to do like a highlights reel, I think, and then talk about what comes up, where it comes up, but um, I guess we can start from the beginning. It's fun because you see this shit in trailers and stuff, and you're like, "I remember all of this." Just the graphics are all big now. Look at them go. No, when you say when you say start off with a highlight reel, what do you mean by that? No, not start off with a highlight reel. I said start off with the beginning, and we're going to talk in a sense oh, of a okay. highlight reel, going through the lot okay. of it, and you can pick uh, and choose you. whatever you want to talk about. He talks. He does talk. Let's talk about that. Isaac <laughs> talk. Isaac <laughs> talks. Isaac is like a human being in this universe, and he has things to say. Um, let me do so, it let's... now. Let me do devil's advocate immediately. I don't like it because it it takes away from my experience of feeling like I am the player. Listen to this guy talk. It, it's taking away from what the original managed and to I achieve. A follow up question would be: So you don't really like Isaac in Dead Space two and three, right? That's okay. Oh, so it's funny you say that because I've seen a person address that by saying <laughs> he's not as annoying in those as he is in this. Uh, he's not as annoying. Okay. In two and three, is he's in the, this is because Isaac doesn't really say that much here. I'd, I, I'd be curious if he has more spoken lines in this game or two and three. I think he has the most in three. I maybe? have to classify the majority of his dialogue in Dead Space Remake is pragmatic and absolutely prompted, not like yes, not he's like, not chatty. whoa, that just <laughs> happened. He is. Yeah, uh, yeah. If he only ever comments on the situations as they arise. Whoa, whoever knew being on a spaceship would be so and, radical. By the way, I, <laughs> What's the deal with all these necromorphs? Whoa. 
Isaac talking is like a strict improvement. He's a character now. He has a perspective. He has agency, or a lot more agency than he had in the original. In that he he actually improvises plans. He yep, kind he of is suggestions. Like, he figures things out and goes and does things on his own accord. Has a perspective on the members of his crew. Cares about people. Um, it's just a strict upgrade. I thought like, it was really I, neat I that you can yes. um, you can walk up to Johnston and he'll be like, "Hey, uh, like, are you How okay your about ankle? your ankle?" Yeah, yeah. like, oh, yeah, that's right. And that's reflected. Uh, again, we're going to be jumping around a lot, okay? But I'm literally going to jump from the beginning right to the end now, uh, where he reaches out and tries to help Kendra. Um, that that shit. I was like, oh, because even after everything yeah. she's done, I wish I could have seen that, Molly. Yeah, that sounds I like know. it'd be really cool. <laughs> we'll get to that. Uh, we'll get to that and later. Then, uh, <laughs> after that, he has a he has a pretty Chad line, <laughs> screaming at the giant hive mind. Yeah, yeah. At the end, because that's kind of like it, it feels like because uh, Gunner Wright coming back to play the role. It's like, man, you wouldn't think it's been ten years since he last played this character. He it just feels right like it's totally, it's really impressive. It's cool. It's really great, yeah. yeah and it's and, really um, cool that they brought him back. I, I want to say, like, I've been on record as of, uh, I believe, Fringin' Rags. I, can't, I don't want to speak for anybody, but uh, Dead Space, the original, is one of my favorites. The old-timer, it's fantastic. I, I love think Dead this Space. is simply an improvement. It's just better. I agree. Like, I think this game, well, like the original, it misses some of what makes silent protagonists valuable in terms of immersion, yeah. because Isaac speaking is very much prompted in this game, and the fact that he doesn't in the original... It weird. jars slightly, yeah. It's it's very wow. strange in several instances because people are talking directly to him and like very much prompting his input. And it was the there. era. It was just the era when games hadn't decided yet whether they wanted their characters talking more. Like it, it's kind of because it was the same with like you know Modern Warfare, right? Like the clear example in Modern Warfare, Soap doesn't talk. And then in Modern Warfare Two, he talks a lot until you play as him, and then he doesn't talk anymore. Yeah, it's like <laughs> why? Oh, it's because he's the player character, and player characters don't talk. It's like, is that? Are we? Yeah. St do we think that still, or like we changed our minds on that? That's you know, like, a there's, silent. Sorry, go on. There's uh, uh, validity to both sides of this execution, like we're saying, like player insert versus responding oh, sure. to the characters around you as you normally would. Like, because it just it's it does seem kind of weird, except in the context of a video game where you're willing to accept, okay, the player is me. So, and there there is a degree of immersion that is achieved through that. But uh, I I don't mind him talking to other people. I don't mind I that he's like a character it. on his own. I, well, I don't was, mind the yeah. Go ahead. As was just in sort of implied, I, I, maybe someone didn't connect why we were talking about his agency when that's a different thing from him speaking at all. It's like the reason they're connected is that a lot of his dialogue is him making suggestions and talking about how he can solve yeah. the problems or where we should go next. And he, it's usually related to him being an engineer, which is really cool. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He, he is the sole driving force in most of the specifics of the plot, like the mechanical aspects of the plot being... What is broken on the Ishimura? How does it need to be fixed? And who needs to do it? The answers are pretty much always Isaac. Yeah, most of the time. And then sometimes Hammond and Kendra will have like something to offer that Isaac doesn't know or like can guide mm -hmm. him to a place. But then there's also just like one of the big things as well is that he can just like openly express concern for like other people, which feels like one of those big... Like, if you were to describe Isaac, it's like, he's in a situation that he's really not equipped to deal with, but he tries his best anyway, um, and tries to save as many people as he can. Like, that's basically who Isaac is. Um, and it's, like, really good to be able to have just more of that material, because he's able to express, like, his perspectives and concerns, and, you know, when people are fighting, it's like, shut the fuck up, we need to fix this problem, all right? You can sort that yeah, out I later, or, you know, like, actually trying to find, you know... Nicole and and like you know, like mm -hmm. I mean of course that is a big thrust that he has things to say about Nicole like well, Nicole, yeah the, Nicole, Nicole has things to say about story, him her as a story element was the reason I was most afraid of the the voiced Isaac being in this game because I think that more so than even the player insert aspect I think the stronger argument for a silent Isaac or argument as to why it worked in the original was. The, there was an element of surreal to the storytelling in the original where Hammond seemed like he was maybe hiding something and 
Nicole, you weren't sure. Was she a ghost? Is this holograms that he's seeing? Is it an actual person? Is she alive? Is she a zombie? Like what, what's going on? And not being able to know what Isaac's thinking and how he's reacting to those things, I, I think helped immerse the player in a way that went beyond, oh, I feel like this is me and more into the, oh, oh this is a, a strange world that I'm experiencing. However, I think that it, like the result is better with him speaking. So it's like, well, and, and I was 50, 50 on it for a long time. I was like, eh, I don't know. I think it's maybe a net neutral overall, but when you, when you kind of go through the game a second time, especially and like reflect on the, the choices they made, it really is a lot better having him as, I mean, I think Fringy hit the nail on the head with the driving force of the story aspect. Um, I think really helps Isaac become a lot more relatable. I think he's incredibly likable. Uh, he's I think so likeable. too. Yeah, I really like him. I um, it's, I, it's just it's just the thing, right? The guy in a situation that he's not prepared to deal with, but he tries his best is super endearing. Yeah, in the original when he doesn't talk, you still like him in the sense of he's kind of an underdog in the situation and he tries yeah. really hard and you know he's fighting through all this stuff and you feel bad for him because he's in this situation. But now you have all that plus the fact that he's like a character and he talks well, and just, you know has perspective. Kind of like Everybody likes Isaac in Dead Space, or my, I, I'm pretty sure everybody likes Isaac in Dead Space too. And it's like, I, I feel like you just get to bring a lot of that, what was there that, that made him likable over into one. Oh, yeah. And it almost makes it like that if you imagine this as leading into two or three, it becomes like a more, uh, yeah, I guess to some extent you say more coherent character overall because it's like, well, he's always been this way. We get to see like what Isaac in Dead Space 2 would have been like. Uh, you know, if he was actually present in uh in the original, um, rather than the silent version. This uh, silent protagonist thing always makes me think of Stick of Truth. How funny that was! Uh, they would like make fun uh, of yeah, the yeah, fact that he just... never talks. It's like, oh, strong yeah. silent type, huh? You think you're some kind of hot yeah. shot? Cat got your <laughs> tongue? <laughs> like, like <laughs> a lot of those games were parodying like tropes and conventions of video games and i mean that's one of them right <laughs> it's, yeah uh, well they made fun of audio logs as well which is really funny yeah it's um it it has i mean i don't want to say like outright you know it, it does it did have a benefit in dead space one there's going to be a lot of people who had that experience of feeling more immersed as a result it's possible yeah. it's definitely a thing it's just that uh i don't know how they could have implemented this better i don't know how maybe like it, it tweaks to make the dialogue more snappy or, or um whatever but i feel like they did a pretty stellar job it could have been so much worse especially with all the examples we've been having oh, absolutely. lately absolutely it could have been worse like of, uh, that's basically yeah. where i'd be coming from because they didn't they lost something they didn't lose much though and they gained a lot yeah it was a very um, well chosen compromise and i think maybe i should use the word creeped out other than immersed because when you're not hearing isaac's reaction to things it is a little creepier it's like hmm. mm-hmm what actually is happening here whereas they they lost a little bit of that creepiness and then gained a lot of character he's able to Fair be a character change. and any jarring senses from him just not participating in conversations people are having with him is gone um well um i'm trying to think of what well should we mention i guess the graphical update is that with uh, going over I it is. I think it absolutely is worth going over. Um, the game the, is gorgeous. The lighting. The lighting is incredible. Yeah. A lot of work went into making the lighting for this game look as good as it does and as dynamic as it is. Um, it absolutely and totally 100% changes the atmosphere. Um, this game, if you play the original, you go back to it. If you've forgotten and look at screenshots and gameplay, it looks like a game from when that game was made. Um, yeah. It looks it, uh, like a good looking one from when it was made, but it, it does, yeah. It looks like a game from 2008, for sure. Yeah, it, it, and we have, we've, we've had so many improvements graphically since then in video games and just overall, and the lighting element turns this into a super tense and extremely atmospheric and foreboding place. Um, you have elements where there's a lot of light, you have elements where there's a lot of darkness, a lot of shadows. Um, you get a lot of variety in the way that, you know, environments, uh, how you interact with environments. Uh, you don't, you, you feel an unease being in the darkness uh, because it's like dark, dark. Um, video games, sometimes video games don't do darkness quite right. 
in the way that the light interacts with objects. I think we've probably all played video games where the environment might might be really dark, but like a, an enemy, a, a player or an NPC, they don't quite catch the light right, so they sort of stand out. Um, mm. But yeah. this game absolutely nails uh, the the atmosphere and using the darkness. And of course, you know the textures are really excellent. The Ishimura as a ship is full of props and knickknacks and doodads scattered everywhere. Everything from the the way that the, the the walls and the floors and the ceilings, the way that the necromorphs look, the the way that the biomass is represented, the effects of the guns and what they do, there is no denying that this is a modern game, and it looks incredibly good because of it. For that aspect alone, anyone who's maybe not even that interested in Dead Space, but wants to, who but who's big into atmospheric and immersive games. Just that alone, I think, is worth uh, having you take a look at this. There were well, countless sorry. moments in playing the campaign where I just stopped for a second and just looked around, and I was like, oh, look at this. There'd be yeah. hallways, especially in the valor, where I looked down, and I was like, that is fucking scary. <laughs> like, a <laughs> distant that, hallway that, uh... with loads of flickering lights, clear, like, blood-stained walls, and just things thrown around. You're just like, oh, look at that. That's creepy. The game being willing to get properly dark in like yeah. i mean literally dark most games tend to shy away from that because players like to be able to see but it's used to really really strong effect in the remake necessitates your flashlight the flashlight I, I was saying this on on metal show yesterday the flashlight in the original kind of seemed more like it was a lighting effect to just make it look nicer whereas in this one it feels like a tool which you a lifeline in this use. yeah it's yeah like, no, it's you, like you, you it's like a flashlight die. in the darkness yeah yeah, it Weird. felt a lot more cosmetic in the first one where you don't really need it. You can sort of like squint through the darkness in the original and make out when an enemy's coming at you. Whereas here, it's actually like pitch black and you need to point your gun to be able to see anything. And uh, regarding video game remakes, it's a lot more easily justifiable when you're dealing with the horror genre in particular. Because like the, the graphical fidelity adds so much to the scare factor and the immersion that it's like like uh if oh, like the wind waker remaster for example it's like whatever it like a little too much bloom but Still it looks 30, fine yeah. i guess but like do we did we really need this um but in the case of like horror games like this it's like yeah great graphics awesome well, it's it, this game could really use it these are going to be a series of arguments, essentially, as to leading to why, like, this deserves a bit more praise than simply, like, what remasters often get, or what... Yeah. You know, this this is a lot. They put a, We haven't even covered anything yet, well, but, I mean, uh, You know, like, ob uh... obviously, the thing we just said is covering the entire <laughs> game, you get this experience. Like, they, they, well, they didn't skimp at any point in the game in terms of how everything looks, it feels. Uh, like, they man. went through with a fine toothbrush to make everything... I mean, it's funny because I've got we've got all of these bits of footage on screen, and all of it, every time, the lighting is something to talk about. It seriously needs celebrating. It's incredible. Kind of a redemption cry for the uh, Frostbite engine too. Like after Battlefield twenty forty two, it's Frostbite. wild to think that that a Frostbite game is one that I think, I'm looking at. Like, wow, I'm gonna this is the future, now. I'll man. stand up for Frostbite a little bit. I think Frostbite is way more lovely than people give it credit for. Um, yeah, it's, it's I think I think Battlefield one poorly. in particular is it looks gorgeous even yeah. now. Um, uh, Frostbite's uh, it, you could do a lot of really great stuff with that game. Um, and uh, I think this just goes to show it. It's kind of like, um, it's like Unity, you know? Give it to the right people, and that game, you know, that engine that can yeah. really shine. Hello, I sense some, some quality video game discussion going on in here. Oh, yeah. Hi, we're talking about the video games. How are, you, video. how are you doing in terms of your playthrough? How far into the game are you? Uh, chapter 10. So... Oh. I think <gasps> that's most of the way. It is most. Yeah, of yeah. I've done, I've chopped it up into like three chapter streams since there's twelve chapters. So that's four streams. And Did then, you play so. the original Act Man? Do you know what's coming? Like <laughs> in the end, or? Oh yeah, he's obviously okay. played. Yeah, the I, I, I well, played the first right. one like six times, and then oh, I only good, played good, the good. second one like once or twice. Wow, lame. The only awkward thing like... about it is there's <laughs> technically spoilers. <laughs> Do you know, uh, telling Ackman there are spoilers is a spoiler. I already, <laughs> I already know that there's probably some spoilers. I've, I already yeah. know the story, you know? No, that's the thing. <laughs> you don't. How you do don't. I say this without yeah. spoiling anything? 
There's nothing so, yeah, like, I guess the general story is still the same. Yeah. But uh, there are some things that happened that I wasn't expecting and was pleased to see. So, yeah. Uh, oh, same. Like uh, they took the the phone call from Dead Space Two and they put it into the into this game. That's right. Mm -hmm. They did the opening. Uh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Did. The game actually ends with Isaac looking at the Abraham Lincoln Monument, and it's an ape. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was standing on the beach looking at the Statue of Liberty buried in the sand. Oh, no, you no, bastards, no! Sets no. a, 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 a radical new direction. <laughs> well, anyway, I like it. Um, why don't you? Do you want to give an overview? What do you? What do you think of it, uh, Mr. Man? Uh, it's better than better than the original, and the original was a masterpiece. So, damn, wow. cut right to it. <laughs> Yeah. Wow, how do you that's really? Bad, feel? That's about it, man. That's you know what? I don't really, blame really you at good. all for for concluding that. Uh, not not a one bit. We've talked about um sort of Isaac getting updated with a voice and uh, the graphical update, and obviously we were just talking about lighting. So we're really just jumping through topics. Um, and I suppose that I don't mind anybody taking the reins on anything they want to talk about next. Well, let me see. Um. Uh... Well, so I think that... it... Go ahead. Go for Go it. No, done. you know, actually, you blame for our force cool. gun combo. Well, fine. <laughs> um, if we're gonna sort of talk, we can uh, let's give our, I guess, impression of the opening sequence up to when you uh, get the plasma cutter. Might that might be a little chunk that we can discuss if you have anything to say about that? Yeah. Um, the opening of Dead Space. It's a great way to sort of set off, set off uh, or set out to um, you know start your game. Uh, you and the other members of the Kellyan are going to the USG Ishimura to fix a communications blackout, uh, something that's un unprecedented. And um, things go awry. You get inside barely. You're ambushed by necromorphs, and you have to run for your life until you get your first gun. Uh, classic uh, horror start, one that I um, enjoy immensely from the first Dead Space, very iconic to me. I think they really did an excellent job of uh, remaking it in the remake, uh, the dialogue feels um, changed, but suitable. Uh, mm -hmm. Characters talk to each other. Um, I I like sort of the, the way that they chat back and forth as they walk in. Um, and it, and it, I just think they, I think they did a really good job. It's not so different that it feels strange. It feels familiar, and yet um, it feels, I don't know. I, I guess respectful might be a word that, because if you get the chance to do a remake. There might be that little voice in your head that says, you know, change, you'll do, you know, make all these changes, do all these changes, but the whole Let's game. Let's add a Ferris wheel to the hangar. Yeah, yeah, a Ferris <laughs> wheel. But it feels like they really, really, really like Dead Space, and they want to keep it what it is, while at the same time making changes to it that make sense. And from the beginning, you get that vibe, and throughout the game, you get that vibe. Uh, that vibe. Um, they didn't ruin it. They didn't, you know, do anything to spite it. They really respect what the game is. It it accomplishes what Dead Space, the original, accomplished really well with its intro, which is it's very quick about getting you into the game, such and then letting you off the hook in terms of scripted sequences and like busy work to take care of before you can just start engaging with the mechanics and like getting yourself into it, as opposed to like getting through premise material. It's very yeah, it efficient. doesn't waste your time. It is, yeah, yeah it it's is kind efficient. of interesting, right? In the uh, because a lot of a lot of especially you know like narrative focused third person action games now can like have a beginning section that kind of lasts for a while before like the game proper begins. But obviously here, because they're keeping it the same as in the original, it's like yeah, five minutes in, you're basically good to go. <laughs> it's like this is the game now. Like you're in the core gameplay we, experience. If we strip everything away, it's you want to be on a spaceship shooting monsters right how, yeah. how fast can you get us to that it's like yeah we gotta you gotta indulge a little bit we gotta give you characters yeah, in the should, location they should have a little bit of build up yeah well it's it's just down, a bit more of it, it, the, uh, it, it has a good more, flow yeah. to it too because it's sit down and listen to some exposition while you're on the ship walk down a narrow pathway and get a little bit of atmosphere as you're seeing the hangar bay open this door notice things are a bit weird go through this door hit that switch Watch a horrible thing happen, run away from an enemy, now the game started. Yeah, it's all the I details think, uh, of how come yeah. there's no one here to greet us? How come there's nobody well, in the observation <laughs> deck? You know, where is everybody? And then you see some of the, you know, Isaac comments, like when he sees the blood on the security station, he's like, is that? You know, then there's, 
it, it just feels like it's a really good version of the original, you know, the original game's opening. And that I, was a, I think that was a great reason... little. Sorry, go ahead. Go for go it. Ahead. Go for it. I was a, there was a great little addition. I think Rags just mentioned it there, where he, Isaac's walking into the little corridor to do a diagnostic, and he sees blood on the floor. That wasn't in the original game, but it was just a tiny little detail. Like if you w walked into an environment like that and you saw blood pooled on the floor, that would be seriously concerning. And like an element of you don't even. It's just yeah. enough to maybe assume it's a weird oil, right? Maybe. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, Catch up. Maybe. Okay. Who knows? Well, Hammond's rushing me along oil, to get this diagnostic. Fluid. So whatever. Yeah. yeah. Part of the uh, reason I think that they can be so expeditious in a lot of ways with the storytelling is because so much of it is in text logs and audio logs. Like you've got your core mm -hmm. beats. But then so much of the world gets fleshed out and what happened on the ship in particular gets fleshed out in all of the logs you can find. And I think there are way more logs in the remake than there were in the original. It felt like I was picking them up a lot more often. Yeah, it does um, feel like that. There was just tons of stuff. And it's like a variety to the text logs as well from like people's sort of personal notes to like official reports, communications between people, correspondence, emails back and forth, newsletters and newspapers. It's just like there's so much like story to gleam from that and also just the environments as you're moving through them like it's all of the little set dressing um the the details it was kind of it, it, this this is one of the best looking games ever made as far as i'm concerned um yeah like at least right now technologically but it's worth you know commending you know talking about the lighting system and how that's been used and all of the set dressing and the props and everything like the art direction is really great here yeah it's, and uh, the obviously they absolutely really, really knew what they were doing they had solid they inspiration, right? <laughs> yes, they, they tied did. into some of the lore stuff in the environment, too. Uh, we were talking on Forge That's yesterday right. about the audio log where the guy talks about ripping out his teeth. I didn't realize, but apparently, I think it was metal. That's pliers. Yeah, like if you look in the sink <laughs> that's right by there, that the teeth are still mm -hmm. in there. Yeah, I was like, oh, in, uh, that's, that's engineering, really yeah. Well, and there's the one uh, where you find the log of the guy who's found what a. Uh, uh, Mercer's sort of patient was up to trying to steal shit from mm -hmm. mining, and when he finds out, he shoves him into the um the store uniform like changer, and it crushes him and like fucks him up. It, it, you hear the warnings and stuff, but if you look over on the other side of the room, you can see the whole damaged store and a bunch of blood and bones and stuff just sticking out of it. It's like oh, you got the uh, the dude who cuts off his limbs to try and stop himself. Oh from yeah, yeah, off, yeah. And he's just laying there that. with the yeah with the cutter and his arms sitting there. Like, something that's cool that they've done that feels like it was more pushed here than before is kind of like these smaller running stories through each chapter, where, like, you kind of get just insights into one particular person and their experience on the Ishimura as it fell apart. And it's, like, very focused with, like, little elements in the environment, and then, of course, the logs. And then usually there might be, like, one or two scenes or, like, critical lines of dialogue that kind of acknowledge whatever they were going through or what happened to them. Um, it's just like, like there's really... so many more video logs, too like videos that play I out think, in front oh, of the, the player. holograms the holograms in particular there, there's definitely yeah. a lot more yeah. of those I, I think it might be this team really zeroed in on what was cool about the storytelling in the original game and ea on they they used to know that because there are a bunch of supplemental materials for dead space like animes and they have these motion comics we, we mentioned the wii game a little bit earlier and almost all of them are different perspectives of what's happening around Aegis 7 and the Ishimura. And it, it is, it is kind of neat to be like, hey, when this went down, what was the security team doing? What was medical doing, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's a lot of storytelling meat there. It feels like they brought a lot of that into here where we just get a little bit more on information on what was happening as everything fell apart. It's, it's crazy to think that if the story in the original were one big, like, string, let's say, one big line, when they were making this game, they, like, sort of, like, Tony Stark level, like, took all the pieces apart, moved different things around, extended some pieces, shortened others, moved this, moved that, and then put it all back together again. Like, uh, you can, there's so many small and then bigger changes all over the place, not in just what happens in the story, but also how the story is delivered, that, um, it's kind of like... It, it kept me off, uh, it would hit me off guard every once in a while, because I'd be like, oh, I'm so familiar with this, enemy spawns there, yeah, I know that, I use this, and there's, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and then I'm like, wait, what? what is this? What is, I've never seen this before, and then yeah, it's and like... Yeah, then you get to the hangar, and then it's, and then it's like, oh, now you can fly around and go to the back of the hangar, and you're like, Whoa. oh, that was so cool. 
Yeah, was, you could. Uh, you find. Is it a log saying, like, I moved Peng? And it's like, where's the Peng trophy? What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's <laughs> always Peng. They're always Peng. And, and yeah. That was a really cool moment. That stuff is awesome. Like, uh, it's a real cool. Yep. And it's why I would say it's like a cover song or a remix of the game. It's, uh, you don't quite know what little flavors are going to come up. Um, but I, I would say, like, yeah, the logs, um, I feel like they may have had a cap in the original game on how long they would make them for the sake of players who are reading them. But in this one, like, some of them, I'm assuming you guys, some of them I don't know are, if you yeah, read long. all of them, yeah. but... I read basically all of them, yeah. The one that specifies what the, um, the CEC, like, is, and what, what the Ishimura is, and, like, well, planet cracking, I was like, I ended up reading that whole thing on stream, I was like, man. Yeah, it was like a newspaper long. <laughs> yeah. kind of article, yeah. yeah. I think it's one of the crew decks. The I love the about. idea of planet cracking just like hey we're we're dying for resources let's just destroy a planet and just like what's the whole process behind that you it's even mentioned that sci-fi kind of thing to happen yeah uh, like you that could giant ball you could just you believe it you could just believe it because they make a big deal about it and they show all the gravity tethers and the yep. fact the ship's designed for that and you're like you know what i believe you sure <laughs> yeah i believe you <laughs> And it's if also a really convenient way to get a ship way out into the middle of nowhere for that lovely, like, what? isolated yeah. feeling. That's yeah, where thing, hopefully nothing like... bad happens. Well, because you, you have to assume that the only planets being cracked are the ones in remote systems where it's not really going to cause any damage, because they'd even need to be far enough away that you wouldn't be creating asteroid showers. You know, because well, it's kind of cool, right? It's an easy assumption when you start playing the game if you're not familiar. It's like, well, yeah, of course you're far away. That's yeah. but but then it's like, oh, but it's actually because Aegis Seven is off limits. Like they're not meant to be here. Uh. They shouldn't be here. Hmm. Well, um, like like I was saying, you get audio logs, video logs, uh, sort of hologram security things that play. Uh, and then, of course, just the overt stuff, like the actual sort of events that are playing out on the ship. It's, um, I don't know, it's it's kind of one of my most preferred ways for story to be delivered with games. It's really cool. A lot of it is happening in game. I prefer to be ham-fisted with, like, 20 to 30 minute long cutscenes that don't end and make me forget I'm playing a video game. I usually prefer that. <laughs> if, like, well, that's the thing, it depends on the purpose, right? Because there's still cutscenes in this game, but um, the, the, the thing I think that Dead Space compared to a lot of games should be celebrated for, is how much it tries to keep being uh, strictly a game. It, um, and there's loads of formats that comes in. It's very much a game, yeah. It never yeah, there's no the microtransactions in it, I'm quite sure. <laughs> Wait, well, are you at the point now where if you have microtransactions, you're not a fucking game anymore? <laughs> like, get out of here. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you're not a game. You, you only lose control like two or three times in the whole game, and one time it's because you literally get hit by super stasis. <laughs> That's so, so important. And you can still control atmosphere. the you can still control the camera too in that sequence as well. Yeah, you can look around. Yeah, that's nice. uh, you can look around at yourself, sort of, yeah. Uh, a lot of the game's atmosphere works so strongly precisely because it's directly experienced in that way. Like it doesn't have to change mode of engagement to go into cutscene mode as frequently in order to convey things to you. It can let you just engage with them in your own way, at your own pace, in a certain sense. Well, yeah, and and, uh, it's valuable uh, because it's something games do and other mediums don't. I suppose it's just worth almost doing from like a foundational sense, but um, I, we assume everyone's familiar with Dead Space, the original, but some people aren't. It's just like something that Dead Space does that's really fucking neat is you don't have ammo counters, health counters, and notifications that come up uh, as part of your HUD as opposed to something that relates to the character and universe. In Dead Space, I, your health, I your... Face. stasis bar your ammo and your uh, notifications and calls with people and even like directives for objectives they all come up in universe as part of the holographic sets on his uh suit and then just the notifications and stuff. it's just like this was something that was really fucking cool when uh people first yeah, played this game the coolest ui coolest yeah. ui in a game 2008 too so this was a year before iron man when the the sort of almost like holographic touchscreen interface kind of. I thought Iron Man was too. That came out after Iron Man. Man. Yeah, this came out a few months after Iron Man. Oh, was it after Iron Man? Okay. Yeah, a little bit. Dun, dun, well, dun, I mean, dun. yeah, they're like I mean, idea wise, they would have been being made at the same time. Oh, but sure, it, it was sure. interesting that that because it is a similar concept. Of, I'm more specifically talking about when he brings up the inventory. Because it seems like you're kind of, you know, it's a it, it is like a touchscreen hologram. Am I correct? Huh? Is that or, not what it's oh, like? I think um, so. Well, 
it it's conceivable that it would work like it in at this point in the future that like your it would track your eye and it would translate that to like a mouse that, cursor yeah. and oh, then like a, a blink could be active. like a like a click sort of it's thing. It's a select, yeah. I don't know. That's yeah. Because when you yeah when you do move around and it was like this I think in the originals too, but as you highlight different parts of the inventory and things, Isaac will his face will track. Yeah. What, mm -hmm. You know, yeah. he's yeah. actually mm -hmm. being too. you know yeah. focused on. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's just one of those little things. Like, you didn't have to do that, but you did. And it's a yeah, neat did little detail. Yeah, they did that in Evil 4, too. I mean, this is good for breaking down any barriers that might exist between the player and their character. Mm -hmm. um, the inventory management is famous in Resident Evil 4. In this game, it may not be as famous, but I get a similar level of enjoyment out of balancing, like... The original game, I felt it was harder to do so, um, but I need to play this game again with more weapons to really decide, but... Um, the original, obviously, when you, especially when you haven't upgraded your suits, you have to be very careful about what you're using your slots for. You can't just go willy-nilly and be like, I want everything, because then you'll stop being able to pick up stuff. Um, so, Yesterday. you know, take advantage of your storage, yeah, take dude. advantage of selling and buying, min-maxing, all that stuff. Resident Evil 4 was famous for being like Tetris. This game, I just feel it, it nailed the balancing aspect. It felt satisfying just to make yeah, sure. Resource oh, yeah. And they took out the dumb bullshit in the original. I don't know if you guys remember the, um... The power nodes when you were upgrading Point, weapons like beforehand, it. there would just be wasted <laughs> slots that you'd be like, "Well, what's the point of that? Why, you know?" Just I, I, to get see, the next I one, can yeah. see in a development meeting them saying, "Hey, yeah, it'll really create some risk reward," but then in practice, it's like, "Yeah, but it feels like a kick in the ball." Yeah, because you don't get the power yeah. nodes that often, and then you got yeah. the, there were rooms in the original that you would use a power node to open the door, and yeah. sometimes mm -hmm. there'd be another power node in there, but. So yeah. it just feels like the whole yeah. upgrade I don't know. I don't... system is a lot more accessible. Like, you have more freedom in it, as opposed to just focusing on strictly one weapon. But part of it, for me, I thought of it as, um... Think of it as, like, the, say, for example, it goes damage, damage, space, damage. And so it's like, wow, so I get damage for one, damage for one, now I get damage for two, and it's like, yeah, damage for two. Think of it that way. It's a more expensive upgrade at the end. And the, the other aspect I thought about it was could be seen as neat, is that it's a little bit of puzzle solving in that you can find a way to best use the web to spend as little nodes as possible because there's a couple of like empty nodes in, depending on what webs you're going for. I don't know that yeah, I hate that or anything. Higher, though. Um, cool. Yeah, I don't know if I hate it, but it was always kind of like, oh, fuck, I really got to waste like a power node on this nothing slot for no reason. I think I would probably be more upset if the game didn't throw nodes at you. Um... Which I think is, especially if you're going through with only a couple weapons, um, and you have so much less to actually spend your nodes on. But, uh, and, and I also don't mind the, uh, I, I, don't, I didn't mind in the original, using a power node to open essentially a, a storage closet that had me, it was, um, goodies that you weren't aware of. I, I, I sort of you the same rags, but I would calculate whether or not it was worth it every time. In terms of, kind of, of like, like, so if I picked up a triple health and you know 1,500 credits, I'd be like, damn oh, like it, that wasn't worth it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes the credit exchange isn't the best way to measure it up. It it just sort of depends because it's so contextual. On you know, like if your health is low and you get that health kit, then it's worth it. It's far you know worth its weight. I don't it's disagree. Its credit. I like never you'll know typically when be true. able to get to a store, like in the game. At any particular point. It's also nice that they let you uh, respec your weapons uh, if you need to. Wait, do you think that's that? neat, or does that not just take away the fact that players should commit to their choices? Oh, it's, neat. Re... it's neat. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm like sure that the it's neat. It, it's not free. It comes at a price. I'm, I'm oh, not okay. certain that the the commitment in Dead Space, in terms of where you put your nodes, was that like important to the experience in the first place it really wasn't and you, you well, are no, an engineer no, no, no. i guess you could if you could take away nodes and put them on i guess it's not even just size you know i think thing. mechanically speaking it's a little bit of a problem if you don't the problem is uh, you can't always know exactly what you're buying and you especially can't in the remake uh rags i'll Let's... let you mention that if you All want right. <laughs> Oh, oh, wait, okay. one thing I, I wanted gotta... to say. Uh, Thunder asked, I don't know what min-maxing means. Min-maxing just refers to how you're controlling your resources. Minimize losses, maximize gains, basically. Yes. Yeah. Uh, how you want to yeah. live your life, basically. Yes. Um... <laughs> minimize losses, maximize gains. Yeah, yeah. you want to try to get as much resources as you can and expend as few as, uh, as possible. You know, min-maxing in this game. So Dead Space's version of min-maxing is uh, obviously getting hit the least. 
using Kinesis as much as possible to not spend ammo. Yes. Um, selling as much stuff as you can to get as many credits as you can get to convert those into nodes. Or suits. Uh, that would be, yeah, or suits. Yeah, that, that's mm. min-maxing in the game. As well as, of course, I, I couldn't... I couldn't not mention this as a Resident Evil 4 enjoyer myself, uh, but in this game, uh, if you upgrade your weapon capacity, it refills your weapon. Yeah. So you Three bet your asshole. Refills. You That's, bet your yeah. asshole. Yep. <laughs> that I would. Uh, that I would use that. Uh, I used it a couple times on uh, the uh, the contact beam. I used it. Uh, I think I used it. Ended up using it twice on the pulse rifle. Oof, I got almost Dude. 200 free rounds of pulse. Oh, yeah. I was about to say, every time I do it. And I was in uh, hydroponics at one point. I think I was getting the side mission, and um, I was on zero on my plasma cuts uh, out of, like, 22 for a good five minutes, I think, so I didn't come encounter anything that I couldn't kill with Kinesis. I, just, I was refusing because I needed to get that capacity upgrade. And someone in chat was like, reload your fucking gun. And I was like, no. Never. <laughs> I will never. never. God, Not make only. Me. Oh, and not only does that apply to your ammunition capacity, it also reply, uh, applies to your health upgrades. Yeah, the health so, is a big one. There were a few times where, uh, and I, get, I don't know, I, I what, uh, as is typical, I played through the game on normal the first time, because I absolutely intend on doing this on uh, hard and impossible later. And Put, just to start give with myself next time, scrub. <laughs> just to just to establish my cred, I have all the achievements on Dead Space One and Two. I've beat them both on impossible modes and the hardcore mode in Dead Space Two. Mm -hmm. and... Oh yeah, what about Dead Space Three, huh? I can't even remember what I did in Dead Space Three. I just don't think I cared <laughs> I about the game it. quite that much. Uh, I never played it. Sorry I've... for interrupting. Yeah, but I'm a uh, yeah. So I have no worries there. But I, I was very curious to see because uh, I I am very curious about what the developer intends to be the the baseline sort of quote unquote intended normal difficulty that always is interesting to me the default um, experience sort of yeah uh, so yeah the, I, the only time my health got low was when i sort of let it get low uh and i wasn't playing as well just because i'm like well i'm gonna get my health upgraded eventually i might as well just you know take hits and you know just boof uh, it goes all the way up now once you upgrade health but uh there is one thing, though, regarding the upgrade system. It's one of my big pet peeves. I've talked about it before. One of my big pet peeves in video gaming. So, I, I don't it. like it. I don't like it. I, I, I hate it. Oh, oh, I hate it. Oh, I shake my fist at thee. I don't like it when developers don't tell me what things mean. When developers don't give me numbers. When developers treat me like I'm an idiot. Um, I don't like it when information that's important is kept from me when it is important information that I'll use to make purchasing uh, decisions or skill up decisions. For instance, if you hover over uh, your first upgrade for the plasma cutter uh, for damage, it will sort of highlight the, the, you know, the little damage stat at the bottom. Uh, and, and it doesn't tell you how much the damage will be increased by for spinning that node. And that annoys the fuck out of me. Mm -hmm. How much damage is this going to yeah. increase it by? Is it going to be, 2%? 5%? 10%? 20%? How much is it? We go from what to what? Tell me. Especially because the original Dead Space did this. The original Man Dead Space... To know. The original Dead Space would tell you before you chose to spend that node on an upgrade what it would increase uh, that, it, that stat to. And it's doubly annoying um, when it doesn't tell you um, that the upgrades are not consistent. So the first upgrade for your plasma cutter will, for instance, go from like 100 to 110, and another one might increase it to 130. So it's not a consistent, you know, linear upgrade necessarily. Oh, really? So yeah. I thought it was. Um, so it's just, it's one of those things. It's just annoying. Like, tell me, <laughs> if, if, if I have an ability that lets me increase speed, then damn it. Tell me how much it increases my speed. Is it 5%, 10%, whatever? I've uh, seen two people say it does actually say. No, I didn't After see you it. do it. Oh. After you do it. Yeah. Oh, well, that's useless it, then. Yeah. <laughs> the so that, that, that lets you know what it is now. I guess you could save and then do that and then unsave. Yeah, you could, yeah you can save scum to see. Um, but it ultimately, it's not a big deal because it, it is a strict objective upgrade. You get a lot of nodes in the game, but it is one of those like, why did you do this? This was not necessary. 
Uh, so yeah, uh, I don't like vague tool tips. Um, yeah, because you can't even guess. Well, I guess you could guess, but you can't know from one upgrade what the next one will be. The next one could be a higher upgrade or a lower one, you know? Yeah. Um, so every time you're just going to have to... Yeah, but I agree. I, I'd describe it as especially weird when the game is sort of indexing on you making these decisions around best allocation of resources. It's a survival mm -hmm. horror game. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, it, I, I appreciate things like that. I wish it would tell you. Um, you also no, can't just... see what the nodes uh, hidden behind the weapon upgrades or even suit upgrades are going to be before you have those upgrades. So it's not, it's not that you just can't select them. You can't see what they are. So you can't really plan towards that part of the branch. Well, do you want to get... better yeah. that, I, that I actually really don't appreciate in this game? That's not as big of a deal because you can save nodes and then you could put those on yeah. the tree whenever you get to it. However, I don't like that in the store, it will allow you to buy upgrades for weapons that do their special abilities or, you know, essentially special upgrades. It doesn't tell you what they are. When I, it, you just yeah, kind of have yeah. to look at the name and you don't know what that name means. When I get like jellified, whatever it is for the, the flamethrower, I don't know what that means. <laughs> Whenever I get something auto loader for the pulse rifle, like, well, I guess that's probably has something to do with rate of fire or reload, but and it does increase his rate of fire greatly. Um, useless upgrade, uh, but it just doesn't yeah. mean anything. That doesn't like I don't I'm, I'm spending 10, 11,000 credits. I'm spending a node plus is worth of credits mm -hmm. on this and you're not telling me what this does. It's a store. Tell me what I'm buying. Uh, sell it to me. I like having I like having things to figure out, new things to learn in a game that I'm very very familiar with. Uh, so I, don't I think like the idea of seeing the upgrades and being like, oh, what is this going to do? Like I didn't know buying the upgrades would give you a power node for the longest time, and then I finally got one. I was like, oh, what? Neato. Yeah, every weapon upgrade gives you a. Once you get to the bench, it gives you a power node. Motherfucker, like, I gotta pay more attention when I'm playing video games. Yeah, <laughs> right, got it. Right? Uh, well, and it even, it even it says so, right? When you go to the bench, it says, you know, you apply. Yeah, this but I, I skip every text prompt. Mode. Yeah, he's uh, a true, true gamer. gamer. I mean, I, I think I, I kind of process those in my head of when I deliver the, the upgrade to the workbench. It's like, hey, yeah, now you can use these. Uh, now you can access this part of the, you know, plasma cutter tree. And then, yes. so I skip past that really fast without reading it. I didn't realize it was telling me I get more shit. So well, it, um, it's not a big deal cool, because though. you do get a node for it, and the the upgrades are cost a little bit more than a node, generally one or two thousand credits more. But there's no reason to not tell me what this upgrade is if I'm buying it from the store. That was uh, yeah. that was annoying. I was going to say that the special upgrade ones. Um, I think they they might actually just be trying to gun for like everyone's going to buy these because they're like the best part of this tree of upgrades. So we don't need to. We don't need to sell uh, it any further than I mean, that. No, and that's what I'm saying. Uh, I, I would agree with you that if I knew exactly what all of them do, I would consider not buying some of them. Like, I want my, I want damage I maxed on the plasma cutter before I want to grab the the melee bonus damage sort of thing on the plasma cutter. Yeah, the knockback, yeah. The, oh, see, um, I, I the would grab the knockback fire. first. I didn't the, find the it. The knockback on the plasma cutter was awesome, I found. No, it's, I didn't it find is good. The... It's just that I, I use Kinesis way more than I'd ever use that. Oh, I never man. used um, the only time I used the knockback uh, on the, the upgrade was when I shot the explody sack off of the uh, blow up <laughs> ones. And then you could just whack him over and over and over <laughs> until he dies, which is funny. But that's the only time I ever back. used it because I have like guns and kinesis and stasis and all that stuff. I never was in a position where I needed to. I did a do lot of that. stasis and then beat them to death with many enemies to the point yeah, where even but, um, chat would get annoyed. But I'm like, hey, min maxing, baby. But an, an issue with Look, the, there's uh, the a stasis that you... recharge station over there. Mm -hmm. This is free damage right here. Uh, the, the aspect of getting these upgrades <clears throat> is also that a lot of the times for the upgrades, the the it opens up this whenever you get a weapon upgrade from the store or in uh, in the world, you 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 bring it to a bench and it expands the tree, the upgrade tree on the weapon. And along the way to the newly unlocked special upgrade, there are node points that will increase the weapon's capacity, reload, damage, etc. even further. And on a lot of these upgrades, just the damage upgrade that you get on the way to the special is worth more than the special itself. Um, so it's, it's an odd way um, to... It's an odd way to sort of uh, build the system. And I think I probably would have preferred... Um, 
paths that maybe closed off another path or like really kind of try to turn the weapon into either this or that instead of they should, uh, it completely in every way. So kind of almost like the deus ex thing, right? Where it's, or, or I think it was more so on Mankind Divided where it's like, you have to, you have to commit. Like you have a certain amount of power that's available to you. You have to commit to something or the other. Kind of uh, like, I don't walk off choices. I don't um, mind the way it is, but with how viable a lot of the secondary fire is for the, the weapons now, it would have been interesting to choose between, like, do you want to have both of them be upgraded a little, your primary and secondary, or do you want to spec completely into one of the modes mm. of fire? Um, <laughs> I think that would have been more interesting instead of you just being able to so upgrade that's everything. I don't know if I would say whether or not that's better or worse. It's just different. Yeah, I, think, I don't know if I'd, I have I'd have to see that alternate kind of game version to, to know if it's if better you or actually not. Wanted it. Yeah. But the game legitimately had me thinking, you know, it had me asking that question. Because um, whether it was the, the, the force gun, uh, the force guns alt fire is it essentially makes this little gravity grenade where it sucks everything into it. So it clumps enemies together, which can be incredibly useful if you have like an explosive barrel and mm. you use that little gravity well to suck all the enemies into it and then hit it with an explosion that could be like an incredible min max move right mm -hmm. there uh whereas yeah. they would have otherwise been separate so it would have been interesting um dude rags whenever i have like seven enemies coming at me and one of them is the explosive guy i'm like oh my god you didn't that's yep, so kind of you. <laughs> <We're>, we know <laughs> what's happening here. Especially if you stasis, blow them up, and then everyone is sort of in the same position, but now you can see all the separations of all their limbs, and they're slowly flying in different directions. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the best part. Uh, uh, but yeah, the, I mean, overall, the uh, I didn't have any real like major complaints. These, uh, as much as I've gone on about them, they're minor. Um, I enjoyed immensely upgrading everything, uh, watching my power grow and grow and grow. As did I. Too much. But um, um, I really, uh, yeah, <clears throat> I, by the end of the game, I felt like, you know, I'd come far. I was using, all, I was using my four weapons because I decided to go with four for my first playthrough. I was, you know, shooting this enemy with this and then, you know, they're getting close, you know, three force gun pushing back. It was, you felt really good. It's very satisfying to do well in this game once you're familiar with your equipment. From what, I what I really like about the upgrade path through uh, through the playthroughs in this game is you get enough enough nodes to pretty much max out one weapon and do a decent job upgrading, say two more or or one more in your suit. And I was able that... to upgrade my suit entirely and all four weapons entirely. Um, I was the game say, is I definitely very... are you buying a lot of nodes. Or yeah, but you were playing on yeah. normal. I was yeah, I was playing at normal. Well, to back However, him up, I was on I was... hard and I was overflowing with resources by the time I hit the end. I had uh, forty oh, really? spare nodes, two hundred k money, and I filled my whole inventory you, with. How do you get ammo. forty spare nodes? We're fucking good at the game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think that's possible. Oh well, I'd be surprised if... how uh, how much. Like I said, this game, if you're uh, if you're good, me. I'd say, I I mean, hey, you know, but uh, as a Dead Space veteran, Mahler and I, um, yeah. I, <laughs> You should see my inventories when I play Resident Evil 4. Well, I was about to say, it's, <laughs> it's all on, it's all in a playlist, you can see me do it. <laughs> it's would not... you, springing from that, would you say there's any kind of a balance problem? If you're able to do that on hard... So, I was actually going to bring this up. I, mean, I, um, I would... I do not... I would be chill on it, if not for the fact that, as far as I'm aware, the next difficulty up is the same, it's just there's saving changes, which I, yeah. I think... There should be another difficulty up at least that makes everything yeah. harder again because hard's not hard I enough. I would, I think, yeah, I would already say that based off what I've seen, uh, we need because we did the, the other deads, the old dead spaces did this as well. You had like your easy, normal, hard, then you had like survival difficulty. After that, uh, I forget the name specifically, maybe it was zealot difficult. I, I forget, I think it was called survival, but yeah, the game needs uh, to be harder. I think in Dead Space 2, they had uh, one extra difficulty off the start. I actually, there, I think the difficulty on hard is is pretty solid. Um, I think they probably should be. I think the the difficulty of hard makes me look at uh, impossible or whatever the one after it and think, okay, that's I could actually do that because I've died like I've died yeah. like three, four, five times to like hazards. Uh, this one time, I you know I I think once you get to that part where you have to throw the rocks into the uh, 
center sun thing. Yeah. I think everybody jumps in there at least once just just to <laughs> see what happens. Um, but just I've only add... died like two or three times to the actual like necromorphs. To add to the difficulty thing, I think um, no matter what mode you pick, there's still some variance because the intensity director is governing certain things. Like it's making adjustments on the fly based on yes. like your, your health or if your I ammo may, count. Yeah, go ahead. If I may, um, I'm. there were some times where I got to a really fun fight and I replayed it multiple times. Um, so like the bridge, when you go to the bridge and all the enemies fight you on the bridge, I mm -hmm. really enjoyed that. So I played it through like three times. Uh, cause it was just fun. I was like, yeah, this is fun. I love this. Give me this big, this open area, throw necromorphs at me. And I just had a blast playing it. So I even have a save there right now on, on one of my files. So I can always hop back and it's right before that big fight on the bridge. Aww. Um, but I, um, when it comes to the difficulty director, there is some level of randomness. Well, it's, it's not random. It's probably based on some sort of algorithm that checks your stuff or whatever. But I remember in particular when I was going through and doing a bunch of side missions and going for locked rooms that I hadn't been to. When I went back to um, engineering, that engineering lobby that has the store and the save point on it, um, I ended up having like four really kind of like big fights in there. Um, yeah. I, I don't know why, but I, I knew I was doing well and I knew the game knew I was doing well. So it was interesting to go back there multiple times to do side missions and stuff. And I'd almost always get a pretty decent fight inside of that room. And sometimes when I reloaded to do a fight again or whatever, because just I don't know, it's not a no, it's not a flex. I never died. Uh, but sometimes when I'd go through something to like to fight again, I would encounter different enemies on the way there. Uh, and so well, actually what I what I had found a lot is that when I would enter a room and it would spawn enemies in a way that I suspected they were spawned by the intensity director specifically. And there are a couple times where I died and then I reloaded and went back into the room and the enemies weren't there. That and that happened to surprise me at all. That happened mm -hmm. a few times. So what that does is it incentivizes the player to scum their saves, right? Where it's just like, well, there's a bunch of enemies here. Um, if I just reload this, I can go through the same area. There's no enemies, and then I can save all that ammo. I don't right? know if it encourages that. That's I think that's a stretch. Think, um, well, if it happens I enough it times, is... and I'm just saying from my perspective, it did happen enough times where I feel like I could reliably do. If that. I had just I don't saved, know if and I go into a, a hallway and I get jumped by several enemies and lose a lot of health and ammo, panicking, I'll just be like, just kill me. I'll just do this again. Like right. I, I've done that. That's before. all min maxing. Okay, I gotcha. Um, the thing is, is, I think it's, on it's possible complicated to. I think it's really complicated to figure out, like, what will encourage people to essentially do this sort of... Like, in a lot of stealth games, you can be heavily incentivized. Quick save. Oh, wait, I got caught. Fuck. All right, quick save. <laughs> you know, so that you have to do okay, a fight Okay, I got past anything. that enemy. Quick I save again. <laughs> okay, I got past that guy. Quick save. I think a lot of that, in terms of, like, for Fringy's example, for instance, depends on what am I looking for as a player. Um, yeah. Course. For me, if I'm playing a stealth game and I get seen, it's like, well, uh, I don't want to get seen. Like, I, I would really like to, you know, complete this doing stealth only. So I'll replay, replay it and I'll try it again. Well, um, so the reason why I bring that up is because some, like, using the save system to your advantage can be a gameplay mechanic. There's a reason why a lot of stealth games have quick saving in them. It's because I think that the developers know that that's something people will want to use. Uh, it's depending why... on what kind of experience they're going for. It's why in, um, I remember when Fallout, this will seem like a really odd reference. I remember when Fallout 4 came out, I think there was some developer talking about uh, dog meat specifically. No, not dog meat. What's the name of the dog in Fallout 4? Is it dog meat? I thought yeah, it's it was. Dog meat. It is, that fucker. I fucking hate that dog. It's the oh, only dog he's I a good hate. Boy. No, he's not. He's, <laughs> he's a good boy. I fucking hate that he dog. Fucking... No, he... <laughs> fuck that dog. God damn it, I hate that you dog. Got, you got beef with another dog. <laughs> I do. I love dog games. Except for that one. Fuck that dog. Do you, do you actually -dog? like dogs in games? You, I do. I love D-Dog do like and all dog, that stuff. Do you like no, dogs as enemies? It's specifically this one. Oh, do I like do them as enemies? Like That's enemies. a complicated yeah. and long discussion, Fringy, yeah, about whether I like I dogs as I enemies. I'm pretty sure we've talked dogs about this a lot. I like yeah, dogs I'm, as friends. There's lots like of dogs great friends, dogs as friends. Except for dog yeah. meat, that piece of shit. Dogs are friends, not right? food. 
Man, we're so not like here to it, bitch it about Fallout like, 4. It seems like you've had a very traumatic sort of experience <laughs> I have. With, uh, with dog meat. Dog meat specifically in Fallout 4, all right? It, but we're not going to get into all those problems, right? Yeah, sure. I was going. I was going to say something along dog the lines. From, get into it on the Starfield. That fact. game is not like. Oh, uh, uh, we. Is that something we would actually be doing? <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, Bethesda maybe. will come up if, if you do. Well, I'll, anyway, the the point is that when Fallout Four was coming out, I heard one of the developers, I think, talking about dog meat specifically, and they said, "Don't worry, your companions can't die in this game." And I think the reasoning that they gave was, if like your if your dog dies in Fallout Four. The player's going to reset anyway. They're going to just, they're going to reload the game. They're not going to go through the game without their dog after the dog dies in a fight and something. Mm. So that was one of the reasons why we said, no, the dog doesn't die. It just gets put out of commission for a while. Um, and when it comes to stuff like, um, what would a good example be? Resident Evil 4 is popping up again. Uh, the reason that I don't like to play that off of professional mode is because that game also does the same thing, where if you, say, go to the castle and you go to right before you have like the the water room with the bridge it's a long extended sequence and multiple stages where you fight enemies and direct ashley to do things yeah. if you die enough times then it will literally remove enemies like the archers the the crossbowmen up on the little balconies on the left and right there's two of them if you die during that fight a couple times i think then the next time you try it after that the archers are just gone they're Ain't not that, that's only on normal it, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't. That's why I don't play the game off of professional mode. Ain't that fascinating uh, though? Professional... That like, when we find out the AI director or whatever might throw extra shit at us, we're like, fucking yeah. But when it says like, I'm gonna take some stuff away, having trouble, you're like, no, 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 no. I, I love, <laughs> yeah. I love that room. I really like that fight. I like to do it, and I try to do it like as efficiently as I can. And I love to challenge myself with that room. And you know, if you die a couple times trying some crazy strats or trying to do it with as little shots taken as possible, then He'll take enemies away, and I'm like, no, 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 keep them there. I, 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 this is what I want. I swear, I promise. How'd you, uh, uh, how'd you guys? Because I'm pretty sure it was uh, that, that, uh, that intensity director thing. What? How'd you feel about saving and then turn into the right and just <laughs> big necromorph there about to, about to kill um, you? I never had that <laughs> issue with the save points. It happened once in actually a previously, in the previously mentioned engineering uh, sort of lobby area, where. The enemy spawned, I guess, while in menus. In such a location, like as I was clicking on the store, I heard the mm. enemy spawning, mm -hmm. and it locks you into that, admittedly too slow animation where the thing unfolds and it opens up and you see the screen, and you know it kind of zooms in a little bit, and I'm like, no, 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 there's enemies here, I can hear them. They go back, 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 but you're locked Dude, in I, animation. I literally I, had I, a, I, I literally had a Marge Simpson moment. You'll get it in a second, Fringy, where. I was, uh, this is on <laughs> one of these streams, so uh, one of the guys in chat might remember, but I, yeah, I had the exact same, I was going into the store, and I'm pretty sure it was engineering, and the second I hit, like, enter, I think lights flickered, and I heard, and I was like, no, 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 let me off, 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 Nope, That's slow in and out animation, Mahler, your life is, uh, this is, it's, it's ultra capitalism. I, uh, the score I actually takes had, precedent over your life. <laughs> I, I had one where I uh, it was it was like in the in the crew quarters when I where you get like the Nicole flashback like with the conversation the last conversation between them. Fortunately, I got to watch it play out in full the first time around, so I got to absorb the moment. But when I I died, I went back through the second time. I got into the like animation of Isaac going, "Oh man, the mark messed with my head," and the necromorph was just attacking me while I was uh, <laughs> while I was stuck in that animation. Oh, yeah, I had an auto save in hydroponics where a baby with its tentacles already out was its right behind out. me. With its what? Sorry, out? Um, just testicles. So Okay. <laughs> Someone just reminded me. Sorry, right. but uh, the reason why it happened the way it did with me was not just the animation rags. I was unfortunate enough to have been holding, I think, uh, someone told me at that point in the game, like, you can buy, you know, schematics or whatever. Or rather, I had hoarded them because I was running around doing all kinds of collecting things. But basically, you know when you get to it and it, like, updates you with what you have or what's in the store? I had, like, four of those just happened at that time. So not only did I have to wait for the animation to go in, I had to, like, spam A as the <laughs> notifications would come up and be like, you have this now. I was like, yeah, thank you. You also have thank this you. now. Oh. I was like, thank you. You also have this. It's like, are you fucking serious right now? Come on. Like... <laughs> I was going to say that too, that happened to me in the exact same spot that Rags was describing. It was on my impossible playthrough and I had like seven schematics that I had not gone to a store yet for. Yeah. 
this it is was, one of those points rough. where it's like, I know we're trying to stay diegetic here. Yeah. But if the outside world paused when I was in the, uh, when I was, or you know what? Fuck it. There's no reason for the store to be its own menu. Just have it be just like your inventory. You go yeah, up to you it, you done press that. a thing, it folds out. Yeah. You can even move left and right a little bit. There's no reason why the store couldn't have been like that. And it's just an interactable menu. And why you know didn't what? they do that? Th yeah, because well, as well, I think they could pull that off and that would be a really cool uh, like improvement. On premise, cool. you're messing yeah. with the sanctity of like shop kind of areas. And you're not like adding to the idea that you're not safe anywhere would be. Well, the problem. There. Yeah, because the thing is, if. I don't want to get killed or hurt because I'm locked into an overly slow that's, animation of yeah. me looking yeah. into a, yeah. a store when my life is at risk. Every in real it's, life, it's if I was like at if, an ATM, um, I would turn around. Well, that's yeah, the thing. Course, so it, yeah. it actually, I think, would add to it if this was something that you can walk up to and start pressing A, and there's no animations. It just, or rather, there is, but it's all in game, just like your inventory. I think that yeah, would add like to the sense that I'm not quite safe here. This is just a uh, you know a kiosk I'm I'm accessing. That doesn't make me yep. safe. Because it's a, I don't want to, I don't want to, someone said the store is needed for the suits. Well, no, that could be its own option. And besides, the suits are so few in the game. There's only, you only use them, you only upgrade like four times that those can be specific things that you could lock yourself into if you want. Um, but yeah, that, that, that shouldn't, you know, be a deal because 98% of the time you're not upgrading your suit at a store anyway. Um, mm hmm but it's it's just a matter of that could have been a really cool because like the circuit breakers when you go up to it press a and then you know boop boop uh that would have been that would have been really neat yeah the Shoot circuit up, breakers uh, were kind of new weren't they they were yes yeah i was thinking about that that's a really cool new thing what do you guys think agree. about isaac talking now <laughs> oh, we uh, talked about that a bit before you uh, got uh, there. I think the yeah, general oh, damn feeling it. of everybody. Positive, okay. General feeling is positive. Yeah, strict yeah. improvement as far as i'm concerned. Definitely positive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely positive. Voice well, what acting do you work think? was good. Um, yeah, what do you think, I like Yeah. Hmm. We should well, have made one him thing I noticed first. is that <laughs> is that this game is it's all it's like first and foremost a remake of the original, but it's also takes so many things from Dead Space Two that they changed in that game and just brings them back here, like the whole movement in zero G. Yeah, that mm -hmm. was basically in which Dead Space I, Two. I'm assuming everyone here agrees it's better. Right. Obviously, yep. it's better. Yes, yeah. it's no it's contact. neat to have the old system was kind of fun, but being able to have uh, free movement in zero G <laughs> is just uh, it's you can't beat it. Yeah, you really it's a good can't. decision it is a good decision. So I think uh, I think it's it's very much a similar uh, thing. Like a lot of things, Dead Space Two did just objectively improve the game, and I, Isaac talking it. It's nice because you still have if if you want the silent protagonist version, you still have it. And then you've got this one where it feels a bit more natural and rather than kind of coming across like everyone's like, Isaac, go fix this. Isaac, go fix the engineering. Isaac, go fix my broken marriage. You know, it's, it feels <laughs> more like uh, like there's a, a bit more conflict, right? Because at that point where Isaac puts the beacon on the uh, asteroid, instead of like, Isaac, go do that. Go fucking do that, asshole. Uh, Isaac is the one saying, Hey, I'm gonna go do this. And Kendra's like, "No, you're crazy." What? And then you go and do it. So it's similar story, yeah. different interactions, different kind of vibe to it. Isaac is more his own person, and you still have the uh, uh, the silent version if you prefer that. Yeah, no, People I agree. People like playing as a proactive protagonist. Hell yeah! Uh, yeah. As, yeah. Especially it, in an action it, game, like it's you want to be because not only it reflects the gameplay, right? Where he's fucking. To be fair, Isaac Clarke is better than basically anyone in history at killing necromorphs, mm -hmm. uh, and he's not yes. military, <laughs> which is actually something we'll probably talk about. We'll talk about, about that that part. later. Um, and him chiming in like that is based on the fact that he's an engineer and not just for the sake of like moving things forward. Uh, I was talking with uh, Mark about this the other day, and he made it a, a great point about like the design of puzzles. Like there, you know, that satellite array where you got to arrange all the satellites yeah. to get powered well, to the wait, central that's zero G one. Maybe if you want to section oh, that out, because that's going to be a whole oh, thing. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to No, it's all good. Out. I'm trying to, um, I'm keeping an, a, a sort of line of where we're going and what we've done. But I was just going to say, so... It was only directors. in relation to like him being an engineer and the like the yeah, no, design uh, of puzzles. Yeah, yeah. Um, put a note in it, and then because we're gonna come back to the puzzles. We, uh, uh, okay, I'm, fair I'm trying enough. to move us through because we were on intensity, intensity, really. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, Director. Intense city. 
Um, cause, so, so, well, uh, funnily enough, I was actually going to mention, you know, we were comparing the OG and new, um, or rather the Dead Space 1 to Dead Space 2, uh, Zero G. Uh, Dead Space 1, I don't know if you guys uh, remember that well, but it was at times pretty funny. Like, um, the way you move from place to place. Uh, if you went really, like, you a long distance walls. one, and you just sort of start... It kind of feels like a slow vision of flying, but you're locked into one place and nowhere you could move. I don't know if it ever happened to you, but sometimes you could jump at the same time as one of the crawler dudes were. And you could just be... Both of you are flying through the air, <laughs> like, relatively yeah. slowly. Yeah. Just, and, and there's just nothing you can do but look at him and be like, hi. You're both <laughs> that always reminded me of... Um, anyone ever seen Big Trouble in Little China? Oh, yeah. yeah. And Wang and like one of the three storms are like flying through the air while they're sword fighting. <laughs> yeah. so, sort of the same deal. In any case, um, one thing I was going to say about this intensity director, and it's something we brought up, I think, in the first impressions discussion, seems like it's very capable of backfiring. I'd have to do testing to find out if this is true. But the idea that it's like, you're doing well, Mola. I'm going to send three dudes after you in the middle of this corridor you've cleared out. And I'm like, oh no. And then I throw stasis on them, and then beat them to death, take all of the drops, and then refill stasis. And so it's just like, thank you. Like, Yeah, there there is a discussion to be had about what constitutes a punishment and a reward, so to speak, when it comes to um, like a, a difficulty that changes, you know, adaptive difficulty. Especially in games where you have limited resources and enemies drop resources. Um, and I never, there were a couple times, but you know, we'll, we'll let me amend this before I go further. I never felt like I was being punished for doing good, which is very important. You don't want to feel yes, like you're agreed. saying, oh, you're doing really good. Fuck you. Let's knock you down a peg. The game never did that. And I was doing about as good as you could do. Uh, so that was very, very good. And I felt like the fact that combat's just fun and enjoyable uh never gave you know the vibe that you were being punished and at the same time you still always felt like every encounter was an opportunity to increase your resources or to uh, sort of use the environment um and one of the reasons for it being such a good system is that um and i was somewhat concerned about this when i first heard about like being able to go back and forth to places on the ishimura and side missions but as far as i know into perpetuity, um, enemies, uh, the, 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 their blades and stuff that you leave on the ground, it stays there. Um, yeah. So I, I would, I'd go back to engineering after hours and hours and hours. And sure enough, the, there'd be blades sitting on the ground where I had left them. There'd be fans, you know, fan blades where I'd kind of left yep. them piled up, you know, in, in, in the middle. <laughs> it's like, yep, I've been here. There's a pile and, of shit to throw in the middle of the room for me. Oh, no. and, and, me. And, a enemy down. limbs, too, not just like dynamic uh, objects that are non enemy. You know what I mean? Like, you can still find F, like a it's sharp. Back. It's, back. it's back. It's back. Oh. Yeah. Must no, have... go for it. Go for Carry on. Oh, sorry. Just to add to what Rags was saying, also, enemy limbs will remain constant on all decks throughout the entire game, which really impressed me. Well, and it's, uh, it's... Uh, yes, I was very happy to see that. Um, it, yeah. it, the game remembered what I did, and the game knows that... I mean, the, the game's very aware that you'll prepare. Like, oh, yeah, I'll, here's some shit to throw in this room. The, I've played a video game before. This is a fighting room. I've been to fighting rooms before. Arenas. So let's stack all of these here so that when there's a fight, I've got my pile of shit to throw. And the game doesn't punish you for doing that and preparing. Oh yeah, dude! In, uh, very glad to see. In that. hydroponics, I like put everything. This was actually kind of funny. I was put, trying to put everything the in the center room. The big opening hole, <laughs> absolutely. The, uh, I had my little explody barrels in a pile. Yeah, I had well, you, my you, blades I chucked off in a pile. The canisters, I the blades, the, the spikes, in a pile. the stasis bombs. Like there's so much. I piled it all up, and I was just like, I'm gonna have to be careful. I don't like accidentally just shoot a canister and waste all of these. Holy shit! But funnily enough, um. I'd put a canister on the lower floor elevator and then like gotten through a different direction over to the other side and back up to level two and the elevators, they come up to you if you're not on the current, like basically the elevators respond to wherever you currently are. And um, I was walking on the uh, catwalks and the elevator started coming up for me. And it was just a little canister on there where I'd left it from below. And I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> it's like a delivery <laughs> system. friend. We meet yeah. again. <laughs> what, what's interesting about that we were just kind of mentioning Bethesda and Fallout is the only other games that I can think of that really have as much persistent 
items in the world like like that that's kind of the whole big thing with bethesda games that you can put a like a spoon in a drawer in skyrim play the mm-hmm. entire game and then come back 400 hours well, later and that spoon is still in that drawer to be fair but, the reason for that is because it's a bethesda game and the game forgot to despawn it when it was supposed <laughs> to. yeah okay. so that's why it, that's why it does it in a bethesda game i i think though that a lot of people would argue that assuming it is um no, an actual intended around. thing yeah, no. yes, yes. We're, just, but, we're just having fun I think though that with a game with a, that has a world as limited as the Ishimura is in Dead Space, and even in this remake that has this sort of more open, explorable version of the Ishimura that isn't as segmented, it's still pretty limited in size. So you got to think that like, was there just a developer who had the really simple idea to be like, hey, why don't we do the thing where everything in the world is consistent, so it's immersive and people can use environmental elements that they didn't use before in combat if they end up in a which um, encourages planning yeah, it encourages you to area. encourages you to plan for fights it, and it knows you'll be back probably if you're doing side yeah. missions and exploring and going back and retracing your steps it knows you'll be back there it wants to it reward you, you from re- taking a little bit yeah. of preparation time the same, just like seeing, seeing that game. as a reward so it's like yeah i remember doing all and it's this. what you would do in real life if you were isaac you'd be like yep bla- i got my blade pile and i got all my shit to throw in the middle pile. of the room blade i mean pile. that's what i'd be doing if i was in that situation i'm like yeah i'm saving these these are weapons they did you guys ever a... sit there with your smoothie pick up one blade just chuck it and then chuck the next one as they keep coming towards you pretty much yeah hell yeah i went down to it, it, i kind of i kind of feel a little bit disappointed there is a casino on the ishimura wish we could have gone there Mm. I think the the consistency of dynamic objects is partially thanks to the fact that system RAM is no longer a bottleneck. Like yeah, uh, that's why in o- games like Battlefield, like when people die and their kit despawns so quickly, it's because of like you know memory limitations and stuff like that. Um, right. So you can always reserve a portion of RAM for all that stuff, store it all, and none of it gets forgotten. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, I'm just I'm so I- glad that it stays there until you need it. Well. Like, uh, oh, we talk about a bit more on i figure we can move to kinesis now since we've already been talking about all the things you can throw at things if that's if that makes enough sense because i was actually gonna ask about yeah, the whole uh, blades and things there's something very obvious that we'll talk about in a second but one thing was did you ever throw anything at anything and it looked like it did nothing yep yes all the time that mm-hmm. happened too much as far as i'm concerned it would be time to started... throw a thing and i'm like wait did that even tag what the fuck I kind of started. I, to I would learn also that... impale a body with like a head one time. I have a clip of it somewhere. Impale someone with a head? <laughs> yeah, I impaled a necromorph with a head. Really? Wow. Oh, you know yeah. what? Body parts. Yeah, body parts always do damage, I found. They don't do much, but as long yeah. as you throw a body part at a necromorph, it will always do some level of damage. Like it's any body part, not just the pointy ones? Yes. Like if it's okay. a, if it's just if it's a torso, if mm. it's a chunk of an arm or something, it will always do something. Some not damage, not yeah. guaranteed to do a lot, but it will do something. So if you have one enemy left and you have just a bunch of meaty chunks around, you can just throw meaty chunks at it until it dies. And I want it mentioned before I go in more so on detail on that criticism that uh, I would have moments where I it's, it's, say there's like seven necromorphs in total to kill. I only use my gun on one of them because of how well the, the stasis and uh, body part system works. And not only that, like when you fire uh, at a low health necromorph, a, a spike, and they get impaled like on the other end of like a huge room, it is fucking satisfying as hell. It just looks amazing. And it's just like the power you feel yes, you have and stuff. Back, yeah. That's all great when it works. Sometimes it doesn't. And um, that can be really fucking annoying. And, um, well, I was going to get into this a system being applied to Kinesis that is frustrating. And funnily enough, I didn't notice it properly until you highlighted it, Rags. Yeah, I noticed it fairly early on. Uh, it it annoyed me. It It's not an issue to where it should... It really detracts from the gameplay much. However, when you throw... It seems to be that uh, fairly often when you throw objects or something at an enemy like blades and something even if you are specifically targeting particular limbs it will auto uh, aim your throw to the center of the necromorph which i do not appreciate no Um, i i don't like it when i have a blade and i want to use that blade to cut off their blade to use that blade to cut off their blade etc etc uh, and instead, uh, auto targets the uh, the body or the head. Uh, that is not what I'm aiming at. 
uh, give me a little bit of credit game, have that be an option that I can turn off. Yeah, but, um, um, apparently that seems to seems be the like way a really of the world. Substantial oversight, considering very you know, strange. Mandalorian don't is I don't the think it's an oversight. I think that is a that is a very deliberate choice that the designers made, and I don't. And I think it's just to make the game a lot more uh, forgiving in the sense that if you're bad at video games and you need the game to help you out a lot, um, it wants you to get at least something guaranteed out of your kinesis throws instead of the risk of missing a more precise shot. I imagine a uh, significant a proportion is also just because consoles and aiming on consoles is a fuck. So I'm so, well, so, so happy not to well, play the, on clown sticks, okay? The options <laughs> allow you to enable auto-aim even on PC. Um, Ew. It, it's off by default, but it's an option. Mm. Uh, the only game where I've seen it on by default is uh, Metal Gear Solid Five. It's on by default, so yeah, we yeah, turn that off just like it. the fucking motion blur. Mm. Off you go. I forgot about that. Um, Why? Are you drawing but, some uh, symbols there? I'm gonna be making a point as soon as Rags is finished up with whatever he's saying. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, I uh, there were times when I wanted to throw blades and stuff at the limbs of enemies, particularly the the little the the, the big fat boys that have the little guys inside of their chests. Um, and sometimes it would let me take out a leg with a blade, and sometimes I feel like it would sort of not want to do that. There were definitely times when I want to, like I say, specifically target limbs with them, and it's like, nope, it's going into the middle, right into the body. Which is like, you know, I'm, I'm, it's still a positive. I'm, I'm still doing a lot of damage and knocking them back, and, like, you know, but I, I really wish it went where I threw it, you know, I, that'd be cool. Yeah. Now, uh, this did happen, but I'm not going to show you the clip of it, because I don't remember when it happened, but... This is the scenario, okay? You got those are the locations of three old necro necromen coming at me, and I'm like, oh dear. And I got me a canister pictured here. This is red. That's canister. a really good. That's a really good looking uh, drawing there. Thank you. I know. Ex you know. I know exactly the enemy that what the one on the top left is. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was talking about with. <laughs> so. This, uh, because I am a genius, I'm like, all right, I need to throw this to take most advantage pretty much by here. We're looking at this space so that it'll do the most damage possibly to these two at the back, but it'll also knock out the one in the front more than likely. So it's like, I aim there and you already know what's going to happen. The game will be like, oh, you wanted to aim at this guy here and it'll blow him up. And then these two won't even notice. And it's like, motherfucker, why'd you do that? And you can say, like, well, then you should have strafed further to the left. And it's just like, no, I just should be able to turn it off. I should be able to turn auto-aim off. Leave me alone. I knew what I was doing. I knew where I was aiming. This shouldn't happen. Now, if anyone was curious as to whether or not this actually does exist, like, are they like, is this really a thing? Uh, I was I'm doing a bit sure of testing. It existed in the original. Oh, I don't remember it being this bad. If you I check this out, I right? I remember. Um, so this was me fucking around. I was throwing everything at this poor necromorph. Um, and then I was throwing this. Something curious happened. And it's basically just the worst this system could get, possibly. It's auto-aiming... Our auto -aiming. always staggered enemies, yeah. It's, it's, it's auto-aiming to where its center of mass oh, would have God, been. Oh, my God, yeah. Mm -hmm. But isn't anymore, and it's just like, ugh. And like, you know, uh, this is the thing. We, we talk about the flaws in this game. This is small, but it's still unacceptable, dude. What are yeah, you doing? It, it never <laughs> like, happened to me. I never had this happen Yeah, I don't think me. it was this bad in the original. But do you I kind of remember is... shit would auto-aim in, in those games, though. Do you think, think that would have happened if it wasn't a battery? Like, I, don't know, uh, I don't know if it's because it's a battery. Maybe, but, I don't know. Um, I think be. there might be some sort of auto-aim uh, based off of what you're actually throwing. Because uh, I don't right. think it ever happened when I, when you're throwing random props at enemies. I don't think it happened. Um, but when you throw blades, it can absolutely happen a lot. But uh, can I you think just this is ruin just a your game, the game by like throwing batteries outside of places that you? Can I don't get know. Them. I was just... curious about that actually. Um, I'm, I imagine that... it would go back to where it was originally set. Like uh, would... Maybe I didn't know. That's actually a good question. Next time I play through it, um, I'll uh, I'll do that to be curious. Um, I had a battery for bug science. once, or one battery didn't, or one battery didn't spawn that I needed. But it's a you know it's a bug. It happens. It's no um, But yeah, uh, the reason why this can be super bad as well is the getting um, like these things do a lot of damage, like the blades or the stabby stabs, and if they just fucks up or. Um, miscalculates the thing or hits them in them the, the whole point is like hey you gotta hit their limbs and then the game auto centers it to the not limbs you're like thanks i was gonna say <laughs> there is no way they're not aware of the idea of severing a limb and then using it to sever another one with kinesis they have Absolutely. to be aware of that so well, I, why does it work like this 
I, I think I, I think I explained it. Um, I think help they them poor players out there who. Yeah. On a, I, I think they decided clown stick users. <laughs> yeah, because there's there's that decision you have to make when you're designing the game of all right, you know, we have auto aim for or we have aim assist that you can turn on and off. Uh, you can even modify the strength of the auto aim, which is legitimately appreciated. You know, I, I like it that you could uh, modify the strength of the auto aim. Obviously, I don't use it. I'm mouse and PC and I'm an adult. But uh, for people who are playing the game who want like a lot of auto aim or a little bit, they can decide. I think more games should have that. I'm, I'm happy but, for it um, to be an option. That'd be fine with yes, me. Yes, it is, it is an option, yeah. And I can understand if you're playing on clown sticks, you need some help. Like, fine, yeah, sure, whatever. Um, but the issue being was they had to make a decision. What do we do with Kinesis? How, how do we make Kinesis work? Do we, like, does your character automatically, like when you're holding an object in your hand with Kinesis, does it legitimately change where you're directing the thing as you hold it? And so I said, no, 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 let's do it to where once you throw it, then the auto aim takes over. And so they decided on the way that they did. And I understand why they did it. Is it a huge sin? No, not at all. But it is annoying because there were a few times I was like, <laughs> damn it, I didn't want to throw it there. But at least it always hits the enemy. So that's. And like I said, nine times out of 10, I find very fast. Uh, I was supposed to say fascinating, uh, satisfying to use the Kinesis system. It, it is just glorious for the most part. I don't know if anyone else. Oh, knows yeah, it different. feels good. The effect of it hitting enemies is good. When it impales them to walls, it feels great. When it just knocks them on their ass, it feels powerful and effective. Um, it just feels really great when you throw explosions at enemies, they turn into meaty chunks. Uh, I, I, I find really it, love it is admirable. I find it a little bit cartoonish how fast and how long they will be launched, like all the way to the other side of the arena. No, it's but awesome. It, from a gameplay standpoint, it really <laughs> yeah. works. Like it's satisfying. It's only on killing blows uh, that it'll impale them to the wall. Um, right, but so not cool. does, the, the fact that it knocks them back and then it takes them a while to get back up, you know, a lot of damage and a stun essentially, a, a, a really powerful yeah. you know, CC on them is um, Does it make me cool. a terrible person to say it's extremely satisfied to kill a baby with a pole in this game? <laughs> no, I burn the children <laughs> oh, another, uh, another really cool thing that they did uh, a few things I noticed um, I don't know if y'all did, on the walls Throughout the Ishimura, there are pipes that you can pull off, and they are among the strongest. Uh, yeah, like an insta kill, right? In the game, it's <laughs> pretty much always. Yeah, they're very strong. The the big thicker poles that have the blue lights on the top and bottom of them. Uh, if you see them on the walls, you can knock them off, or you can just pull them off with kinesis. Yeah, Incredibly pipes. powerful. Yeah. Um, and also, they added something from Dead Space Two. Uh, <laughs> Dead Space Two added uh, little poles that are lit on one end. <laughs> And uh, you can throw those, uh, they're part of the environment uh, in the sense that they're often used as the corner parts of like shelving. And they have that little glow in the top to know that you could essentially knock those off and you create four really powerful spears. And they added those to this game. So that was really neat that they added those as well. I agree. Um, you know what's really nice about this remake is that I feel like there, there were so many things they could have easily fucked up if they were like, you know, kind of like the Halo show where they're like, oh, let's change this and let's change that and let's change this. And, you know, some remakes kind of like... Space Silver Timeline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, you know, it's it's really easy to change very small things because you don't see their importance. But it yeah. seems like the dev team, you know, they had to look a pretty decent ways back at this game, you know, 2008, and it, how much they got right. But not only that, how much they actually improved from the original game, I think, is really impressive. Which is um, something I, that was mentioned earlier, I think. I think Mola mentioned it, that there's, like, sort of a perspective of, oh, well, I mean, they're just pulling stuff that was from an older, like, from an existing work. So, like, how much credit did they deserve? It's like, well, they made the thing. And it they works. made the choice. To Have you seen how that. remakes go these days? It works. Yeah. <laughs> they fuck it them works. up pretty easily. Yeah. Well, it's just, uh, ultimately, like, the work needed to be put in to carry over these systems faithfully, for starters. Especially yeah. if it's being built on a totally different engine, which if, if it's being built on Frostbite, then yeah, it's a different engine than the original. To make the choice to carry those features over, and to thoughtfully make changes that are cohesive with the original uh, sort of vision for the game. It's like, yeah, that's that's just worth praising. Not exactly. Is this game on Frostbite? Uh, apparently yeah, it, it is. is, yeah. Yeah. Huh. 
I, I thought it was a real engine. engine. I, I thought I have really given up on their proprietary store. engines. What's interesting is we often say ideas are cheap, it's the execution that matters, and it's like this is a unique situation of the ideas weren't theirs and that they nailed the execution, and so what is that worth? It's like, surely that should be worth a lot. It's gotta be worth a lot, oh, because yeah. it's the work that went into... To, it could have... Dude, it could have been it could have been like been, bad. Yeah, this could have been it rough, been especially bad. with uh, you know all the dialogue and story changes that they made, which we'll get into later. But uh, um, before we before we go on, uh, we were talking about Kinesis to a bit. A yes. minor complaint: there were a few times when I uh, a lot of enemies can die in the same place based on where you are and what you do, and almost always. If you have a bunch of, you know, corpses stacked up in an area, and there's a lot of props around the ground and stuff. Yeah, and you don't and pick up what you, you want to. Yeah, generally, you will fish the blades out, and it, and it generally works. But sometimes, oh, damn it, I want to pull the blade. I don't want that random bit of a, of, of a tibia, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want this, you know, I don't want this random ulna. I, I really, really would like to pull this blade out. And it almost always works, but when it doesn't, it could be really frustrating and annoying, especially because enemies are trying to kill you and they're getting closer and closer, and you're like, no, 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 give me blade, 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 no, 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 no. So to echo that as well, I think the most annoying is, uh, it happened to me many times, was, um, you know, the fat dude's arms? Uh, they're like yeah, huge fucking yeah. sore yeah, things. Um, sometimes I would pull on, like, I see the huge arm, and I'm like, that, please. And then it pulls, like, the mm -hmm. flashy upper arm portion, <laughs> and I'm like, really? And like, yeah, the, sometimes that the, happens. The saw blade is flopping around attached to it. I'm like, I want that. That's the part <laughs> I want. <laughs> like, come on. I want the part that's useful. I imagine that it might be a bit... Because I guess you'd have systems in play, right, where you imagine that the game would try to prioritize picking up useful objects, but at the same time, somebody might want to pick up the flabby, you know? Like, you got to still let <laughs> players have the ability to do that, so maybe it's like trying to figure out how much the game needs to nudge it towards what's useful versus what you're actually aiming at. Um, it's probably a little bit more complicated. It's, it's probably not that easy, actually, to uh, to get right. Well, I was just thinking maybe a good way of fixing that is if you had a thing where, like, if you hover your coast, your cursor over a pile like that, it would highlight the object that you will mm, pull if you press it. the kinesis button. Uh, but then maybe, I was thinking uh, that might actually violate the game's idea of, like, keeping yeah, all the interface yeah, exactly. stuff baked exactly. into the rig. Well, could you not right? argue actually, the, the, laser the, from the, it, the, the laser from your weaponry maybe? is lighting up those portions or whatever? Yeah, the right. um, because when you're... I, I don't know if you, if you, I hope you noticed this, but throughout the game, whenever you're, whenever something is kinesable, that's when the little magnet shows up when you're aiming with your weapon, that magnet sign. Right, That pops yeah. up when there is something that you can actually pull with kinesis. Um, kinesable. I right. think the, I think their idea is a good one. It didn't pop up enough to be where it lets like a really big problem, just when it happens and you really need it to happen and it doesn't, you're like, uh. But I think this prioritizing the blades off of enemies, like I said, it, it almost works all the time. It's just an annoyance when it doesn't. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's just a little thing I notice every once in a while. Put it together in such a way that it's going to be, it's going to fuck you over much less often than it's going to do what you want. Yeah, it, I even it think most... that pulling something specific that's highlighted would mess you up more um, instead of it just having be you know, the pile of gore. Like ninety percent of the time, probably maybe ninety plus, when you just yank, if there's something to pull that you need, it will pull the correct. Thing. It would often, yeah. I, I want to give the game some credit on if there's a pile of flesh and I know there's a blade in there and I pull on it and it gives me it. I'm like, thanks, game legend. Yes, <laughs> it, it, it knows what you want almost all the time. Yeah, right. So it, it, it's Apparently, a pretty mind you can... doesn't mean it doesn't sometimes though. So. Yeah, yeah. You can also you can pull flesh uh, or like limbs off limbing enemies if if they're damaged enough. Yeah, if the limb, if the li if the specific limb is damaged enough, you can yank. I did not know that. Right off yeah. the it's an achievement. Mm -hmm. Wish uh, Wish Oh, maybe I did that. And I didn't realize. <laughs> I just, I just learned that from Spearrunner's video, and I was like, "That is awesome! <laughs> I need to try yeah. that." Oh yeah, and I guess uh, that might be a good way to talk about, as we talked about before, the damage system for the necromorphs in this game is like really much awesome. Much better. It's, it's so much better. <laughs> It's so detailed. It's Battlefield's yeah. Levolution for a body. Yeah, pretty, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, right. as it's limbs heavy. take more and more damage, they will look more and more damaged. This is a good so, example, um, by the way, like what this until feature they're like small damage. little brittle sticks, and then you're just like, oh, yeah, 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 that. And that gives yeah, but this visual is, uh, feedback to weapon class, exactly. Like the force gun and the flamethrower. 
Yes, it is a good example of ways of blending like visuals that obviously look really cool and are detailed and, and feel appropriate for what's happening, you know, with the context is presented in the game, but also that it has a clear gameplay utility. It shows you which limbs you've injured. So like if you've shot a necromorph a few times and then, I don't know, you have to run off to get away from them, you turn around again. It's like, oh, well, I know which limbs I've targeted already, so I can go for that. It's like a diegetic uh visual feedback system it's really good yeah, um, that force gun is back, super gnarly cool. the force gun basically yeah. just flays them turns them into skeletons gun, yeah. Yeah. combo everybody i'm telling you if you haven't tried it's, it, try it is it. a it's, it's a good force. combo yeah <laughs> I have a, really either combo. order they both work either you peel off their well, skin and set them on fire or set them on fire and toss them across the room it's, it's awesome of, um, either way there's a form of psh i want to let everyone know plasma cutter pretty solid Works real well. The right. 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 The awesome. Pro in case, I think it's the in best case anyone the didn't know, yeah. tends to be uh, the best weapon. It's a really reliable. cool weapon. It's very reliable. I have a, reliable. I have a question though. Um, I it's actually bizarre that I maybe I might have missed this, depending on if it's the case or not. Maybe I was just so much in the zone and I was so sort of committed to a strategy that I didn't even notice it. Do enemy do any enemies spawn with pre damaged limbs? Apparently, yes. if you do story mode, yeah. all the enemies show up with completely flayed limbs, making them weaker. Of course, yeah. Because yeah. oh. I, because I, I was just playing through a normal, so I, I might not have, like I said, if they do, and I just didn't notice it. I think that would be strange that I wouldn't, but it, it would be really neat if every once in a while necromorphs would spawn with already you know pre-damaged limbs that would show up visually right yeah, a weak point, in the ship yeah or something. like even missing arm or missing leg or mi just just to show that they've been in a fight previously yeah um or, or for, yeah for whatever reason that limb is particularly damaged That'd be cool. you could use that you know take advantage um, of it that gives that would have dual utility of giving you an extra way to tune and counter difficulty yeah That's true. yeah the Way enemies would be weighted differently. They already are because they have like essentially different difficulties, different um, uh, like levels of power, as they have uh, always in Dead Space. Um, but also the element of yeah, you can tweak that even further by saying, yeah, this one he's got a weak leg. Uh, this one's got a weak arm. Got a gammy so, leg. That'd be, that'd be neat. representation for the cripples too. Oh, very true. <laughs> um, uh, let me see. What is the the red the the red glowy thing that just happened on him? What is that effect? Because I noticed that on my marker. playthrough. But... The marker when oh, when okay. the necromorphs are near the marker, oh, right. they go slower. I think. Yeah. I gotcha. I gotcha. Oh really? They reference yeah. that in the uh, yeah. In it's the, a lore accurate thing. Um, they do a yeah. Title drop. Did you want? Uh, what would you rather do first? Because I was tempted to talk about gunplay, but also enemies. Do you think we should do gunplay first, since that kind of matches the kinesis and? Uh... I think so. Good yeah, let's do the player side stuff first. So I think we should all do an impression of the dividers sound effect when you first see them. The divide. Oh, the. <laughs> oh. That's my favorite noise in the whole game. <laughs> yeah, that low moan that they give you. I always want to call him the long man whenever I see him. The long man. I like that. I like that. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so. Gunplay, I find it incredibly satisfying to use that plasma cutter to the point where I never get bored of it. Uh, it is very satisfying. It's got a punch to it. It's super good in all scenarios, but it's not. It doesn't feel OP to me. It, oftentimes, uh, I'll be clocking out at like all twenty-three shots in the middle of a big battle and reloading and not feeling like, man, I'm just dominating with this thing. Even though I kind of was, but to be fair, I played this game like a million times in in a sense. Yeah, with the weapon rebalancing, that's especially the case because there was some really bad ones in the original game, like flamethrower. Oh, mainly. the pulse rifles alt fire. Oh, pulse man. rifles alt fire was always a meme. Uh, the fact that they finally <laughs> gave it its Fuck proper little button. grenade, that which can be retrieved and refunded, by the way. Um, uh, I, it's, I it's, it's nice that. to see those sorts of things. I've heard the flamethrower in the original described as legendarily bad, which yeah. is, oh, yeah. is yeah, 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 because it was, it was really it's useful. Not very effective. Well, in Dead Space Two, it was uh, is quite good. It was similar to the it's pulse cool. rifle in the sense of it is it can be extremely ammo um, yeah. uh, efficient. Oh uh, yeah, it, uh, it, it, super efficient. It, it in my current impossible run, I, I just finished chapter six. I my the flamethrower is my. Stomp that node. No, yeah, I know, but Rags, I actually, I actually <laughs> said to my chat at this point, I'm spending this ammo because I can't do anything with it otherwise. 
I'm like overflowing with plasma energy ammo. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was just gonna say that the flamethrower is my ammo saving workhorse. It's it does a lot of consistent damage to the point that I can I can damage a bunch of enemies with the flamethrower to the point that I can then pull out the ripper and then use one blade to kill all of them. Yeah, and, you uh, soften yeah. them up and then kill them with your other weapons. Yeah, it's uh, it's really solid. The, uh, the Ripper is my favorite weapon. Visual yeah. feedback to that, which is really important. Before uh, I just want to highlight, I really like how everybody has different preferences. Uh, a lot of different weapons. Like, I want to do a playthrough where I try out all of the weapons because I'm just um, a plasma cutter is OG. But I think Rags, you mentioned you were never that fond of the Ripper. I meant to say uh, like uh, it was. It was only of... in the sense of I just never really cared about it. Um, I I didn't. In this playthrough, the four weapons that I used and stuck with were the plasma cutter, pulse rifle, force gun, and contact beam. Well, uh, uh, on the next playthrough, I'll go through and I'll try the other ones a lot more. What I remember, I, I was going to uh, play this anyway. So about my OG Dead Space plays when I wasn't restricted to just uh, plasma cutter was I would have plasma cutter, ripper, and I think line gun. I actually think that was my. I often use the line gun. Yeah. The triple and and it was like <laughs> line gun for when there's a horde, ripper for when there's like multiple of those small enemies, or I just want to tear into. I legit whenever I use the ripper, I feel like a fucking psychopath. I'm just like. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a psychopath's weapon. Yeah. Well, weapons feel though, appropriately though versatile but specific. Uh, some weapons are obviously more versatile than others. The pulse rifle and the. Um, Do you, you know, guys the think they should have added new weapons? Um, uh, I'm, I'm back and forth no. on whether or not I want the javelin gun in here. I I don't think so. I think that the weapon selection they have is good. There's sort of a weapon for every occasion. The alt fires are all uh, purposeful, so in a way, you kind of double the amount of weapons. Um, mm -hmm. In the other dead spaces, they had they you know they added weapons, whether it was the seeker rifle or you know javelin anything along those lines. But yeah, the javelin, javelin gun. gun. Adding but, more uh, weapons may have been overreaching because we're already contending with a balance. There's already so many the of them. Game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. have a good amount, and they all have two modes of fire that are viable. Viable, right. and um, uh, some feel obviously the force gun is more of a you know a, a situational weapon, but it it does that very usefully. It's always useful. I always have my force gun in my play. But I mean, that's the good balance of the game, right? Mm -hmm. Is you have your versatile weapons that are always going to be useful, like the plasma cutter. Pulse rifle is usually pretty useful. And then, yeah, you've got the weapons that are like, in this specific situation, this will be the weapon that I need. Or, yeah. uh, or you know, if you just want to mess around, right? Like, if it was like the Ripper is definitely uh, more of the a fun weapon, right? To kind of mess around with. I think sometimes a surplus of weapons can be fun, like Time Splitters or GoldenEye or something like that. But you do have, <laughs> you end up with a bunch of guns that essentially do the same thing. Um, well, yeah, whereas here, every weapon is functionally distinct. Every each weapon has, has like a purpose, a yeah. Yeah, right. and they, they each, there's, there's not one that feels like it treads on the other. And yeah. the more weapons you add, the harder I think it gets to maintain that balance. It's kind of the reason why you look at Halo, it probably has less weapons overall than like Call of Duty or Battlefield. But like each weapon is very uh, functionally distinct, you know, even when there a is a little bit of overlap. Well thought out synergy between them. There, there's reasons yes. to pick two specific weapons at a time because they complement. Yeah, them. yeah. There's yeah, a reason like, for it. I remember I ran into the Leviathan fight and I had like the Ripper, the Force Gun, uh, the Flamethrower, <laughs> and the Plasma Cutter. And I was like, well, fuck me. Plasma, plasma Cutter it is. Yeah, yeah, that's the reason why you gotta plan it out. Yeah, Not you much gotta, choice you gotta there, plan yeah. out um, yeah. to make sure that you've got the weapons you need. Never felt lacking. I always felt, I, I never felt like, oh, I wish I had a different weapon, or um, I wish that, you dual know, I had a weapon that's Yeah. Oh my dual, God. Yeah, <laughs> dual wheel them. Um, Why didn't I think of that? Yeah, I never got the feeling that I wanted more weapons, other than just, like, the curiosity of, huh, I wonder if I had the Seeker Rifle, you know, or I wonder if I had the, you know, the da-da-da, or, you know... Because like, everything just feels good uh, in this game, but you never feel like, oh, these. I wish we had more weapons. These ones feel so lacking, and I wish you know. Uh, yeah, very well, good. I think that like adding one new one might have been interesting, or maybe adding it like been, uh, yeah. the maybe even a some from, you know, a something that. Too. Man, I'm asking too much, but I was about to say like, what if you could like combo any two weapons into a new special weapon? Some kind of like crazy <laughs> variant. I think that's too much. Uh, <laughs> but I want it. <laughs> like plasma cutter plus uh, the ripper means like it shoots the oh, blades. Oh, right there, and... that pipe on well, the wall. See him right there. Yeah, you could pull those off. The 
Yes, you can. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. with the two little easy. lights on them. And I do oh, think it is the strongest right. uh, thing to throw in the game. As yeah, all probably the is. yeah, there's two on the ground there. Mm -hmm. but, also, yeah, Kinesis I, I is... Are the oh, look at that shit, like, Rags. Uh... Look at that. Yeah, that's the one. Oh. Yeah, that's the Unfucking one. cool that that's a thing that happens. Yep, it hits him, <laughs> bonks him in the head. Not oh, cool. <laughs> phone call, so sorry. Uh, on, your, on your point, Mauler, Dead Space 3 actually did that to a degree. Oh, yeah, the you custom creation yeah this is the thing dead space could... 3 is a bit of a frankenstein this stuff in there yeah it is, is. Pretty neat. yeah yeah mm -hmm. it's not a total yeah, failure it's, not, it's, not <laughs> it's a mostly complete, a failure. That's a failure yeah well, that's when ea was was saying uh they needed to sell five million copies of the game in order yeah. for the franchise to continue yeah thanks for yeah, that EA. The late and then four years the later they were like if everyone. we can't if we can't make a video game into a live service then we won't make it at all and then they're six kind of, years later, here we are. Dev is yeah, raiding well, us right now. The kind of dreams be changing, right? Because I've got Star Wars oh Jedi God. like that. But then again, they just canceled Titan, a single-player Titanfall game. So, you know. Ah, uh, maybe oh. Titanfall died so that Dead Space could come back. <laughs> <laughs> That's a video essay title. I think yeah, I'm, I'm just in kind of a black pill spot on Star Wars, because while I liked Fallen Order, I'm just not at all excited for Survivor. And I think I it's just, that Fallen Order is a little... Star Wars stuff. I'm just like, hey. I totally understand why. Um, yeah, there's that certain feeling. I, I guess Obi-Wan broke kind of, me. <laughs> you know what? Obi-Wan broke a lot of people. <laughs> I was just like, okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> glorious death then. <laughs> that's, um, that's the answer. Yeah. Hey, Dev. How you hi, doing? Dev. Mr. Oh, hi, Dev. The, the tiny fat otaku man is in that chat. Lofty's here too. Another Last of Us Episode 3 enjoyer. Last of Us Episode 3? Right. Oh, fuck. For a second, I thought you meant yeah. part three. Yeah. And I was the last like... of us television show episode of Lofty <laughs> Pedro. <laughs> I was on his channel one one over one. a week talking about it. The we enjoyment of that episode. Which do, you, which do you think is, uh, which do you, chapter or episode is a way to title sequels? Which one, which one robs you the wrong way more? Um, oh, okay. That's an interesting question. Like, which one would annoy me to hear more episodes? Which one do you think is more pretentious, chapter or episode? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's got to be chapter. Yeah, I think chapter makes you think more pretentious. Episode is more strange to me. Does it change depending on the? Does it change depending on the medium? Is it more cringe if it's a video game? Yeah, if you call a second volume of a novel series chapter two, I'd like to call my second book chapter two. Yeah, if you're actually good at writing, you would be writing a novel, not a video game. Oh. God. No, but like, if you have a series of six novels and you call them chapter one, chapter two, get fucked. Oh, that's just confusing. Okay. That's just yeah, really no, like confusing. chapters are oh, inside a buddy. You can't call volumes chapter of a seven book of chapters. chapters. Oh, look, Rags' his leg came off yeah. when I threw it that time. Oh, uh, oh I, I looked away just a second. Oh, oh, it did. Yeah, oh. it did. Yay. You see, like, I was like, wait, how did like... anyone in here but me's leg come off? What? <laughs> I don't understand how the regenerator works. He he yeah, interacts like... weird with some sort. Have you guys noticed? I don't know if this happened in the original. I want to say that it doesn't, but I'd need to check. But when he's like regenerating, um, in this game, he's like invincible. Like you can't do anything to him until he's done regenerating. While I remember in the original being able to chop him down even while he's regenerating. Say so he like pops out his arm, pops out his leg, he's getting there, you can now I cut them off recall. again. I can't I can't remember. Can't it was annoying me yeah. in this game because I, I was he, tossing I shit at him while he was on the floor and it I was think doing you nothing. you had to wait for the limb to fully regenerate before you could damage it. Yeah, I don't want to be too confident on that, I need to check them all and compare, but I remember being annoyed and I remember thinking like, hey, this is supposed to work, isn't it? What's going on? And it's like, well... Different rules, Bubby. Remake. Yeah, I can't quite recall myself. Um, um but he's, uh, yeah, he, he's, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I, it, honestly, like a like an overhaul of just uh, the whole system. But it's the same system. It felt pretty much just as satisfying. Everything's just as punchy and effective. And uh, I was very and and sound effects. I guess we haven't really talked about that. Uh, the sound in this game is wonderful, as it is in the original. It's yes, one of its biggest. There was another thing they could have fucked original. up, right? I, I, I yeah. think about when uh, when 343 got Halo and they made Halo 4 and then everything sounded terrible. I think about the same yeah. thing could happen with a remake. They could have changed all the sound effects to make them different or try to make them better, but they were already good. This like, sound effects are really say, fucking cool. Something I would say is that in the original, the sound design was doing a lot of heavy lifting to enable oh, the yeah. atmosphere. You can hear like the ship kind of... Like it's it's there's so many of these weird sounds where it's like that's something that's crawling around out there or man it feels like the ship is dying 
like that space is really exerting a lot of uh influence on this this vessel that Very could be like destroyed atmosphere. at any moment like mm. and a, a like dying a ship you're on a dying ship and here it was like they parried it over very well. Yeah, they put You're a lot a of effort into their audio systems in space. In space, <laughs> in space that's right. In what? dead space, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I think the only, um, I think the only thing that I did not like sound wise is not that not not even that it it wasn't bad at all. It really wasn't. Say it, cut. Uh, but I prefer the but I prefer prefer the old version. By the way, you could pull the portrait of the turbine guy, and there's a semiconductor behind it. I wish um, I'd caught that, but I did. Yeah, there's a, there's like scratches on the side of the portrait, and the portrait's just a little off uh, off alignment. But fun little thing makes me wonder the Dude, things this I game missed. Is cool. <laughs> yeah, I I was very thorough, but I uh, legitimately am curious to go back oh, and see yeah. if I missed it. Yep. Yeah, see? it's a little tilted. And if you shine the light on it, there's a scratch marks on the paint of the wall. But um, point being, um. Oddly enough, this happens in another game that will be a very re a reference that a few people will get. However, in this game, the whispers that you hear in your head, I think they were better in the original. Uh, the woman whispering, uh, reading off like a, a essentially like a psychiatric evaluation and things of that nature I remember inside that one. your head. Yeah. I think they were creepier in the original. They're not bad here at all, but I think they were creepier in the original. And oddly I... enough, this was a there a very similar thing happened in believe it or not, Guild Wars 2, where there is a <laughs> there's a creature that speaks to your mind, speaks to people's minds and like lures them into like hypnosis or whatever. And it has that a, a female voice that's doing like an actual whisper. And it was actually really creepy. And then they went back later and fucking changed it, the bastards. But wow. um, yeah, I just think that 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 woman whispering can be super creepy. And I just kind of liked it more in the original. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. I think they the original Dead Space trailer was better than the remake trailer. The remake trailer is kind of like, yeah, we're still doing action mainstream kind of thing. And then the Twinkle Twinkle Little Star trailer is just like really somber, quiet song mixed with I incredible violence that just cuts in. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah you, I should get, you should watch both of the trailers for the 2008 version and for the remake Let's and just kind of... It's Someone interesting like, um, to see the difference in how games are marketed based on the time period. I love um, my horror shit, and uh, when I saw the trailer for Dead Space, I think a friend made me aware of it, I was like, I'm already sold. And they were like, there's a dismemberment demo, and I was like, yeah, I'm already sold, though. And they were like, yeah, but <laughs> you can play the demo. I was like, fine, I'll play the demo. And I remember playing it, I remember what room it is, and I remember playing it over and over again. I was like, I need this game. I, I need it. I gotta have it. It's so fucking cool. You me there's a dismemberment demo is enough to sell me a pre-order. <laughs> yeah, because it's just a cut off the limbs. That's how you beat these enemies. And then you fight them. You're just like, what the fuck are these enemies? This environment, how fucking cool looking I am, and how satisfying all this combat is. I was like, I need, I need the game. Give me. Yeah, that the trailer one, sold me the the original uh, one. De oh, Dead Space was the favorite game of West Creek famed horror director. Rest in peace. On the whispering, there was a couple instances in this new one that I thought were a bit silly. There's there's one like I think it's Mercer whispering to you and it's like the reanimation of dead tissue or something like that. I'm like, yeah. okay. Like <laughs> why why am I hearing this exactly? Like <laughs> I can understand some things being whispered, but that just felt like a little odd. Um but not a big deal. I and uh really sorry, go job. ahead. Uh, sorry, I thought they did a really good job of mixing different types of sounds to make it not really clear if what you were hearing was a mechanical sound of the ship if it was even a piece of your own equipment that was rattling around mm -hmm. like kind of yeah. does sort of thing every so often that makes you sort of go oh wait is that is there something beside me oh oh, oh no that was me it was I just think, me is, it, a sh is yeah. it the ship or is it a critter yeah the <laughs> the ambience in the ishimura is fantastic throughout the game there were several moments where i would just stop look around and be like oh we're fine we're fine everything's fine it's all surprisingly practical like that's what i loved about dead space is like here's where they break up the ore and there's a audio or there's a text log of the guy who breaks up the the big asteroids and he's outlining how much of it is usable minerals and materials and then you know here's the tram station where you know there's like a little waiting area everything is so practical on the, on the ishimura yeah um so uh, before sorry before we get off sound uh near the beginning of this uh i mentioned the uh this the unique systems they developed for this remake one of which being 
a system entirely dedicated to the way Isaac breathes. And um, like you guys were saying, the, the sound design in the original game is really good, but um, there were a couple things with like the way he breathes. There was a bit of an issue with like sounds overlapping. Like for instance, you would sprint around and Isaac would like be breathing out of breath. And then you would melee an enemy during that time and he would be like going, yeah, rawr. And then like that would be playing over top him breathing from exhaustion. Hmm. And uh, there's little things like that where uh, it could have been mended, obviously. But this this new system makes sure nothing like that ever happens. And there's even, it goes as far as like changing lines of dialogue, the delivery entirely based on like his health. Like if Isaac is low on health, he'll have different line, a set of different line deliveries where it's like he sounds more injured. Well, I was curious if anyone knew, Does he, did they actually record the entire game's dialogue in one for full health, one for lower than half? I think that's probably how it works, yeah. That's that's just great. And uh, I tested it out on stream. We we had him delivering a line in a cutscene where I was on, I think, three bars out of, like, eight. And he was like, you know, uh, 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 you know like that kind of thing. And then as soon as I gave him health during the cutscene and it went back to normal. It was just like, that's yeah. cool. Just unbelievably think impressive. A practical standpoint for production, that's actually not even that difficult to do. Because you got to think that when you're doing voice recording for, for dialogue for a game, or especially when it's stuff like ancillary things like grunts and you know things that where you can get a bunch of different options for it, you'll probably get like three, four takes of each line. So if, if in those takes you just say, hey, now let's have an option where you sound a little more injured, just have the director say, let's have ones where you're, you're beaten up a little bit. And now, okay, now this line where... What I you're think, highlighting I think is that it's not too difficult to implement in the recording situation, but like mm -hmm. this is something that yeah. we have to absolutely like thank the them for doing because it would oh, take yeah. a while. Oh, yeah, no, no. The, yeah. the implementation. Well, I, I would. I still want to highlight it's extra work for the voice actor because what you're saying, because yeah. I've had to do it as well, is like when you record one line in four versions and then they're like, now we need another four versions of the same line, but now exasperated. That's a lot of work. That's a lot yeah, of additional I, yeah, work. No, that it's much a credit is true, to Gunnar Wright that he's able to do that. that yeah, he can and it do sounds good, sounds convincing, lines, yeah. and then they implement it, and it's something that most players are not going to notice. No, uh, I, I, didn't, think I had no idea that he sounded different at medium Wait, and low health because I was never. I have a fun fact for you guys. Much. I have a fun fact for you. Did Ooh. you guys know that the voice actor for Hammond is the same guy who gets uh, kicked down the well in Three Hundred? <laughs> the same guy who's <laughs> the, the original. Yeah, I did. He's Those also on the show. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. He's a, that is he's a, a fun pretty, fact. It is a fun fact. It is a very fun fact. I guess he I, made, I I guess he made it out of that hole. I was like, he oh my god, it is him. It's totally... It's the same dude. I was kind of disappointed he wasn't in this version, though. I was like, oh, the Spartacus We guys. will get to that. <laughs> We're going to get to the characters, because there's we'll uh, lots to say. Because uh, I was going to say, do you want to now move on to uh, enemies? Enemy types, enemy implementation. That seems like the natural step after talking about killing them all. Um, yes. In many different um, ways. Yeah. Well, as um, as an in between thing, one of my favorite soundy things was whenever you hear the hunter specifically sort of crawling around the vents, and you you're like you can hear him, but you kind of get a sense in some rooms where it's like I don't think he's gonna spawn here, but he's like around, mm -hmm. and so like the, it might be the next room or the room after, but like I got got to stay on my toes, right? He's one of the first ones Do in the game that they the... show before giving to you directly. Like they they show him crawling above you, and you can see him, and then they spawn him a little bit later. It's just it's it's more like well, I guess they do that with the uh, the little shooty guy as well, the baby shooty. Yeah, the babies. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when it comes to enemies in this game, I think there was only one new enemy that they added. Um, I'm try I'm 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 sort of just like taking a moment to think, but I. I think, yeah, I think they only added one new enemy from the original, and that was the the spitting necromorphs, which they, uh, uh, which they, which I were not in the original, as far as I can remember. Uh, they were, because um, I, I felt that same way too. Apparently, were they, they were really? very rare. Yeah, they were very rare in the original, really? though. Yeah, I legit I, never. I played that game so much, and I don't remember them. I know. I I felt the exact same way because I asked chat, and chat knows everything. You know. <laughs> were they were, were they really was chat chat is you? the hive mind kind of they know all well yeah because i can't or maybe confirm i'm or just deny that. uh maybe i'm just uh, having a panic attack and i'm mistaking <laughs> it for dead space too 
I can't remember that. I did a playthrough of it recently. I can't remember if there's spitters in the original. Uh, it says that they. Okay, so it, yeah, on the wiki it says they existed in the original Dead Space with ac acid spitting ability, but did not receive a, a de a, the name spitter that designation until Dead Space Two. You almost said I ass spitting ability. Ass um, spitting. Yeah, yeah, that's so strange. I do not remember them uh, being in the first one. That's so crazy. I I only remember them as uh, you could play as them in the multiplayer of Dead Space 2. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that multiplayer mode. It was interesting. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't bad. Yeah, John. It, it, well, it felt a little tacked on to me, but that's just my perspective. It was I, always I, tacked was, on I, back I, then. Everybody got a yeah. multiplayer. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, true. Bioshock I feel, I feel 2 like is usually was... I loved Bioshock 2's multiplayer. <laughs> yeah, so did I. It was no. good. I love being a big daddy. Oh, you can fuck people up. I, I'm sorry, oh, but Assassin's Bioshock 2 is the Bioshock game with the best gameplay, guys. I, I don't think... <laughs> do, do people typically disagree with that? I think people mostly agree, don't they? Yeah, it's I just the one with, with that. Well, yeah. do you? Why? They improved a bunch of stuff. It's the one uh, with the... I felt like there were far too many sections where you, like, held out and put traps all around. I... I like the world of the original more. I'll give you that. I remember people bringing that up, but at the same time... Personal preference. I like the story in the original more. Well, every, um, everyone does. That's one way you, you have to go to jail if you thought Bioshock 2's story is better than one's. No, but its <laughs> mechanics were better. Um, that's what I thought, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, side note, um, I was looking up uh, the uh, models, uh, but there is a... I, I don't know if it was in the game or not. I think it might have been, but the model for the spitters, uh, generally they're female, but there are some male models <laughs> for the spitters as well. They're spooky. Gross. Let's say that the dudes always swallow. Oh my <laughs> god. Very funny. That's very funny. But that's weird. I, I don't know why I don't remember that. I played Dead Space so fucking much. And... I just don't remember them being in the first Dead Space. I don't remember that either. Yeah. I well, wonder if like they were in it, but they they only spat like at under very specific circumstances. And yeah, that just didn't happen words, much. Yeah. That probably was it. So because it says that they have attacks similar to both the normal slashers. Um, but um I yeah, thought maybe but... you were talking about the pukers from Dead Space 2, which nah, I liked. Nah. But yeah, that's a different thing. Yeah, um, it's so weird how I play games so much and still don't quite remember some things. As a foundation, um, I think Dead Space and its remake both have a great variety of enemies that have lots of different interactions that can make you change the way you approach lots of different scenarios. Um, mm -hmm. Not just limited to the fact that one of them explodes if you kill it, so wait for that one to catch up to the other sort of thing. But stuff like, yeah. you know, you, you're facing a big, tanky, slow one, but also one that jumps on walls, and one that's really fast that's running to you right now, and if you shoot it in More the chest... More than one of them who can use the walls for traversal, Yeah, too, so, so you often, it's like, hmm, which one first, and if I want to try and get to a particular place, which one of these guys might be able to head me off? Which one of them will catch up to me the fastest? Which one should I and put in even... stasis? Which one should I kill with a kinesis spear first, you know? Which ones might I not have seen yet that I need to keep an eye out to see if there oh, is dude, any when... of this encounter? They would do this a lot in uh, in the first game and in the, in the remake, but you'll have an enemy go blah, 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 right in front of you, crawling out of a thing. And there's so the one thing behind is, you. Yeah, <laughs> they spawn at the same time so that sometimes you'll, you'll be like, wait, did... was there something behind me? Ah! Oh, <laughs> like, right nah, there's one behind me. Behind me. <laughs> And there's no FOV slider in this game. They knew. They knew what they were doing. <laughs> I understand why, though. I, I get it. They, try, okay. they, they want to try and surprise and scare you. Um, yeah. yeah. Which sometimes can be annoying. Uh, there was, I think there was one time I was working on a bench, and like one of them burst out of the wall right next to it to the left, and I was like, boo. Like, this is boring and easy and cheap, but fine, I'll kill it. Uh, going into the enemy design it's the the way that they interact with the player and how you prioritize is really excellent i think this game does that extremely well even when we're just talking about like you know the baby enemies that are ranged they're 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 most vulnerable when they're ready to shoot at you and you often see them and hear them mm -hmm. so like all the, the the enemies have different sound like they make different noises so they're just by closing visible. your eyes you can they're... 
their little shooting tentacles glow too. So they're most visible if you're in a dark room when they're about to attack. Uh, yes, yes, they are. Um, so, so like if, if you're in a fight and you know, if there's a baby crawling around, you could hear it generally before you see it. You also see it crawling around, but you know, I've got a little bit of time until it makes itself vulnerable so I can do other targets, but I have to keep in mind that there's a you know baby around here. I got to kill that baby when it makes you itself burn vulnerable. the children. Do you guys children. remember the brute in the original game? If you damaged it, sometimes it would do this weird move where it would basically just like turn into a little ball and just let you like kill it. Yeah. I'm glad they <laughs> took that out. Yeah, no, actually, yeah. I think I agree with yeah, you. Because when I first now. fought the brute in this and he didn't do that, I was at first kind of like, hey, but then I was like, yeah, you know what? That's fine. Yeah, <laughs> like, well, yeah. We shouldn't do that. You know? <laughs> did, you, did you guys encounter the brute's ranged attack? Yes. Yes, I did on impossible difficulty, and it took me down to one tick of health, so I, yeah, I quit. I, just, I encountered it, it a lot when I was, uh, in the um in the bridge main room um, when I was running around with him. He threw that weird blob at me a lot. Yes, um, I I only I only had him attack me at range on that particular fight. The other ones were too close, and he charged. Uh, but yeah, if um, it, I think it, it really, you only, you really only get it if you take off one of its arms and it's slower and you can actually make distance between the two of you. Uh, but uh, yeah, I was just curious if it happened to y'all. Mm -hmm. I never noticed that because with the yep. brutes, I would always stasis them, run behind them and use a ripper blade. And that's it was the, uh, so easy to take them down that way. That's, yep, that's the ticket. Oh, and uh, if, um, if them curling up into a ball is in this one, I, I didn't see it in the entire game. Uh, from the brutes. Yeah, neither did I. Or if I did, I fucking missed it because uh, obviously that's a huge um, benefit to take advantage of, sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of annoying. I don't really have much to say other than they all they all work very well. I understand what I'm dealing with with all of them. If I had one that like I wanted to be critical of, it's the um. Ones that can kind of get me where I felt like I didn't have much that I could do about it. And uh, it's rare that that happens. It's usually more to do with spawns than enemies, but I suppose the culprit that would be most likely is the super fast boys from the Valor. Uh, yeah, I don't oh, really dude, like... I fucking love those guys. I love those oh. guys. They're so scary. <laughs> They're my least favorite to fight. I don't. I think the way that they sort of jitter around um, is I agree with really... that, man. I think they're hyper intense. <laughs> Oh, yeah. and they're definitely, they're definitely yeah. even if you stasis them it's like they move as fast yeah. as a normal guy if you stasis them <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i i just i wish that the way that they were quick was a little bit different um in the sense of like when a necromorph is charging at you full speed you know there's still sort of a pattern Horrible. to its its gait in the way that it runs at you where it, it, it there's a there's a swaying of all of its limbs like whenever you run there's a pattern of how your limbs move oh, and i feel no. like the, the weird jitteriness of the the stasis soldiers it just i don't i don't know i don't I, they're my least favorite um guess what i just I, found I out did them a bit different what did you find out i just found out because a friend is on the dead space subreddit and so they just they're just lapping it up they adore the game and yep. They just let me know that I guess I just didn't realize. I, I'm sure that many of us didn't read all of the things that were on the walls in the original game. But a uh, guy was playing the original game, but he was just like, "Wait, I thought everyone was complaining that this was added for propaganda or whatever." And he's taking a photo of, uh -oh, <laughs> of the original game. Oh. There is graffiti on the wall that says, "Fuck this ship! It's shitty capitalism corporation." Oh yeah, oh, 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 people oh, calling the game woke. Oh god, the game oh, is woke. Uh, oh, oh, here we go. Oh, that, that is in the original yours. game. It's in the original. <laughs> the game is woke now. Oh what? my gosh, it's woke. Oh my god. Oh, I can never At least play Kendra's oh. boobs were massive. They were safe. Oh, we can god. play the game oh, safe. Oh god, god, yeah. I don't even oh, want to get started oof. on that side of quickly. Oh, oh, thank oh, goodness. Oh, For real though, I was just <laughs> glad. I was about I've to boycott the game, guys. Oh. oh man. So anyway, carry on. <laughs> um, I I would say I was most annoyed in this game when I was in zero G and the babies were throwing things at me. Um, yeah. I just felt like I took a lot of damage there when it didn't feel quite right like i didn't even know they were around in the way that they sort of can because because when enemies shoot stuff at you they will predict your movement so mm -hmm. um you have to you know just take that into account once you know that it's a lot simpler to avoid them 
But uh, sometimes in zero G, it would just kind of really be annoying to kind of just get hit by these things. You have to find them and track them down. Yeah, try um, figuring out where they were in zero G was a lot yeah, more annoying because you're like, oh, sometimes it was like legit, like dark. And so you yeah. have to look around and try and find them and you, you want to keep moving so that they have a harder time hitting you. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, it could be annoying sometimes. And I definitely some eye rolls uh, here and there. Um, but when it comes, I'm just trying to think about, you know, like enemy design stuff. I mean, like most dead spaces, enemies have different tiers, like different levels. You have like your normals, your veterans, your elites. They have different eye colors. They're the, 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 the higher you go up in their tiers, they, they're a little bit darker looking. Um, there are enemies that have armored parts. So some will have like armored legs. So it's a lot more difficult to, if even possible to take out their legs. Yeah. Um, some <laughs> enemies, uh, it's it just, it's neat. You get a decent amount of variety that sort of mixes things up a little bit. Uh, and I, I, I think a lot of work went into sort of really nailing the concept of how different enemy types can make the player behave in different ways and prioritize differently. And I think they did a really good job with that. Yeah, I'm really glad to see it. I wasted a lot of plasma cutter rounds before I figured out the leg armor. No, like, wait, you didn't what realize the fuck? Oh, the yeah, couple yeah. times nothing was happening. I mean, I like. I guess I was panicking because uh, right. I was and I was in the middle of a fight, and know. I usually go for the knees first. So yeah, because like, the developers the hell? know. It's like, yeah, it's it's safer to it, it's safe bet to go for the legs first. Like, does it take and, ramble technically? He's like, yeah, but you know, it's it's a safe bet to go. For and I think it happened far enough into the experience that I was I was in the habit of shoot oh, the legs, yeah, get you. them on the ground, and then I was like, well, wait, wait, this isn't working? And then I was like, oh, oh yeah. they're wearing armor, okay. Yeah, and yeah. You know, uh, it, it it is in this game as it is in uh, all of the Dead Spaces as far as I know, but with the horizontal uh, alignment on the plasma cutter, you can hit both legs at once if you aim mm -hmm. high enough. So, oh, you cool. have to be close enough, too. Um... I, oh, I guess yeah. If you aim true. high enough, I guess eh, if you like. I, I don't think that the width of the beam changes with distance. Uh, just uh, it's uh, you know just how it looks. Well, sometimes their compared. legs can be further apart. So if you're, uh, but you're sometimes, right. I guess the height they would you, always come. To yeah, you something. you can. It, it's easy with stasis to do it. Uh, generally, mm. you just aim for one, but it is possible. And I think the, the different weapons have different. Uh, uh, I guess different uh, cleave. So the plasma cutter, as far as I know, has infinite cleave as long as it, it it doesn't hit like a like a piece of armor or a wall or a prop it will keep going so it'll slice through an endless amount of limbs mm -hmm. um yeah and i don't think that the pulse rifle does it i might be i might be mistaken i'm not certain but maybe someone in chat might know um so it's like always really that. cool to have yeah it, it's it's neat to have multiple limbs lined up uh, or when you know that they're coming at you in sort of a line you could hit like multiple necromorphs legs with you know the plasma cutter or something like that. Always feels good. Um, I'm trying to think now. Bef if so, before we get off enemy types, I love the hunter, and it's one of yeah. my. F it's uh, one of, it's one of the best examples of one of my favorite tropes in horror games of like an invincible thing, tank like enemy that stalks you, at certain points in the game resident evil 2 did it resident evil 3 did it regenerators not, resident evil 4 yeah. did it <laughs> kind of yeah yeah and not just the remakes but the og versions you had mr x and resident evil 2 uh you had nemesis and resident evil 3 although in the remake he was really nerfed uh, was the enemy you can't really kill, you could only slow down yeah. right yeah and it's a great it's it kind of it crops up a lot but it's one of those devices where it's just it's so good at ramping up the tension that you just do it and it's good. It's like if a it ticking can... clock in dramatic storytelling. It's like you just you just have it because it's it works. If I can throw in a and... bit of a monkey wrench, um, yeah, I would argue simultaneously that it's going to provide pros for your enemy to be unstoppable but slow because it's so scary, right? But I love the fact that we can slow him down, hit him with shit, and take off his limbs and put him in stasis and stuff. Like, I love that I can do all of that. And you'd be like, doesn't that make him a lot less scary? He's like, no. <laughs> like yeah. it's, and you'd be like, surely it does. And you're like, well, 
No, I don't know why. I think it's because of the fact that Dead Space as a game is filled with you chop its limbs off and then kill it, and this is the one that you chop its limbs off and then it regrows them and keeps coming. It's like, oh god, you flipped the whole premise on me with this guy. Like maybe well, the, the introduction <laughs> of the hunter is that you're trapped in a room with him for a while. Yeah. yeah. You can I also really like get that. the uh, the side quest. Can't you see Mercer torturing the guy who he turns into it? Yeah, you get you the storyline on that. You hear him torture him, but yeah, you get so yeah, it's a side mission where you uh, yeah, you you get the whole backstory on him. Sort yeah, of yeah, I I, I know it's a side experience. mission, but you you do see it right because doesn't he like hit him with a nail gun in the face? Or like oh, he has he, a nail gun that he like puts up to his he, head and oh, gives yeah. him a this lobotomy. is before uh he's using it to sort of like unlock help unlock his ability to understand the marker's uh influence. Mm -hmm. So that's done with a sort of like a purpose. And I yeah, I yeah, love I the uh the I love the incorporation of backstory for that enemy. It cuz I felt like it was a mm -hmm. sophisticated way of in increasing the horror element of that enemy without doing things like inc making it more cause more damage or anything like that like the fact that it used to be an ordinary nice guy who like and then by was the subjected last to these treatments yeah you hear him you hear his voice his audio in the last recording there and it's just he's barely human there's almost there's almost no humanity left he just can say a couple words and in this grunty terrible voice and you can only like theater of the mind what he must look like at this point yeah and in order to dispatch of an enemy like this, like standard means are not going to work. So whatever it is, it needs to be like, like major league. Like, so in the first case, it's like, you got to cryogenically freeze him and shoot him away. And then kind of the inverse of that towards the end is you have to burn him with the thrusters of the vehicle that you're trying to use to escape, which I thought was really neat. It's it's like you're a song it's like of we, ice and fire. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we got to get to the escape pod. This is our only way. And then it's like boom, here's this big monster. Like oh shit! But if I use the thrusters to incinerate him, it's like it just felt like a really nice boiling point that um, acknowledged the presence of the the escape shuttle, but also dispatched the heavy at the same time. Yeah, the it was like enemy. Goku uh, finally killing Majin Buu. You know, you just see him evaporate, and you're like, "Yes, every last cell is now gone." <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Every fucking molecule of it. Well, Isaac, Isaac speaks when you finally kill the hunter. He says, "You could finally. You, you, there's no more pain anymore. You could finally rest." Essentially. Um, yeah. You know, and I don't. And I'm curious. I've only done one playthrough, so I'm not certain yet. But uh, I wonder if Isaac's dialogue changes depending on what missions you've done. What what I was wondering about that myself. Done. If you because don't do any side some... missions, I'm assuming they may be left yeah, hunting, but I don't know. Uh, because there are some things that he says, like when he essentially bids the hunter farewell. He says, you could finally rest, you know, be at peace. Um, or when he talks to Nicole, um, that things he would only know if you have, uh, if you would have done the side mission. So I'm curious. Um, will I ever figure it out? Uh, no, because I'm always going to do the side missions. Uh, but I'm 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 wondering if someone else uh, finds also, that out. Also, um, you know, apparent fun fact: I have not tested it myself. I was told about it, but apparently, if you wear the infested suit when you first meet Hammond in the bridge, apparently, like the same cutscene, well, in in-game cutscene will run, but it'll open with him being like, "Uh, the fuck." Like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, hey, buddy. And, then, and then he just disregards it. <laughs> um, I'm guessing. Uh, like I said, I haven't. I haven't oh, well, seen. That's pretty weird, Isaac. But well, anyway, it, yeah, if you wear that suit and you in in those scenes where Isaac takes his helmet off, he just takes his whole head off. <laughs> yeah, really yeah. I need to play the whole game with that suit on. Then that sounds like fun. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, do you guys want to talk any bit about uh, the AI for the enemy? Um, it's something of a subject for all games, but I feel like uh, as part of why this game is solid in basically all the regards we're trying to go over, I feel like um, the AI, it's not particularly intelligent, but it is as good as it needs to be to make the game function pretty darn well, yeah. I would say. And believable, yeah. because these yeah. aren't necessarily intelligent creatures, you know? Yeah, a lot of and them are just I... like, I'm gonna get you... Blah, blah, blah. I, I yeah. think for the longest time that that was the the main benefit towards having something like zombies as an enemy in a, in a game, 
because yeah. yeah simplest you, you really, pathing closest yeah. distance to the player they take it um and it, it, yeah it's it's really easy to sell the ai if it's just like you, you need them to act like zombies who mindlessly attack and these are necromorphs who are monsters that function similarly to zombies they just move faster and they come at um, you hard and you know minor annoyance with uh i think that sometimes ai didn't quite work with the babies uh, they'll just kind of wander around, running around, running around. And sometimes they'd be like the only enemy. And I'm sitting there aiming at him. It's like, come on, do the thing, do the thing, open up, Stupid you know, babies. I need to, so I can kill you. He just wanders around in front of me, does a little circle, jumps on the wall, crawls around a little bit, jumps back down. And I'm like, oh, okay, try and kill me. Come on. And it would take a while for it to actually do that to the point where I was like, "Ugh, the AI for these could be better, especially right. because they have a ranged component. Yes, are you sort of describing like as like uh, an experience I'd have, and this was in the original as well as this one, so it makes me wonder about what materials they used exactly, or how did they transfer it over? But uh, those little fuckers would like, I'm gonna run up this wall. I'm gonna sit. I'm staring at you. Nah, actually, I'm gonna go nah, down a second. Not, Is it, oh, around yeah. here? No, I'm gonna go behind this thing. Oh wait, now I can't see you. Uh, let's try over here. And I'm like, I just want to shoot you, man. I feel like since the beginning of time, that's been an annoyance with enemies that have like reactive conditions in order to be damaged properly. I've run into that in so many games. Where you have to wait for them to do a thing before yeah, you can shoot. Yeah, you're just sitting there waiting like, you're yeah. going to do the thing eventually, stop beating around the bush. <laughs> or you just um, use the Ripper. Yeah. The Ripper gets the True. job done. Well, to be yeah. fair, sometimes I would actually be like, ah, fuck it, shoot, 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 you're dead now anyway. It just took longer, that's all. Or as I'm I just bullets. go up to them and I'm like, do you like Huey Lewis in the news? <laughs> I get it. Thank you. Thank you. That's an American Psycho reference. Circular um, saw. I sometimes got annoyed by the like the hunter has some iframes when uh, he's rebuilding his limbs and he's like about to stand up. Wow, right, John. In the process of standing upright. I said all of that like half oh, an hour oh, ago. Racism. Oh, shit, I'm, I'm you don't do this to the short people. You do it to the long ones. I see. My bad. It's okay. We I can love you. we can move on. No, I was saying, because my question was, I don't know if in the original you could keep shooting at him even when he was trying to regenerate and the things fell off, but in this game it felt like, uh, even when you saw it, I was showing clips of it, uh, I was trying to throw things at him, he <gasps> seems to have unique, um, I don't know, physics uh, in relation to how throwable things work on him. Um, right. And I think maybe the intention was to make him special and scary and stuff, but like, man, does it just feel like you're cheating when you toss the most powerful fucking thing in the game with Kinesis and it just goes boop. Like, oh, yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It is a you, you have to decide where you want to draw the line as a developer in the sense of you can't if you make every object stagger enemies, then you get into a situation where you could just endlessly juggle everyone all the time with any prop being like, ah, Oh, that's well, true, you but you if you throw yeah, a pipe at Mr. Invincible, then just take an arm off, right? That's what you do. Uh, yeah, something like that. There is, um... Instead it, like, bounces I mean, off him or something? Or look, it, like, it, like, anemically falls on him, and you're like, uh, okay, that's weird. Yeah, uh, the game has, like, different levels of staggering that happen with enemies, um, but sometimes there is an element of, like, I don't know, I feel like really any of these objects flying at the fleshy thing is gonna, you know, do a lot of damage, but I, like, I understand why it's not, you know, as powerful as it probably actually should be. It, it never um, really feels good when enemies disregard what should be yeah. damage because they're supposed to be more difficult. You, ever, you guys ever play Mortal Kombat 9? The one that's just called Mortal Kombat sort of reboot? Anyways, um, the, the uh, Shao Kahn boss fight, he just flat out cheats. He'll, he'll just disregard some of your attacks and flash white for a second, not being staggered at all, oh, I not know. taking yeah, any yeah, damage I know exactly from what you mean, me, yeah. and then just attack you through it. And you're just like, well, okay, I guess you hit me on that um, one. I think but. if someone was trying to defend that game, they'd probably say that's hyper armor and it's consistent because he's like a big old boss man. But I understand what you're saying. And it... Yeah, but like, if there's, no, if there's no tell for it for the player, then it's just you're like, how do I account for that? You know, it's just like, oh, yeah, I should have known that you would you would decide that that attack was one that you were just going to disregard and hit me through, even though right. you, you don't have an animation for it. You don't have a setup for it. You know, like, I, don't know. I, I just hate it whenever an enemy feels like that, where it's like you just cheated to hurt me it's, or to not take damage. I think it's particularly damaging in a game like Dead Space, which is very much focused on its immersive qualities to then have very clearly gamey aspects where something is not functioning as it should in order to 
make an enemy like more threatening or something. Mm -hmm. I think it's just a matter of your like if you want kinesis in your game, like that is really cool. But the implications of it are that you could send any object flying at enemies in incredibly high speeds. Um, and it, you, you have an infinite amount of them. You could endlessly throw stuff at people. So I'm not going to fault him too hard for sometimes it just not yeah. quite working, especially yep. with how incredibly effective it is anyway. But I do wish a little bit more effort went into maybe um, like more levels of staggered that enemies will have. So I throw this at him and, you know, it does a light stagger. Or, and maybe after I do that a couple times, it stops having an effect. Um, also, that's funny. What the fuck? <laughs> Wait, what? His best. Wait, what happened? Where oh, that, was I trying to... One little guy, oh, yeah, he's... He, he was like, standing there and he's trying. He just starts <laughs> flubbing around on me. He's just like... <laughs> I bet the reason for that is that the enemies only turn a certain amount. Dude, do, 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 so, uh, do you love Isaac is trying to track it? Yeah, Look he's at him. trying to be like, yeah. like oh, don't do oh, don't do that. I oh, love don't chicken do that. wing. Isaac is confused. Oh, I thought that was like multiple <laughs> things, not just one pit that kept jumping on you. It was just one, yeah. He's, he's flash around. <laughs> yeah, I haven't encountered many glitches in this game. What is he doing? His best. Yeah, no, I, I, I would want to go as far as saying the whining about their best. The bug count, my god, you, you guys, like I came across some funny bugs, but this game is really functioning well. It's a, uh, uh, yeah, tight. I, yeah, like that's one of them. I ran into a couple. Uh, only one of them was of any impact. Uh, a, a power block. Um, I pulled it out of its slot on the Valor, and then it just disappeared. Uh, yeah. So it took me. It, it only like was like a minute like there was a save or a checkpoint right before it so it was no big deal but i'm like oh that's not good um but other than that just some visual stuff the occasional necromorph body getting stuck in a door maybe yeah maybe happened like three times during the whole playthrough but i really didn't have uh any bugs uh what to speak of my first playthrough hammond's knees were in the floor of the, the <laughs> ship that you're landing on the ishimura in and I was I was immediately kind of afraid. I was like, "Oh no, is this is this, yeah. is this a sign of things to come?" But that was the worst glitch I had in the whole game. I've I've heard a lot of horror stories from people around the internet. Apparently, having run into things like the invisible batteries, enemies not spawning in, enemies getting stuck and caught in things a lot. But I haven't seen lots of it. It's kind yeah, of a weird thing. pretty bug free experience for me. Most uh, of them were just funny Alex bugs. Varies, so. Yeah, just funny bugs. It was almost. All of the bugs related to uh, just some collision issues with enemy body parts and like doors. I, I really do but, want to stress that's impressive for really. a game with this whole kinesis system. It's, yeah, uh, there's a mm -hmm. lot of shit going on that the game has to deal with, uh, and they did a pretty darn good job, uh, at least according to me. So, um, would you guys like to start talking about the story? Yeah, we can talk about the story. Since we kind sure. of went over Isaac's character a little bit in the opening, but if there's anything else, well, it's kind of hard to say, like, because do we talk about the people in totality, or do we try and talk about, like, what they do from start to finish? It's kind of, uh, and do we start with Isaac? I guess that makes the most sense. Probably go character by character. Uh, Isaac and Nicole, yeah. I suppose. We can talk, well, I mean, that's that's a big conversation. They They did some changes. I suppose so, yeah. Yes, they did do some changes. They did, uh, did some changes. I think the biggest changes, yeah, come in the form of Isaac and Nicole. Yeah, which is not and Nicole surprising. Nicole looking 20 years older for some reason. Isn't oh, it obvious there's reason? Why. There's a pretty obvious reason. Come on, yeah, when, I found out the re when I found out the reason, it made a lot more sense, and I felt Well, I haven't beat the game yet, so... Well, it's so not that, gonna... No, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. At the end of the game, that. they reveal it's she was hit with not... an aging laser or something. Uh, I will... <laughs> yeah. I'll know. It is, yeah, it is it's like a... some little exposition, like, oh, remember that time it... I got hit by the aging laser? I just... Anyway, <laughs> let's go home. It is, oh, it's, it's it's just... a... Anyway, let's it go is home. Meta ex... It's a meta yeah. explanation. It's just that she's the actress who played Nicole in Dead Space 2. It's Tanya Clark. Uh, yeah. I, I, oddly enough, her is Tanya Clark is her name. Uh, she's 51 years old and she's looking fucking great. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, Gunnar Wright is the actor for Isaac and Tanya Clark is the, uh, actor for, uh, Nicole Brennan. That's why they look the way they do. And, and what? um, I think it's far more appropriate that she looks as she does here than she did in the original, quite frankly. I would uh, what I think is worth mentioning too is when you see Nicole in 
it like within the game world, not on the transmission. She doesn't like. She looks. Uh, I don't know. The the model shows better. I guess is probably the best way. She to looks say like. It. And she looks like an attractive fifty year old. Yeah. Woman. I don't know I, what to I say, guys. That the first transmission and it also being like really the first thing think, that you see in the game i don't think portrays the model very well i don't know like why we have to talk model. about this but she is yeah. the was yeah. she, yeah. she on milf manor i knew i recognized her as well yeah well then let's let's cut through let's cut to the chase yes or no i say yes absolutely she is the senior medical officer for literally like the most important planet cracker for the most expensive and well surely she would be older yeah it would take be... some time to get that yeah. position it's a really I'll important position would if i were not married would you wouldn't have that not. gig at, at 20 whatever that she was in the original um the this this idea i i fucking hate to see it it annoys me immensely this idea that there's oh there's there's some agenda to making the female characters ugly people speak so fucking confidently and loudly when they don't even know that it's the it's the, the it's the voice actress. Oh, the the like, yeah, <laughs> a lot of the time it is just like a real person. Like they base yeah. the appearance on a yeah, real but person. Why are and you the only oh, did, 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 did. <laughs> just touch fucking grass. Holy God shit, damn it. Oh, it's a little bit it's a little bit awkward when it's like she's ugly, it's like she's not. If you think she is, you need to reconfigure. You need to go outside. You need to I don't know. You to need to get you. some fucking perspective. It was the same with Kendra as well. It's like, man, you just gotta like Dude, I thought that was really weird I, when people said they, they made Kendra like, ugly. I was like, she's ugly. I was like, I think Kendra in this game is supermodels are you doing? <laughs> and just your perspective on the way that people look at reality, all right? This yeah, go outside, <laughs> I don't know. What to it say. did need anyway. more boob jiggle, like Dead or Alive Extreme oh, Beach yeah. Volleyball. Yeah, that should at least like as a mini game, you know. <laughs> I want to be able to yeah, yeah, everyone do your part the in Dead or Alive Space. Extreme Three. <laughs> Why can't I strategically dismember breasts like other limbs? Yeah. I don't yeah. like, like, like other limbs. limbs. Yeah. I don't like the implication. <laughs> there. Hold on. Breasts being described. I want to be a able limb. to. I want to. I want to take a necromorph's booby and throw it at another necromorph. I want to go <laughs> boing. Come on, this is an obviously a downgrade in looks from the first game. All right, Touch the eight. The age thing is such a nothing burger. People Go talk outside. like she's 300 years old or something. <laughs> the, the crib people, keeper. The, <laughs> the, big, the, the, big problem, the big problem is it makes more sense that she would be older. She yes. is the chief medical yeah. officer on the Ishimura. Why would right. she be in her the 20s? Most important I myself am a medical professional and just had to wonder if breasts were technically limbs. <laughs> yeah, it was more so just something I noticed and was like, huh, I wonder why she looks much on, older. No. But I wasn't like upset well, so about it. You know? We're trying to put forth that it's weird she's so young looking in the original. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Why well, are you thinking about the medical officer in this prestigious position? Be and also, being by the way, I'm to the sure artist in... in the original, like the Xbox 360, PS3 era, it, it was it was a lot harder to lock down exactly what age a character was. Too. They were all young and hot. <laughs> now oh, yeah. they look like actual people in a world. No. No, we're going backwards. We also find out that she gave like specific psychiatric help to Isaac's mother, right? Yeah, we yes. find out. Yeah, we find out. So uh, Nicole Brennan is uh, she was known for essentially deconverting people out of unitology. Mm. She noticed that unitology kind of fucks with people's mindset, and so she would help deconvert people out of unitology, including Isaac's mother. Um, her role in Isaac's relationship and how, how essentially the, the dynamic of the relationship was virtually non-existent before. Um, we just sort of knew that he loved her and that's kind of all we really got. We didn't really yeah. get any specifics as far as I recall. Um, and they weren't necessary, but we definitely get a different angle in their relationship in the Dead Space Dude, remake. what an upgrade. Oh my God. What so, a huge upgrade. Like, first drama. of all, well, not even that. I just meant, like, finding these records of Nicole desperately trying to prevent the downfall of the Ishimura and, and, and yeah. protect these people in her own way. And, and then also, because of the voice acting we've added for Isaac, to have, we know he's watching all of this. He desperately wants to find it. But then you find out at, like, the three quarters in plus, um, the last time they spoke was really fucking bad. 
and it's all yeah. tied into the work she did yeah. with his mother and the results that like is it that his mum killed his dad and then killed herself right yes yeah. um yeah. isaac um what we isaac essentially messages her and he says my parents are dead my mom killed my dad and then herself and then unitologist took the bodies before i even had a chance to see them isaac is very upset and he blames uh nicole and her attempt to sort of deconvert her as the reason why she sort of snapped and the last time they spoke, it essentially ended up with Nicole saying, "Yeah, well, fuck you, Isaac," and hanging up on him. Yeah, because that, which is like, whoa, why, that's a uh... why the marker would be fucking with him by, you know, using Nicole. Essentially, it's like, well, there's a lot of unresolved stuff here for Isaac. He obviously feels really, really, really bad about that conversation. And it's yes, like, we he des desperately wants to make an opportunity to make it right. Yeah. Exactly. yeah it's, as was just said, it's so much for the marker to take advantage of. It's, yeah. it's by the way, so good. It, it gives them even more reason to try and take this job to get to the Ishimura. Yes. Like, yeah, it's nice yep. to see your girlfriend you haven't seen in a while. But if you are desperate to try and, like, make things right with your relationship and tell her you're sorry in person and try and get to speak with them, it makes even more sense that he tried mm -hmm. to get on the Ishimura at all. And it's tragic. Yeah. Like it, it's, well, it's, it's like just more potent tragic. drama. And you know? I remember the, the, the mm -hmm. line that Isaac says when uh when he's fighting the hive mind, he screams like, come on then, because this is all I have left. It's like, yeah, he's lost everything. Nicole's this was a gone, really Kelly fucking... Crew's gone. Every, everything's gone. All he has left is just him standing there facing off yep. against this insane... It feels like well, it's, he still has Z-Ball. Some serious thematic. Uh... That's true. He has Z-Ball. <laughs> Z-Ball. Yeah, yeah. He does have he's got Z-Ball Z champion of the universe. <laughs> All I have is me and yeah. level six Z ball. <laughs> it's just a uh, more potent drama. Oh, drama such a good choice. Yep. existed. Yeah. It adds whole extra it layers makes, to it the makes whole Nicole game. Way more of a character as well. Nicole is much more of a character in this game than she was yeah, in the and original. I can totally appreciate him blaming her in that moment, discovering that and explaining it to her. But then I can totally uh, picture her being like, "How the fuck can you put that on me?" I like, worked. Yeah, holy I shit. did all this work. I took this job, you know, because it'll you know help us in the long run. I did all this work with your mom. You know, I have the best intentions at heart, and you're lashing out at me. Fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah blaming the psychologist who, or like doctor who was trying to counsel a person out of a cult. For and a you know cult that convincing the yeah, person to kill, he'd know better yeah, than anybody. Obviously... She has very good intentions. Like it's yes, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. the it's... thing. It's like oh, it's like, he's obviously fuck emotionally you, <laughs> traumatized at the moment. He's not thinking straight. No, so yeah, it makes sense that he was out like that. For him and, too. and he knows, like right after the call's over, he's like, "Yeah, I fucked up. I should have <laughs> said that to her." <laughs> and um, it it makes me like, man, if we got a dead space too then all of the interactions between him and his, like, Nicole ghost would be just, like, totally yeah. different with that mindset. Mm -hmm. Which, uh... Yep. Which is just, who knows what we'll get? Who knows what we'll get? And yeah, um... Yeah. So, like, all of that... Because this, so, this, this is part of why I really want to praise the remake. You have to deal with the fact that you've got a bunch of people who've never played the game before trying this one out. So, you're pretty much set for that because you can just recreate the first game. But you also have a shit ton, and I mean a shit ton, of people who are hyper familiar with Dead Space, or even vaguely familiar with it, who are like, I know this story back to front, you can't surprise me. And then they're like, okay, but what if we did surprise you and change a bunch of things? And then the fans would be like, you better not fucking change important things. And they're like, no, no, no. How about this? And they do, they do a little bit of remixing. And it's really fucking mm -hmm. cool because these come yeah, across I as surprises it. while also adding to the story that was already in my head of like what the canon is. And these are side objectives. Yes. Yes. You don't it, have to it really, really helps. It. it helps a lot that many of the other elements of this remake seem to very clearly demonstrate respect for the original. Yep. Yeah. Hey. An abundance of respect, even. It's like they, they're very clearly trying to make a faithful remake. So when they do push into uh, um, originality a little bit further, it, it, it's a lot more understandable. You're like, I, I'm along for the ride at this point. It's like, okay. You, you guys don't, you don't seem like you're saying, hey, the original Dead Space sucked. So now here's a good game. It sounds like you're saying, we love the original. Way, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because. You know, if they'd like come right out the bat with fairly extreme changes, 
without making clear first that they they understand what they're doing and the spirit of what they're trying to capture, that could very easily have backfired with the well, exact imagine, same content. Imagine they had like you start off the game and then Hammond is like Isaac, don't forget your uh, you know your personal assistance unit, and this little robot is like, hey Isaac, let's go, <laughs> and then he's like. <laughs> 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 be fucking amazing. <laughs> uh, I think it's like, you, you know, you I never would have made it if not for you, Charlie. And it's like Charlie, but with initials. And it stands for something dumb and technology. Or something. <laughs> yeah. He's like, like, you're the reason I'm here, man. He's like, don't you worry, Isaac. We're going to get your girlfriend safe and sound. I'm <laughs> sure she's okay. Oh my God, Isaac, look, a necromorph. Shoot him <laughs> in the legs. Go now. <laughs> <laughs> like how he's slowly turning into Jiminy Cricket. I wonder Cricket. if your Kinesis module will <laughs> hey, work you, on that stack of blocks. The closer we get him to from... Jiminy Cricket, the more I'd want him in the game, I think. Yeah. You aim away from limbs and towards center mass, you'll like nudge your gun arm. Like, <laughs> yeah. <flies laughs> oh, you're making a mistake <laughs> there, Isaac. Oh my gosh, they're so peaceful. They don't mean to be this way. Just, Maybe if I just shoot off their arms talking. and legs instead. Oh no! Whenever combat happens, he's just constantly talking like, Oh no! Oh goodness! Oh golly gee! <laughs> Isaac, run this way! This is where there, there's I no monsters really this way! Scared. They're uh, babies, Isaac! Remember. They're babies! There's a baby on the wall behind you! <laughs> oh god, that was they're so not... young! <laughs> then like, you walk past the store and he's like, There's some great discounts in here! Just like, please shut the fuck up and back it. Whispering to you about that, like, I just crazy crazy when like, to kind. You should stock up yeah, on ammo. There might be a too. boss fight coming. Up. Oh, yeah. just a feeling, <laughs> just a hunch. Jim Jiminy Cricket is on Mercer's shoulder the whole game. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of yeah, experiments you running? This gives me an idea for a section in a game where uh, the character keeps talking. Um. The character who's supposed to be guiding you through the game, and then it's like a tutorial, and you're trying to turn off his voice in the tutorial, but he keeps like running around the menus, and turning so it back, on. track him down <laughs> in the menus. And... That sounds like a fun premise for a game that the tutorial mm -hmm. eventually leads to you create like getting so annoyed with him and him annoyed with you, he becomes the villain of the game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Um. There's, uh, in the side missions, you just get to learn so much about uh, other elements of how this whole place fell down, uh, fell apart, rather. And uh, I suppose we should probably jump to explaining, and, you know, one would call this spoilers for you, Ackman, but I assume you don't mind. Can we can we talk about what happens in the... Oh, gosh, Isaac, that you, those Udatologists don't seem like very fun people, huh? No, they don't. <laughs> Not right to generalize an entire group like that, Isaac. <laughs> oh god, they're all evil! <laughs> Ever you need someone. to stop in the gender-neutral bathroom, Isaac? <laughs> uh, the, but yeah, um, you're right with us spoiling okay, okay. how this ends, Ackman, because it's a bit different than the original. I know how it ends. It's a bit different than the original. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, okay, good. Okay, so... Something that curious that happens in this game, when you go to Hydroponics, you meet up with, uh, her name is, is it Cross? The, um, yeah. like, uh, she's, yes. she's the GF, Cross. the GF of Jacob Temple, who was in the Temple. original. That's right, yes. And it's curious, because you're talking to her directly, and by the time you finish your objectives there, she's alive and well. And it's, and I remember when I was streaming, I was like, I wonder what, what this is about, like, because I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't know, like, that's a whole ass person, like, she's gonna have an effect, surely, but, uh, what happened was, the more I was playing the game, every once in a while my stream would be like, I wonder where that cross skills god or what she's up to. Like, uh, I wonder if we'll meet her again. But by the time I hit chapter, like, 10 or 11, I'd mostly forgotten about her. I was just, like, dealing with whatever was going on and back to just my safe and sound assumption of what everything was, was going on. Um, but when you get the marker in place, in the original, Kendra reveals to you that you've been imagining Nicole this whole time, you're insane, and that uh, she's dead. Sad face. And she unlocks the rig video to show you the end of it, which is that she kills herself. In this game, what gets revealed to you is that, in fact, Nicole is dead, and that that video is revealed, but that um, the woman who's been helping you this whole time, and moving things, and pressing buttons, and assisting you, that was Cross. It was not Nicole. And the marker made you believe it was her to help... Well, simultaneously, it made you see it, Cross as Nicole and, and Cross saw you as Jacob. And it made... Yes. Uh, she was... You were both hallucinating as each other's loved ones who had died. Yeah, um, and the marker just and made use of it. There was, uh, there was an element through this game where I was thinking, like, wait a sec, because I, 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 you know, I'm pretty familiar with Dead Space, even though I don't remember the spinning enemies for some reason. 
um, where I was thinking, wait, like she's like doing things. She's pressing buttons and yeah. stuff. So, like how it is how how deep does this hallucination go? And then when I got to the reveal at the end, I'm like, oh, it that was, makes sense. Well, so in the original game, that's interesting. Cor correct me if I'm wrong, but like the assumption was that Isaac was just doing everything. And that yeah, it was yeah, just like, kind of like a fight club, a fight club sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but then in the new version, and I think that's a really crazy good addition, is that now it makes I, sense yeah. that Cross was doing the whole thing, and that you know he can hear anything he wants out of Cross, and simultaneously she can hear anything she wants out of him, and so it, it's yeah, it can totally make sense. Yeah, it's it's easier to hallucinate that it's another person doing those things, but that the things are ultimately happening. So like when you're talking around the radio and stuff, and like. The power's down. What does the thing say? It says this. Okay, I'll do this and it'll be done. It's like, okay, that this goes beyond the hallucination. Like, actual things in the world are changing. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking, like, how is this? Is this going to be addressed? Is this an actual fuck up with the writing? You know, but it seems like it. Uh, yeah, I was really pleasantly uh, surprised by this change and I really kind of liked it. By the way, when um, um... the only question I have was so, like, what did the marker tell Cross to get her to, like, creepily stand next to the marker for Isaac? Like, <laughs> like why, why, right. why did you do that well that's the but thing that's it could literally thing. be anything as crazy as, it could be anything that Jacob would need to say to her to make her do whatever you know what I mean like it and to be honest with you she might not have been there right we don't know the difference between him seeing her in places yeah, and her knows, actually being yeah. in places um some of the people point out and I don't know how deliberate it is but like she looks like she's smirking at you when uh, you're looking at that video when reveal yes I noticed that too yeah I'm glad it wasn't just me but it does look like now that the jig is up and the marker's got what it's wanted. It it's like it's taunting Isaac almost. It's it's going, you know, like haha. You can see it yeah. in her face, like it's smiling coyly. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. which is interesting because I was thinking if that's actually the case, right? If I'm reading this correctly, it means the marker's like being a cheeky fucker. You know, it's not bit, just yeah. this. You know, it, it almost implies a personality or or, or the hallucination is. Um, you know, being betrayed by its intentions, uh, which is interesting. Who knows how deep that really goes? But I thought this was a really neat change. Um, that was, was super cool. It's just taking advantage of things that are already there and using it to create something new out of a remake, which is yeah. allowing you to re-experience the game, which is kind of like has been mentioned the gold standard. It, they, they, didn't fuck, again. they didn't fuck anything up, as far as I'm concerned. They've the, patched um, like, some things makes, up, if anything. Yeah, it makes uh, kind. I, I will say, the, Amelia. I will say, I, I did prefer. It's a very small thing. The way the pregnants used to walk, they used to kind of like move their arms in front of them and just like saunter towards you. I wish you guys <laughs> yeah. could see me do this demonstration because it looks really funny. I know uh, what you mean. Changed, yeah. yeah, yeah. In the original, they like. <laughs> yeah, their arms would just be like karate chopping the air in front of them or slicing through horizontally. The uh, hallucination thing in the original didn't bother me so much, even though I did that did occur to me, like what you were saying, Rags, like how is this thing pressing buttons if it was just a ghost the whole time? But like uh, because the the forces at work are alien in nature, I was just willing to go like, OK, well, maybe the marker can manifest something like this that has physical properties where it can manipulate objects around it so i was like whatever but this is uh this is an improvement this like well, this yeah, makes a, more, uh, a positive tweak it's a make, more believable you know. change because it's actually like yeah those things were happening um because you, you can always use in fiction writing you can always use like oh it's just magic oh it's just oh, it's just a hallucination but when yeah. it's a more grounded like explanation that where it's like tangible things happened because of it then I think yes. that's that's an, another layer, as opposed to just being like, no, nope, it's just magic, fuck you. Right, yeah. And they took the waiting opportunity to close off some loose ends and get a twist out of it in the process. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just uh, the tragedies happened once again. He didn't get to say anything to Nicole. He was yep, dead. He never before. got the, yeah, never got closure with them, never made things <clears> right. Um, and I think that th there's a lot of good stuff here in terms of the way Nicole speaks as time goes on the closer and closer you get to putting the marker back on the pedestal, the more overt the Nicole's dialogue is to the point where she even refers to very near close to the end. Nicole is um, essentially almost drops it in the dialogue. Doesn't even refer to herself as like Nicole as a person, but 
as the marker itself to be put on the pedestal. Um, so there, there, that slow shift and how overt the dialogue gets as time goes on is 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 definitely an appreciated um, uh, detail in the writing. Yeah, and the whole like make us whole thing, like you you catch make us whole from some other crazier uh, people in different recordings throughout the game. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's it's obviously a yeah, pretty big giveaway. Yeah, the first time it pops up is like, oh, okay. But then as it's repeated, and then as you learn, you know, that phrase, and it's said otherwise, you know, it it, it it becomes pretty clear that this is a hallucination to us, the player. But, you know, in Isaac's state of mind and his desire to see her again and the marker's influence, it's believable that he, you know, buys it completely. Yeah. Um, Would you kindly you make us whole, them? Isaac? The increased <laughs> degree of desperation present in Isaac, because seeing as he's able to talk and emote now, is like a compounding good decision on top of a good decision because it informs yeah. why he's able to buy into any of this and helps the player understand rather than just rejecting it outright. I like that um, uh, Kendra refers to her as that scientist from Hydroponics because that's how all the players would know her at that point. It's like, oh, that lady from Hydroponics. <laughs> <laughs> scientist lady. And also, it, yeah, it was it was right before the reveal that I was I pretty much got confirmation of it because I'm like, who's Kendra holding? This isn't just a hallucination. Kendra's holding something. She couldn't. She's not like. Yeah. What is she pulling? Some sort of fucking Patch Adams shit? And she's like, <laughs> just like forcing the hallucination to be a certain way or something. Like she's got to be physically holding something because she can't see the hallucination that Isaac can. And then yeah. they got the reveal. It's like, oh, it's cross. How about that? I, yeah. just, I think it's super neat. Um, pretty impressed with the dialogue. <clears throat> um, it, it, I think it works well. It's a good change. And honestly, I, especially when it comes to Isaac stuff, is like I feel like honestly they, there probably should have been more in a few parts. Uh, but we'll get to those a little bit later as we progress. Well, uh, I think the only the only character moment Isaac had in the original was when Nicole died and he does this like little animation where he holds his yeah, head. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. It was like the yeah. one moment. Yeah. I did like that too. Uh, is there anything else uh, on Isaac or Nicole before we move re to... Regarding um, ambiguous dialogue, I thought overall it was pretty well handled, but there's a, there's a line from Mercer in chapter 5 where he says like... Uh, he knows Isaac is looking for Nicole, and he's like, "Would you like me to send you to her?" Send you and to her. Like, hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Like com combined with the creepiness we are already aware of surrounding this Mercer character, and, and yeah, then he says that line. Beliefs, yeah. Yeah, you'd think Convergence. Isaac maybe would be a little more like concerned, but I guess yeah, maybe cause... he's just so desperate that she's alive that he's willing to just go along with yeah. the idea that she's still there. Yep. We're given all the pieces. We know what convergence is. It's, you know, the unitologists believe it's all of us essentially coming together in some afterlife or higher form so that we can all be together. Um, so we know what that means. We know what, you know, that's what Mercer's trying to do. It all makes sense that, you know, what he says. But, you know, obviously Isaac thinks of it in a different context than what it actually yeah. is. Yes, please send me to the room where Nicole is alive. Please, thanks. Yes, please. <laughs> alive and like well to... and happy and chill <laughs> and would, healthy. I would like to go and talk yeah. to her. <laughs> Um, um, would, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, oh, about, Nicole's, uh, Nicole, Nicole interacts with uh, Mercer, and uh, does. I really, I really like uh, this interaction that you see between her and Mercer, and the fact that Nicole is smart and she tells him the things that she know will get her out of that room, um, and also that she's very definitely afraid of Mercer. Mercer's a psycho. He's a he's a religious fanatic. And um, he won't stop at anything, essentially, to get what he wants. And she knows that. And she, she tells him what she thinks will get her out of that room and get her more time. And it does indeed work. And I appreciate that back and forth that they share and her ability to take that data pad out of the room. Um, yeah, that's good I like that a lot. Uh, and I guess... Uh... A smart lady. Maybe that is a smooth segue into Mercer, who I think is basically strictly improved. Uh, oh, let as me well. pull up his. Uh, I think it's in my part two. The, the, his almost intro villain scene. That's one of my favorites in the game. I was quite impressed with that. Yeah. Uh, and and well, how cool I, in terms of just like, oh, he's making more of an impression already than the original Mercer. Holy yeah, shit. using the stasis ah. pack to freeze Isaac to then talk to him and then unleash the uh, the stalker enemy. It's just. I think that um, he comes across to me as a lot more comprehensible here. Like, that he has sort of a, a plan that we get to see 
happening around, like, whenever we sort of encounter him, we'll go through areas where he is, and um, that it just seems a little bit more coherent than it did in the original. Not that he was bad in the original. I think he's he good in the original. Me. I think this voice actor is better. Uh, the, the actor is better, yes. I think Fun so fact, but the I, actor I guess is the leader yeah. of the Ten Rings in Iron Man. Oh, is he? I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure. I'm pretty sure it's the same guy. Um, and he's, the original uh, or the remake? Remake. I don't know who voiced huh. him in the original. I feel like I recognize the the guy from the original as an actor who I'd seen in things, but I can't place him. Um, yeah, I'd have to check, but in any case, I just thought his delivery was stronger um, in a lot of these scenes. I can't remember exactly. It's in medical, isn't it? Or is it when he does that? Yes, it is in medical. That's when you first encounter him, chapter five, I think. Well, in any case, Mercer is, um, you know, it's the same dynamic, but he's, uh, they've tried, I guess, to, I think, make him more intimidating this time around. And I think Well, it's part out. of it is that you, you see, like, what he's been doing, like, the experiments he's been conducting, like, when you walk back into medical after you've been there and you've got all of the, uh, patients with, like, missing appendages and, like, missing skin and things like that, just bleeding all over the place. It's like he's, you know, he's got a plan that is currently in motion and he's, he's working on it actively while Isaac is there. At least it feels more apparent that he's doing that and the consequences are really grim for the people involved. Right. Yeah, um, and you follow in a, the form of a side mission basically every step he took to create the big regenerating boy and uh, it's just, all of it's fucking horrifying like in terms of yeah. what happens to that guy. And he's like hyper manipulative, of course. Um, yep. The uh, the scene as well where he uh, he kills Temple. The only question I had at this point was just like, how come Mercer gets this incredible stasis? Yeah, uh, <laughs> we all wondered that. He had a lot of power nodes. He must. Have. <laughs> yes, that's why they're so hard to come by. Like hundreds of power nodes. He poured them all into his stasis all module. Stasis. Put a lot of put a lot of upgrades that I didn't have on my playthrough. Imagine we've got him having to like periodically reapply it. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, Maybe we can medical grade stasis for surgery. I mean, we should be getting that shit, shouldn't yeah. we? <laughs> like, where is it? Isaac, yeah. go get it, engineer boy. Yeah. Um, his uh, the the controversial part of him in this game, I think, is his death. I can understand why that's controversial, but I feel like there's a pretty clear argument to make in favor of the way that it plays out here. I imagine you and I have the same commentary for we why might, so it works the way that it does. But I would say that essentially you could say that Mercer really has like delusions of grandeur and like the notion that he has a plan that he's enacting and he's almost in a sense manipulating like the marker and the necromorphs to sort of bring about the end that he wants, and his death is just so unceremonious in the face of that threat. Like, it doesn't care. The marker doesn't care. The necromorphs it, don't care. It they looks like it with doing. forces beyond his... Beyond yeah, it, his control. It, it looks like it killed him without even realizing it killed him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he is nothing in the face of the marker and the necromorphs, the hive mind. Like, all of his human plans and machinations, they're just meaningless in the face of it. Yeah. As, and that's like kind of his realization at the end, like this wasn't how it was meant to go. And it's like, well, it, it doesn't give a shit, doesn't care about your plans. Like the necromorphs and the markers don't have any conception of like whatever human notions there would be about like, I don't know, finding some sort of value in merging into like one consciousness or anything. It doesn't care. Yeah, like everything so, yeah, his, he's drawn from all of this is is him. He and just, he's like invented his him. own importance, yeah. his own understanding. He's, as you said, delusions of grandeur. And and that's what that death yeah said to me was that you were so fucking wrong exactly yeah. you were so wrong and now right at the end you kind of come to realize that that it was which is because obviously in the original he's like yeah turn me into a necromorph let's go oh now i'm a necromorph yeah. like it's <laughs> yeah and, um, I, I, I don't mean to i don't mean to laugh at it it's it's fine i think it's okay <laughs> yeah um you could just know that it's like <laughs> well, so i, I think it's right i worth highlighting <laughs> yeah. and I, I genuinely connect these things when i was streaming the the original 
People in chat, when I was getting close to that part of the game, were like, make sure you stasis him as soon as the door opens so that you can kill him before he turns into a necromorph, thus That's robbing yeah. robbing him of that that even though it's first of all a fucking video game character, so who cares? But it, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there is but like really, does it rob him of anything? Like, yeah, he he's dead either way. And he he doesn't get what he really wants. But there's that sense as a as a be like, no, you don't get to fucking die on your terms. Fuck you. That sort of thing. Um, and right. so I have a feeling maybe the devs of this game felt similarly, and they were like, what if we change it up so that instead of him suddenly deciding now is the time where I will ascend, and he does it, and then that's that, instead he's just, like, killed during, like, other cutscene mission goals, and it's just like, it it works, it, like, of course, the idea here, right, is that it's, it's the, the complaint would be that's very unsatisfying, it's like, that's kind of what they're going for. That's dissatisfying kind of yeah. how unsatisfying it is. It yeah. is satisfying how unsatisfying it's it is. Poetic. It's poetic. If there's like, if, I feel, I think that there, you could say that there are a few like core themes of Dead Space, both the game and the series as a whole. And one of the big ones is people meddling with things that they don't understand and the consequences of that. And in this case, it's like he's meddling with something that he's developed a conception of that is totally divorced from what it actually is. Um, and, you know, like, it's right at the end that he's sort of, it's just like, yeah, like, he says, no, I was promised. It's like, were you? You just, just made this up in your head. Like, he, this was... Yeah. He yeah. was just sort of near the marker while... Yeah, exactly. The, yeah, and that's what I mean. It's rabbit. hard for me to be that upset about it. I don't know. It's kind of, it's kind of neat that they did it. I know, think it's pretty good. Yeah. But so I never, you know. I didn't get the impression that he died there. So is it supposed to be he was crushed against the weight a, of the tentacle? A, yeah, I think yeah, it breaks his back. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah. Well, would it be better if he like exploded into guts? Maybe just yeah. Well, I'm wondering, like maybe like he should have been like torn in half or something, like really gratuitous. But uh, this is fine. I mean, I, I just, um, I, I think it's good. I, it did, it wasn't immediately obvious to me, like oh he's dead. So. Like the it just fun. seemed like he was dragged into another room, and that was it. Yeah, yeah I expected is. to see him not only just not only see him again, but see him like alive again. I wasn't like I was a little bit confused. Like I, I just totally expected to see him again. Like we're gonna run into I this did. guy I was again. Like, oh, he's dead. I think that that's the end. That's the end of his arc. I thought we were yeah, gonna kinda... see crazy monster vision of him, especially when Kendra said the yeah. things have all changed into something down there. I was like, oh, the the, the Mercer as well. I assume, but uh, no, no, he's just yeah. Gone. I think that's a thought. Yeah, I in see now at the end of his little find... anim. Sorry. Uh, I was just gonna make a joke. I was gonna say in the next remake, he'll find out that Mercer is the Dead Space Two. No way. <laughs> I'm seeing now at the end of his little animation that he kind of slumps over, like yeah, he's, like he's dead right at the end there. So that's fine. Um. All right. Well, that would leave us to the next person, which really can be anybody. Um. Why don't someone shout out a name of a character? Kine. All right, Doctor Kine. Downgrade. Oh, kind. Yeah, downgrade. And I feel kind of bad because I'm sorry, Mr. Voice Actor for New Kind. You just you were never going to be able to beat Old Kind. Uh, it's old not kind even was, close. I think Old Kind's voice was so good they used. It's I think so they used good. his voice as the catch up uh, for the story on Dead Space Two. You can't use it as a condiment. <laughs> you could probably. Yeah, I try. thought you were saying catch up. Too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually remember his voice from the original. Uh, it was a little eccentric. It, it's a crazy uh, it's been man. A while. Yeah, he's. He, it, it felt distinct. He has a very uh, distinct voice. He's he's the voice of yeah. a whole bunch of things. One of them, he's the voice of the crazy veteran man in Bioshock Infinite. He voices someone in Mass Effect. Apparently, I remember someone mentioning that. I don't know if you hmm. guys remember. Oh damn! Um, he's like he's a tired lady. Again. He's the voice of a shit ton. Of, he's 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 kind of old. So he's done a bazillion different works. Funnily enough, he's like a pretty awesome character in Angel. So that's where I mainly yes. know him from. Um, oh, who is he in Angel? I don't want to say. <laughs> like, I don't want to say anything. <laughs> okay. Well, Holtz. All right. This is, anyway. Oh, okay. Um, he he would. Was he the Harbinger? Oh, he could have been. He could have been the Harbinger. Um, in Mass Effect Two, that is. He's not just got like Maybe. a yeah. voice where he says anything. It sounds good. It's the he's a really good at delivering lines too. He knows how to be yeah, intense or um. Well, he's. He has range because he's been in a few things where even though he's got the same voice, he's got very different delivery. Because, like, for instance, because he plays Biggs in L.A. Noir, and so he's the narrator for that game, too, and there's definitely a kind of delivery there that's very different to Dr. Kine. 
Which is different right. to the Harbinger, which is different to Holt. Yes. Um, oh, and you, yeah, uh, the, the other role people made, <laughs> you know, he's a uh, he's cop who gets glass shot on his neck by the Joker in the Dark Knight. Yes, he is. That's right. Yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, I feel <laughs> like there's not much explanation. Name. I know, right? There's, there's not much explanation that's required for this. If you've heard them both, you already think one of them is better. It's it's pretty straightforward. Yes, the voice is just, it's just, I'll it's have too to go good, back and check. Too perfect. It's. Once you hear it, you'll go, oh, yes, of course. Totally. And, and no offense to the new Dr. Kine, but he sounds like one of the most generic characters ever. He's just like, oh, yeah. Isaac, we've got to like do has the direction. Thing. Yeah, which is unfortunate. Um, I, th I feel like uh, classic Kine much more captured this desperate, almost insane man who's still de trying to do the right thing, who's stuck on this insane ship. Yeah, especially considering they give Kine more stuff. You, you see does, him in hologram yeah. playbacks, and he talks to Matthias and you know the captain, and you know and Mercer and everything. He's uh, I can't know, you know what happened, but I'm very sad they didn't get Keith back to do the voice. Uh, he's the right age, of course, to play Doctor Kine, especially in his role and how he looks. Um, you, you can just it would have worked, but I'm guessing something stopped them. Because he's one of the voice actors I would have thought they'd really want back outside of Isaac. Because he's got such that distinctive voice. You'll well, and he's, he's like you there. said, they used him in D uh, Dead Space Two, right? As well. I think so. For yeah, for the story catch-up segment. So don't know. Um, and Kind is underwhelming in this game. I, I, I find him to be like not, this isn't a commentary on the writing. It's seriously the 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 voice acting. I find him to just be he's like character guy. Um, yeah, I like around. Hammond. I liked Hammond and the changes they made to him. Oh, we'll get to All Hammond. Right. <laughs> but, uh, well, is there anything else you want to, anyone wants to say about Kine before we move on to Hammond, then? There you well, go. Th um, thank God they made his hair white to give first. him a little bit of a bit of flair, you know? His hair I, seems um, to be the only thing. Yeah, really. right here. It's just about to, yeah, just watch the stream right here. Oh. oh I might have you not. See... I know what yeah, you're you talking see... about, yeah. Yeah, so as Kine walks away from this encounter you have with him, Looks like he like hunches over and like he's, he's he's doing something like that's weird that you're doing that. And then I was like, oh, he's hallucinating his wife, Amelia, and he's taking her by the arm and they're leaving the room together in his mind. Oh. That's why he walks like that. And is, yeah. you know, he, that, that's why he's doing mm -hmm. that, which I thought was I didn't a neat little that. touch. That's that awesome. Neat touch. So, Amondo. Ackman, you're saying he was improved, huh? So yeah. wait, wait, someone in chat said, uh, in the original Italian version, Dr. Kine was voiced by famous Italian horror director, uh, horror director Dario Argento. Neat. Interesting. The father huh. of Asia wow. Argento. Very ah. interesting. That is and a director fun of fact. Suspiria, which is a fun movie. I was just thinking if that was him, yeah, so yep. awesome. Very interesting. Wow. Someone said, I think Actman is one of the better guests we've had. Well, hard disagree, but, you know, everyone's kind of... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know what that guy's smoking. He, we can do better, but, you know, he was available and we needed to fill a slot. Yeah, so. yeah. Slot. Clearly yeah. unhinged I hate opinion. being here. I hate it here, honestly. Yeah, me, me fucking too. If yeah. they didn't pay me, I'd yeah, we all hate it. Yeah. You guys uh, are getting yeah. paid? <laughs> uh, just sitting here talking about this woke SJW video game. It's, uh, it's the opposite. The I had to pay worst. for a whole video. Oh, game. we'll get to the bathrooms. We haven't even. Oh, we talked the about the titties, right? Problem. Okay, yeah, I'm making sure. Um, yeah, there should oh, be yeah, more titties right, in this yeah. game. Like, just kind of. I think we someone brought up the Dead or Alive beach volleyball mini game that they should yep. have had. Yes, that should have yeah. been instead yeah. of Z ball. Instead, we should of, be I mean, that. instead of Z ball, you just open it up and it's just like the hologram from the hollow deck from Star Trek, and it's Dead or Alive <laughs> volleyball. <laughs> Don't forget the anti-capitalist uh, graffiti. Oh fucking wait, huh? I mean, whoever's running the holodeck on the Ishimura is a weeb. What's it's funny like, is in the original, it's I think it's carved into the wall, while in the remake, it's a blood the splattering. So it's like, I feel like they made it seem even more unhinged, uh, the author of that yeah. message. I think, <laughs> it's, well, I think it's literally a copy and paste, because that, like, that picture you showed of the original, the mm -hmm. new one is also written in white, like a marker or whatever. So oh, I, was it? it? I might... thought it was in blood. It it may be in blood and they change the color, but I think it's like literally a copy and paste from the original. Well, you know what, um, Rex? Yeah. What? I just don't care. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> You're right. Thank I you. Just, yeah. 
Um, I mean, any, I mean, yeah, I guess if people are perpetually ingrained with the mine rot of the culture war and they see that and they don't do any research or remember things whatsoever and declare so strongly that it has to be part Jesus of Christ. the agenda. You know what? If some people Left are going to do the that, unitologist let them. I've said it before, no, I'll I, say it I again. Like that. You could be critical of capitalism. That's okay. You're allowed. I'm going to let you do you that. Should be I'm, give you permission. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a capitalist, and I'm like, yeah, you should be critical. And besides, all the capitalism stuff takes a super backseat to the don't be a, re, a crazy, zealous, religious fundamentalist. And That's all of that way takes a crazy from. backseat to don't be a horrible alien that stabs people with your little knife hands. Yeah, kill yeah. all aliens, regardless of <laughs> necromorphs are really the bad guys, though. But use whatever bathroom you damn well please. Because there's one, so you don't have a fucking yeah. choice. It's a spaceship. Exactly. This isn't That's a hotel. Crazy. It's a spaceship in a resource-starved, you know, space-faring civilization. Wow. I think part of the problem people have with it is uh, people think somebody scrawled that after the necromorph outbreak. So, like, while they're running around being chased by necromorphs, <laughs> they stop to write that about capitalism. You know what the real problem with the Shimura is all the capitalism. That's just but funny. It was, it was just, it was just like, it, so. while the ship was in operation, just a disgruntled employee that worked in the mining deck, who was just like, man, fuck this, I hate it, Well, this if job. someone understood how everything went down, and they fundamentally blame the greed of the CEC or some shit like that, they can write that. Yeah. That's fine. Well, I mean, that's a perspective that a character yeah. can have. Yeah. Like, what's the problem? Yeah. You don't that's know who it. that was. That could have been the janitor. He might have been like, well, <laughs> fuck this. Yeah. And let's, let's assume yeah. that I'd it wasn't clean the, the gender original. That's fine. And... I do Even like the it idea of... the um... original, it's fine. It's fine to have that message. There are all sorts of weird messages on the wall. That's yeah. the one that breaks it for you? Sorry. <laughs> I think I think you said it really well, Rags. If you're not uh, continually infected with the brain rot of the culture wars, I think that's wh whatever sentence you said is pretty. Is pretty <laughs> whatever you said, if that crew never yeah. heard of someone yeah, well, brain rot of the culture I watched, wars. That's what I watched it is. the Simpsons. Okay, I watched the episode with the join the navy backwards. Okay, I understand. That's not, what's hang on, that's not <laughs> subliminal. That is overt. Oh, that was that was no. It was, it was oh, but then liminal. there was. Oh, uh, there was super liminal, which was just the guy opening the window and screaming at Lenny and Carl, Hey, you! Join the Navy! <laughs> join the Navy! <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh, okay, why not? Um, <laughs> yeah, the, like, like the, the, the amount of things you can pull out of something like Dead Space, man, we can make essays and essays and essays on all the points. Oh, yeah, we can make some hyper-pretentious video essays. Oh, gosh, beautifully, yes. Um, but we decided, crazy enough, I know, to talk about the mechanics. Um... If I know everyone just fell silent because what I just suggested was insane. But um, yeah, I know it's, I, it's like it, it's so it's so apparently absurd that there was no reason to uh. I came here he to yell the auto. I'm SJW pretty sure he, no, he yelled. And now you're telling me I'm we're not going to do that? Yeah, any more brave warriors <laughs> of the culture war? I'm holding a katana man. right now. I am pressed for war. <laughs> well, my wife works for Gary, so I don't know. I, I, I guess I guess I'm a Nazi or something. It was an interracial marriage, though, so there's that. So anyway, awesome. the, the mechanics and all that is just key jangling. You were distracted. <laughs> the, 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 the real, the real the issue is the war stuff. That video <laughs> again. The oh, that is, the <laughs> I have, I have oh, seen I that as the theory, which is that they blind you with nostalgia and then feed you anti-capitalist woke messaging. Can I just you some see, man? Can I, can I, can I, can I you cross? see the markers probably <laughs> fucking with you? If that's what you're <laughs> the marker, <laughs> the mark it's a red marker, just like communism. Yo, it's, it's, true. it's doing. It's a red. <laughs> He's gonna turn. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's the necromorph insult like, to those people. They're afflicted by the marker. Could we describe the necromorph yeah. attack on the ship as a revolution, perhaps? <laughs> oh God. <laughs> You know, yeah, the necromorphs right. seem underfed, so... You're, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, you were the working class of the ship. That's right, you're right, the red marker, that's right. I, I said well, that when I was playing the game, that oh, no. I was drenching okay. my suit in the blood of the workers and using the... the <laughs> to buy shit. Convergence is just a fancy word for socialism. Oh my. They're here for socialism. Yeah, I know, that's, that's what I was gonna say. say. Karl Marx literally <laughs> said, workers of the world unite. He said that. Uh, anyway. <laughs> the, the last boss of this game is the hive mind, everybody. 
Wow. Yeah. Oh my Convergence. God, it's all coming mm. together. Like, if yeah. anything, it, it doesn't take a lot of twisting to do a liberal arts college essay on why this is like a critique of socialism. <laughs> <laughs> the hey, villain man, is, is a literal <laughs> hive mind who's trying to make everyone dead like it. Listen, I think you meant to say our marker. Our marker. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean your marker? Our marker. Yeah. Property Wait, is theft. Carl Marx. Oh, oh Carl. Carl. I'm now Marx. Oh, Carl. Carl. <laughs> Carl. 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 So anyway, Hammond. Actually, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> yeah, Hammond. Do you think Hammond's a communist? <laughs> <laughs> The bullshit. I, I like how far we can take the bullshit. I, well, like, well, I love doing it on both ends. It's funny, like because I yeah, I feel like we have made. like a happy medium of just talking about the thing for what it is. Yeah. Unironically, Hammond is pretty concerned with the well-being of his crew, like his workers. What a weird. What a so. pussy. What a <laughs> pussy. Yeah. Make us whole. Oh no. <laughs> um. Shall we, so what what's, what's next? Are we doing uh, Well Hammond? I was gonna let Ackman start because he seemed he, he, he was he was saying that you, you considered an improvement. What do you think it's improved? Um the overall character arc of like, you know, he actually cares about his crew, mentions the crew, those two people at the start have a slightly more important role. Um Chan is like in a, a like kind of a character. He's also falling prey to the hallucinations and yeah, instead of being killed, like while the brute cutscene where he gets killed in the original is pretty, pretty awesome. I think it tears his arms off and then just bashes him into a pulp. Uh, I think it's it's better for his character that he's like hallucinating this Chen person is still there, and then they both just get exploded into I, vapor. I don't, I don't think he has. He doesn't have an arc in this. Um, there's a story, yeah, uh, is I guess what I've been saying. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think there's, a, there's a narrative, but uh, yeah, I um, I I think this Hammond is uh, definitely a downgrade. Um, I'm not sure. I... I'm uh, yeah. I'm a bit more mixed on it. Well, I was gonna say, I think his story maybe the voice actor is upgraded, but the voice actor is downgraded. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. The I voice actor beat the 300 guy. I don't enjoy his general texture. personality as much. Um, the way that he um, t sort of acts and talks and behaves, um, I don't, I don't, I think that's a downgrade from original Hammond. I like the idea of what they were sort of trying to do with him and Chen and how the marker's really messing with him. And I do like how that concludes with him and the Singularity Core, how in that final moment of strength and realization, he, you know, looks at, you know, Chen as the zombie and says, you're the thing that killed Chen, and then, you know, takes them, you know, both out. Yeah. Um, I like that, but I think... I like that it, payoff, yeah. I do like yeah. the yeah. payoff. I wish it was... I guess I, I wish the journey was done better, and I don't like the change to his personality. Uh, he seems more generic in terms of his personality now, whereas I feel like in the original, he was much more of a of a leader he had a more deliberate way of doing things he was a bit more um not confrontational but he's very goal oriented he tried to keep his yeah. shit together we also, but he yeah, did like, he did lose his um like he lost his composure a bit in the original when he got angry but then he got it back together and he's like with kendra he got like upset at kendra the way that she was like trying to you know saying he was in on this and that he was like a cec stooge and he knew about it and stuff like that um, he pushes back against that. He's definitely like he's the the sort of force that tries to get people together and say like, no, we need to do this shit. We got to put that behind us. And we need to fucking get off this ship. He's clearly in over his head, but he has a strong personality that helps him persevere through it. And uh, and he acts very strong and goal oriented in this it, sort of bizarre and tragic circumstance. And I really don't think that we got nearly that level of uh, Hammond in this one. It just seems too generic in this one. Fundamental um, for me is uh, I was convinced in the original he felt a lot of fear and he had to overcome it uh, for the sake yes, of the team yeah. and the mission. While in this one say, yeah. I didn't really get a sense he was all he felt like he was, he was pretty on the ball. He knows what he's doing like, and there's not much to worry about. And yeah, I, I mostly liked that they they gave him kind of an arc with the Chen thing. Like, I like that as opposed to him just getting killed by the brew. I mean, they're both kind of like fun death scenes, but yeah, I think I, I kind of like his original version. 
yeah, better that's, that, overall. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much how I feel as well. Um, I the death scene feels more meaningful than oh no, he was in the wrong place at the wrong time with <laughs> oh, the brute. Oh no, his arm just yeah. got torn off. Like, um, if anything, it's just like oh, there goes Hammond. That, uh. but this one feels more like like oh, that was there was a purpose to that. The the Chad monster was chasing him throughout the. Uh, the story, and he, he was able to take it out with him while recognizing the truth at the end sort of thing. I think I his have, characterization uh... in the original was more of a of a red herring, too, that maybe he was the... Evil one. The, the untrustworthy yeah. one. And then and it's sort of a twist because... when you find out it's Kendra. And... Yeah, in the original, Kendra is... I think Kendra is definitely improved in this version. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. She's, I, she's I, a, yeah. overt in the original when she says, like, to Isaac, like, we can't trust him and something, you know, stuff like that. But, um... I the other real big complaint that I have about Hammond is that he seems to be absent for a big chunk of this game. Yeah. Um when he goes to crew deck and during a, a big segment of it, he's just not he he's not around. He doesn't say anything. You don't you don't bump into him when you're entering hydroponics like you do in the original. Nope. Um you you actually meet up with him essentially three times. You meet him in the bridge, you meet him in hydroponics, and then you meet him before he dies. Um but uh, yeah, you don't get those interactions, get the this, and he just seems to be radio silent for a big chunk. Where he sees the marker, and he's showing you and uh, Kendra as well, and he's like, I think he's in yeah. crew calls, and he's saying like everyone's chanting or some weird shit is happening. Yeah, he's like hiding in a vent or something, yeah. and I just it's he just seems to have <laughs> lost a lot of his uh, presence for a big chunk of the game, and you really feel it. You start to miss him, uh, which I think was a mistake. Um, but yeah, it, Hammond's not bad. I think he's a downgrade from original Hammond, and I wish we kind of got a a better done version of what they're doing where the marker is really getting to his head in his relationship with Chin and um, Chin Chin, uh, the Chin family Chin. from Milan um, I like but, the uh, the running thing of because obviously in the original it was just a random necromorph that got shot off because as soon as as soon as they did the thing where it was like Chen was the uh, the necromorph that chased them after the ship had blown up I immediately thought Oh, he's going to be the one that gets trapped. He's going to be the one that gets sent to the Valor. And then I was thinking about, like, whether or not... That, that to, to me, just feels like seizing an opportunity, right? Instead of it just being a random necromorph. It's like, well, you can make it one that's appropriate. Or, or not... You can make it one that's going to have some greater relevance to the characters. Yeah. Um, that's like a small example of just a tweak that seems like a strict improvement. Even if, you know, what they did with Hammond overall was more like, eh, you know, undecided, I guess. Uh, in terms of, like, the voice, it just felt like the original Hammond had a little bit of a more unique texture, whereas I think uh, yeah, Hammond here is yeah. more generic. It was a word Mola used to describe it when he was first going through the game that I very much agree with, in that Hammond lacked the desperation he had in the original. Yeah, he, yeah. He didn't seem like he was really frantically trying to make shit work out in this, you know, frankly fucked situation. He seemed, yeah, as, as was said, he's very much on the ball. He was in yeah. control most of the time we hear from. And like yeah, kind of but... calm. Yeah. Yeah, he just felt so generic and kind of like, meh, like Hammond is a character, I guess. I feel like we missed an opportunity to have a character with sort of a, like a personality and like Kendra's clearly affected by this. Like this is not what she expected to find here. Um, yeah. You know, at least, you know, she even says, you know, I heard the reports, but until you see it for real, it's not the same. Um, I, I see pros and cons to the Hammond adjustment because my, my reaction was he seems a little less hostile in the remake and at the cost of defensive. him I'm gonna say, being I'm gonna say a little... I'm going to say hostile, say defensive. He gets that way after Kendra like, makes accusations towards him. Yeah, and she's not only making accusations towards him, she's doing it in the most inappropriate fucking environment in history. Like, uh, and of course it frustrates and thins him out in terms of his patience, which I completely understand on his end, and it's that's kind of foreshadowing for my opinion of how they've improved Kendra in this game. Well, I've, I don't know, I would still use the word hostile, but I have to look at the dialogue again. But what I think it did is, it in the original, his kind of more confrontational attitude, confrontation is a good word, uh, it made him a little more unlikable, which increased that's his functionality good. as a red herring in... Yep. Yeah, I agree game. with that. Right. Yeah, because he's a little more, uh, a little more pissed off. Right. Well, because if Isaac. because he's well, well, I think the element from the red herring stuff comes from the idea that because he is defensive, uh, it's because you, you might think, oh, why is he getting so agitated and upset when you know Kendra's saying these things about him? He's like, well, be because he's a human being, 
and he doesn't want to be accused of all these crazy shit when he's in this terrible circumstance. Like the last thing he needs to you know, have happen to him is to be told that he is, is like responsible for it in some way when he's trying yeah, but to survive. I so, don't uh, think his hostility purely stems from him being accused of or whatever. Like it starts as early as them being in the first room where it's like he tells Daniels to reroute the damn power or something like that. Reroute the damn just power. Like, reroute the damn yeah. power. Yeah, that's not like, him being hostile. Like they're in a well, really stressful, I think it is. weird situation, and he's wait, like, wait, wait. Maybe we can clear this up. Define hostile, hostile in John. comparison. Hostile in comparison to the way other characters are acting. Define hostile, John. Defi well, he's not violent. That's not what I'm saying. But he's just lashing he out in a way that's violent. unproductive. No, I didn't say violent either. You you Look, literally brought it up. You, no one said violent until you did. Okay, there's a. I think, think there's a misunderstanding here. Well, um, that, the whole point, that's why I said define hostile, just so that we And you never did. Out. Yeah, I'm not saying you're saying violent. I'm asking you, what do you mean when you say hostile? I think he's letting his temper in the, the situation come out when he should be more muted. Like, it's just, he's lashing out in a way that's just not helpful to the situation. I, I think I would... the lashing out is in a very minor way, given the circumstance, because raising his voice a little bit is so minor compared to what he could be doing, compared to what Kendra's doing. Um, okay. But he's what? still able to, like, say something productive, like, even as he says, you know, reroute the damn power. Like, yeah, he's getting agitated. He's super stressed out right now, but that's still a productive Agitated may be a better word, because I, you can be understandably hostile, and it's different than being calm. No, like I think agitated might be the better term than hostile, then. Right? I mean, they're all, it, I mean, it's a high pressure situation for all of them, and they're all feeling that pressure. Um, I just felt like Hammond would be quicker to let that out in an aggressive way. Um, I think we're overanalyzing <laughs> this very I could be role. misreading <laughs> it. Maybe, so, maybe I need to go back and look at the cutscenes. So, what a chance that I think it's fair for Hammond to lash out given he lost two men to Eldritch Monsters. I mean, that you know what that's that's, that's, that point. that's that's fair i forgot about that <laughs> sure. there's a couple of things at play here i think so first off arriving for their mission has gone horribly they crash landed and then there's just nobody here nothing like in terms of greeting them on arrival or giving them an update on what the hell's even going on and then all of the shit starts going down. I don't know. I might be a bit frustrated. And then there's the further potential consideration of just the marker being around and the, you know, craziness field it emits. Sure. Yeah, uh, marker's influence is also yeah. That's a that's a very reasonable factor. So anyway, who's next? Um, <laughs> well, I, I was thinking Kendra. Surely we got to talk about here. You gotta uh, talk about Kendra. I'll just open with like saying it. dramatic upgrade with uh, the original game. It frustrated me a little bit with how she's so overtly hostile to... I would use hostile. <laughs> she's an asshole. <laughs> to, uh, hostile. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, because in this case, like, what I mean is that she is constantly trying to undermine and disagree and suggest, like, plant seeds and poison the well relating to Hammond. To the point where I think it actually comes off as a bit try-hard on the behalf of the game. It's like... Uh, you know, she's like, I don't trust him. And it's like, yeah, well, you know what? You, you've not really got much going for you, so shut up. Just <laughs> like, I don't know. Again, I, I, I feel annoyed with her in the first game a little bit. And then when she gets booted out, I was just like, yeah, well, bye, I guess. But in this <laughs> game, they've edited a lot of the way that she talks to be so much more subtle. And her expressions. I love the fact yep. that there is a Great video outfit. call where Hammond gives a bunch of orders, says a bunch of things, signs off, and then it just shows her, and she just looks at Isaac for a little bit, and then, like, looks to the side, yeah. and she's like, yep. mm. Yeah. It's Acting. great! <laughs> Literally just supposed to be like, do you trust him? Which is so much more yeah. manipulative than being like, Isaac, I don't think we can trust that man. Right. The other thing, John and I were talking about this with Metal yesterday, in this one, it's so clear that Kendra respects Isaac. And yeah. that even in like uh, spoilers for later in the game, when she leaves him for dead, she kind of says, "You're a great engineer, Isaac. You might actually find a way out of this anyway." No, she, yeah, she says like, she, like, "I believe you will." It's like you will find a way. She's like, "I get that I'm leaving you for dead, but I feel like of all people, you might actually have a chance." Yeah, and know that I don't want to. It's just I gotta. Yeah. Well, and there, I mean, there's an, she, sorry, go ahead. Like that, to, to, to square it off then in that environment, after everything she does to Isaac, 
she still expects to like engage with him on a level of save me from this horrible giant monster please like yeah <laughs> very <laughs> fundamental kind of, yeah it sort of does well, that's what I really like that at the end. Yeah. I think it's neat. In fact, I will show you rags because you didn't get Please to see do. it. Please do. I had, I had a. I don't know how to if it's considered a bug or not. I think it's just a crazy coincidence. Um, during the cut scene where Kendra is killed, um, there is an open this open area that you're in uh, by the landing pad, and on this landing pad. There just happened to be, because of, I guess, previously I had thrown it or had gotten moved, there was one of those kinesis crates that you could move around, and it was right here. And it wasn't supposed to be there, but it still <laughs> exists in the world in the cutscene. Mm -hmm. So it was like the entirety of this screen. I could see like Isaac, part of Isaac's arm and part of his back, and all of this is um <clears throat> all of this is blocked i couldn't see it because that it sucks. just so happened that this box was just sitting there from a previous encounter so <laughs> and the whole thing was covered up by this box and i was like oh no i didn't get to see it uh, because of um, this fucking box yeah that that's that that's is awful. the cutscene as it actually happens um some people are saying, like, as a counter to what I've said like she still is is trying to sell hammond as the bad guy it's like yeah of course. Yeah. That's why I, I way prefer it in this game. She does a much better job of it, psychologically speaking. In the in the original game, it comes across as though she's trying to make you hate Hammond, and it's like, I don't know. But yeah. in this game, she sells it as though it's just reasonable to be very suspicious of Hammond, which uh, right. it, it sells it much more to me as a player, where I'm like, hmm. I mean, I maybe, I don't like know. She's actually good at her job. Yeah, it comes across as though she's actually not cringe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. True. Sure. Yeah. There's Very um true. her dialogue's better. Being able to have a voice actress actually sort of portray that and the expressions that come along with it, uh, I think uh, work out a whole lot better. Um however ultimately uh, her bus size is somewhat smaller, so uh I've heard about that. So the solo map I was into nothing. it. They look like solid C's. You know, that's good. Uh, it's solid A pluses for me. Oh yeah. Thumbs <laughs> up. Just the bomb. Gaming community, uh, yes, where every definitely. character has to be like maximum <laughs> fuckable, or they're like a bad character. Yeah, so oh, yeah. fucking disgusting. It just fills the screen. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> there we go. There was another live call that really stood out to me as being cool. I don't think it was pointed out. Tell me if I'm wrong, but uh, I think it's after Hammond is out of the picture, and it's just you and Nicole, and you're on a call with her. And you're telling her her pl or your plan for like how to fix things, and she doesn't respond. She's just kind of looking off and yeah. with this kind of dead stare, and it's just like nodding half-heartedly, as if to be like, "Yeah, okay." <laughs> She's because mm -hmm. Kendra <laughs> yes. Yes. is because I, I like a lot of that in how she reacts to the you know Isaac's hallucinations because she knows you know she figures out that Isaac is hallucinating, but she still has a mission to do. And so I think she goes along with it because it ultimately will help her to, you know, kind of get the marker. And then, it, and, and I like that element of she's like trying to put it in her head. Like, how, how can I make this work out for me? How yeah. is, you know, is Isaac really lost it? Um, she reacts like any one of us would react where she's like, oh, shit, this guy's like going crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, right. But I'm not going to say you're going crazy. You're just going to be like, uh, huh. Right. And I really like that. It reminds me yeah. of another video game character, but I can't say it because a person here hasn't played it yet. Fuck. All right, what I, know do you the, mean, I know the character you're <laughs> bring, talking about. Bring it immediately. I'm not longer. saying shit because I was end up accidentally spoiling stuff to you guys. What's the game? I have um, no idea, and I don't want to know. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> All okay. right, I'll DM you, John. All right. <laughs> I'm afraid oh, I might wait. know. It's okay. Anyway, who we got left? Um, that's uh, let me see. Oh, I, um, um, I think Fring, you mentioned it earlier, but I kind of just want to echo it because we're on the scene. Um, I really like that Isaac says, like, you know, you've got nothing left after Kendra dies because you're like, why would he even like her? And it's like, no, it's just the fact that that's the last person. Yeah, human. Yeah, it's lost us. He's here. lost everything, Everyone's including dead, even you know. his semblance of reality. All he has is himself. It's such an Isaac line. Just like when he screamed "fuck you" and it, "fuck you, Marker," he has a it, lot of he has a lot of those types <laughs> of lines. I like him a lot. It's just 
It's so cool. You've just got this engineer, this guy who is in this crazy situation, staring down this massive Lovecraftian monster, just screaming like, "Bring it! Like fucking, let's go!" And I, I like it doubly watching. so because it sort of sets up how Isaac just changes as a person because of all this. Because in the over second all and, of these games, yeah, yeah, in the second and third games, he's a lot more kind of really confrontational he's kind of a dick because he's been through a lot and he wants to he doesn't even know what he wants he's been fucked with by the government and he's just yeah you know, yeah he's Marka, really upset necromorphs unitologists like it's just his life is pretty constant struggle but what makes him so endearing is that even though these situations are incredibly taxing physically and mentally he still charges in with a uh, tremendous courage and like isaac this... isaac clark is super likable yeah, I was about to say, he oh, has yeah. like a salt-of-the-earth handyman kind of He does, he does. That's right. He, he's couple, very uh, focused on finding the solution to the problems. He's just like, yeah, no, let's not worry about uh, that. Let's worry about The embodiment this. of all men. Oh, this is, actually, <laughs> this is a good point to, uh, to bring up, a point I wanted to make earlier that actually you brought up, Mark. I mean, maybe you want to talk about this. I, I don't want to make your point for you, but it was such a good point that you made when we were talking about this on Metal Stream, mm -hmm. where like the... Uh, the puzzle design is simple in a way that it's not about making things easy for the player as much as it is. It would be easy for Isaac from his point of view as an engineer, yeah. right? For yeah, like I when you're in the satellite array, for instance, because it's very like unrealistic in its simplicity of like plug this in here, plug this in there. The things line up, you know, yeah, the, I the think shapes. There, there's, I, what I was saying was there was a fine line that they did with the level design there, the, the visual cues that they give you for that puzzle to make it so that you might, it might just look like, you know, clutter at first, but then after a second, it, it's pretty clear what you need to do if you just kind of look at it. And mm -hmm. I think that that's a, that's a better way to design the puzzle than having like a waypoint on the thing and saying, move this here, rotate that there and making it super hey, this is, this is ultra, you know, hand-holdy. This but, is yeah, uh, like I a true they, video game puzzle. Yeah, but I think that they hit a really good middle ground in making it simple enough that if uh, the average person, like, with basic logic pays attention for a second and looks, they can figure it out. But, you know, obvious enough that, that it makes it make sense for Isaac to be able to know because, because of his narrative position as being kind of a prodigy engineer. Yeah, and if they if they give away the game too easily, it's just like okay, follow the waypoint. I get it. I'm super engineer cool. And if they make it too difficult, then the player doesn't get that feeling of like, oh, okay, I understand. But uh, right. I, I think they hit a good balance. Like you know, those uh, shapes, those L shapes, line shapes that are on those things that tells you how to plug them in. You can sort of think of that as like they're not actually there, but Isaac is kind of like projecting them onto it in his mind where it's just like oh that goes there that goes there because i know what i'm doing i just want to say as, a, um, as an engineer you this know? puzzle is fucking over so many people because uh they're so familiar with the original they're like i can't i can't yeah. make it one big ring help and it's yeah, like it's so funny the solution is like right. did you out. read the instruction and you're like why would i need to do that i know how to do this like <laughs> right. i need to read the instructions this, this puzzle frustrated me a little bit because just i it would I, because what I did was I was like, okay, I just need, I know what I need to do. So let's pull up all the pieces. And then I arranged them, you know, in, uh, you know, in the air in front of me. And I was like, okay, so that goes there. I was like, okay. And then I figured it out in my head. And then I'd be like, I'd constantly like grab the wrong piece. They'd be at different like distances. And then I'd be like, oh, fuck, now I got to go over here. You're grabbing the wrong thing. Yeah. But I did like the puzzle. It was a neat little puzzle. It was uh, fun to do it in zero G, except for you know, some of the well, pieces. I mean since we I think we're yeah, pretty yeah. much done with characters. I don't know if it makes sense to do uh puzzles, but why not? Cuz I kind of mm -hmm. forgot to do it as part of gameplay. Um but I was also going to bring up bosses as well. Um the you know, we'll bounce between the both of them. Um the boss you fight in hydroponics. Man, I wish he had more health. Yeah. He died yeah, really quickly yeah. for me. <laughs> I was like, kind "Oh, there he goes." Over. He sort of None ran of him over. And I was on hard mode too. I I killed him so quickly. I was kind of sad. That's the yeah, kind of the... place where I think there's a balancing issue for sure. Like when you run into a boss and you steamroll it without particularly trying on the hardest available non-permadeath difficulty. Yeah, that's not great. 
Yeah, well, I, to um, be fair, we've also like played the game a bunch. I dude, right. all sure. I did was no, shoot like, at it, him with my plasma cutter. Damage. I didn't do anything it, complicated. Like, yeah, it's it's sheer amount of damage. The difficulty or the skill doesn't have anything to do with it. It really is just that it seems that some of these enemies you know, just take so few hits. In that bosses. way, the old zero G mechanics in the original make the Leviathan boss fight a bit more challenging because they do. you had they had you had the clunky design in order to avoid the the big tail whip yeah. move. I feel like he had more health too, though. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um. This one, he, cause what I, cause I had the contact beam with me throughout the whole thing, and that was my big like. If I need like a lot of damage out right now, that's the button I, I, you know, that's the button I press. And I don't think I'll use it in hard. Fight. Um. They made the I second got... boss fight way better. I. The... Oh yeah, the absolutely. Leviathan? Yes. Yes. Easily. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Easily. Yeah. Um, but I just, yeah, I, I, re I was using the contact beam, not on bosses, but on just like every once in a while on, on some enemies, if I just needed them to die, uh, the little things on the walls, um, the, the, with the tentacles, uh, the, the, the alt fire for the contact beam really fucks them up. Uh, and that's really what I used them for, used it for, for the most part. I thought it would be my boss killer, but I just never needed it to actually kill bosses or even brutes. So I was like, oh, I feel like this is just overkill, and I probably won't use it for hard mode. Just a couple of questions about the, the Leviathan. Yeah. First, why do they call it the Leviathan? Like, it's big. <laughs> I, I guess, big. yeah, it's, it's really big. Uh, but So the know, cross can that read you a funny. poem at the end of the fight. <laughs> yeah, that was a bit weird, but, you know, it's <laughs> fine. Second, where did it come from? Because it crashes Somewhere. into the hull of the Ishimura. No, it does after you eject it. First off, you're doing that thing again with the R's. Don't I stop, was about right? to ask why. <laughs> so, <laughs> secondly, secondly um, it only stop. gets on It's on the hull of the Ishimura. Um, after you eject it into space after the first fight, it's no, but, able to like grab on because it's got yeah, tentacles and stuff. I remember the way this thing like arrived was it crashed into the hull. Like They thought it was an asteroid. Is that not the case? Um, as okay. far as I... Uh, they might have. Oh, I think they might have at the beginning when the um uh, when the shutters are down and there's an obstruction on the uh, communications uh, relay. I think they might think there's some something about it. But as yeah, far as I know, we in, in this game, did we get a text log for how this came about originally? Was it just something that started in hydroponics and grew, or was it's it something that crashed so. into the hull? The cross has an audio log about it. I'm pretty sure. Hmm. I thought, in which oh, case, I it was, where uh, did this thing itself come from? It oh, maybe really I missed matter, that. Because but... I thought it was just because it makes sense to me that hydroponics has a lot of biomass. Yeah, it. that's that's how so it got this big, it, it I got would assume. It got big and big and grew and it attached itself to food storage. Because right now you're in food storage. Yeah. So this would be, it makes sense that this would be where something like this would grow. Uh, James said it crashed into the hull and started consuming the food and food storage for hydroponics. That's okay. why it got so big. That all checks out okay. to me, but. So that means it was launched um, from Aegis Seven by yeah, maybe the it was launched by the hive mind. mind, maybe yeah. Yeah, did the hive mind just shoot it at you? I guess they uh, have like the plasma bugs and Starship Troopers. That just, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. That. I don't actually know. Uh, I'm I'm not certain. I wonder where it came from. Maybe it came from. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I think hey, Starship Troopers also has co-ed is the woke. The hive mind just shot it at you. <laughs> made out of like recombinated flesh from the colony i guess uh yeah maybe that makes uh yeah but i i don't know if the hive mind would have like to be able to shoot it into space and hit the issue more yeah that would take an insane level of accuracy and i guess it can survive going yeah through the end. that's pretty intense i don't know we might have to uh, i yeah I, i'd consider that kind of an issue here um i think like that's what they tell us come from yeah well, we can kind of segue into talking about things like that. There are a couple of problems with the story. Um, I don't... I'm, I'm trying to think of... I think there are some... A lot of them are the same problems as they were in the original game. Some of them I think are new. I always have to rely on everyone's memories. The USM memories. Valor. The uh, ship that was waiting... The military ship that was waiting there that knew about the threat uh, that was on standby that had a text log for uh, with instructions based on the threat, and they all get overwhelmed by one ne necromorph. And I want to be to back you up there. It is one attack necromorph. It is not anything else. There's nothing else to yeah. it. There's no because they <laughs> they tell us in this. Uh, I can't remember if it was in the original. It's definitely in this one. 
that the necromorphs all have like purpose like some of them are converters some of them are, like you know the, like the gaseous mm -hmm. ones some of them get around easier or faster and some of them are a result of the thing they're infecting but the the standard necromorphs like their whole purpose is to kill to provide bodies for the marker slash anything else to take advantage of it which we see a lot and it's really cool like the the creepy bat ones like jump onto corpses and turn them into necromorphs like okay yeah thumbs up i understand yeah you're telling me one standard necromorph being chen not only did he kill, because you find the um, resulting sort of mess, you find that, he, he, that that one crash lands and then kills all three marines that are I, presumably opening up that shuttle, right? So they can see him. It's really hard to envision how this happens. I yeah, think it's, it's a big issue chat, with the story. Someone in my chat said that they, that they thought it was dead and they brought the necromorph and the shuttle or the escape pod to the morgue where it came out and killed the doctors there or something. That's what someone said. So what I we don't know. see, we find the, the shuttle. What we see in the game is the pod is yeah. sort of sitting there, and there are three dead soldiers around it with a bunch of blood like splattered everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're all like, chopped. How up. on earth did this happen? They know. Uh, it's hard it to believe. It is definite. Yeah, it's it, it's a problem that needs it needs to be fixed. You know, in order to make it not be a problem, especially when you know you, we learn the purpose of the ship is to go there knowing that there might be an infection like this, um, they should be doubly prepared. And even if they were just normal soldiers, like, come on, you, like, look what Isaac's doing, man. Like, normal soldiers just should be able to kill one necromorph without... Yeah, and I, I do think that kind of presents a problem, to be honest with you. It's like, look, I love Isaac, and I think he's a badass, and I can even believe he can do as much as he can do, but if he can do as much as he can do, the military who have been prepped for this, they should be better. Like, come on. Yes. The, the reason know. that you can excuse the, you know, the outbreaks is because it's it's this multi-leveled issue of it, these outbreaks happen in non-combat locations where there aren't a lot of soldiers and weapons. You have the markers influence that's making everyone yeah. go insane and nuts anyway. And you have the unitologists who are helping it. Um, so, you know, these three things make it believable that it could happen on the Ishimura and Age of Seven. But on the Valor, when they're like, it's a military warship and they're ready for it. Yeah, that's just, I don't buy it. It's a problem with a story that needs to be fixed. And it can be fixed. It can, uh, it's yeah. It's just a matter of... They just Maybe have Chen yeah. morph into a, a brute instead? No. Um, I think it needs to be stuff. that... Can we just make it so um, the honestly, Maka fucks would... everyone up on the Valor? Yeah, the, as they get close, the marker influences them. Or you could have um, when you kill the Leviathan or during the Leviathan remnant fight when it's on the outside, the Valor is approaching and like the Leviathan attacks the Valor. Um, Here it is, by the as way. As that's happening. so Because someone just said, uh, you know, that, yeah. that medical theory, right? It just looks like the shuttle crash lands here, or rather they, I guess, accept it into their ship. And it sort of, I think the implication with this is that it crashes into a wall and then breaks open... And then it kills the three marines that were here. Mm. Yeah, I don't believe it. Up. I just don't. I don't either. I mean, they'd look in, and even if it was like a super fucking scary monster, they wouldn't open it up. Well, even if it jumps out immediately, three marines versus one necromorph, only one of yeah. them needs to shoot it properly. Yeah, they and know plus what all the other marines in the building. Yeah, it's hard. It's very hard for me to believe. What they're going to be doing. This isn't... Yeah, and Hammond, people best who are just, just gonna, like, to mass. Best to just Hammond ignore that. Hammond is able to kill necromorphs, remember? Yeah, he is. So. Yeah. Best to just ignore that is just so much of a shame when everything else is so strong. Those are, I mean, I don't see why they couldn't um, have fixed this up. The um, problem in the original yeah. two. Yeah, it's Well, no, but I, I mean, you just figure if they, if they had so much care with all the other aspects of the story, it's like, ah. Eh. You guys probably wow, could have tightened this, one, this yeah, up. Well, and yeah, and yeah, someone yeah. just said, what if they didn't know to shoot the limbs? Funnily enough, um, it's a bit of a meme to shoot the limbs and stuff. If you just shoot the the body, they do still die. Like, yeah, that's true. It's not like you, you have, have to shoot them in the limbs. It's just, yeah, it's just in the, more um, efficient. In the anime, though, the Dead Space Downfall, the, um, the sort of side story that takes place on the Ishimura right before the fall of it, they, they do sort of explain that the, the security force aiming pistols to center of mass is the reason why the Ishimura kind of gets overwhelmed because they don't really understand how to kill them. And, uh, and it's actually the, it's the group of I people can believe in, that, that, in that movie that kind of figure out, Hey, yeah, knocking off their limbs. That's what, that's what we got to do. Cause, uh, getting a lot of necromorphs at once and on a ship that's not designed for military. Like I, I can believe a lot of different, this is the thing I could have believed this better if they hadn't shown me more. 
if they had left it more vague, I could be like, I can imagine how this may have happened, maybe. But it was still always like, just Chen, huh? <laughs> like, he oh, just... Yeah. Hmm, all right. Next yeah, it's, it's really hard to, uh, it's hard to defend, isn't it? It's like, well, <laughs> I mean, maybe he, best, uh... uh... Best not think about it. <laughs> best not think about it. has plus 16 to army killing, according to chat. That makes sense. I guess maybe Chen, Chen was a su super ultra necromorph. Necromorphs plus. don't even have chins. No, you don't. You're right. <laughs> one hey, special. I'm about to show the part of this that was really amusing that um, the equivalent has happened for a lot of people. Earlier in the game, I actually got a brute stuck on one of the electric pads basically indefinitely. He was stuck on the... Nice. He got zapped like 30 times in a row and he just sat there until I think I got him out by um, being so close to him it baited a particular animation that got him out. But here... Um, and by the way, it felt like it did no damage to him. I had to kill him myself then later on. But this oh, one, he steps on it once, and um, a lot of people stasis him, so he keeps getting hit by it. But instead, I was smarter, you see, and decided to throw something at him, and it just insta-killed him. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> wait, what? what? Uh, this is the weakest brute in the history of Dead Space. <laughs> it's like a hands down. So, so he, there is, he trapped um... him on the trap, so he just gave up. Yeah, it looked like. I'd be tank. very interested in what's going on under the hood in terms of some of the like the health and damage that's happening to necromorphs, because the final brute that you fight on Aegis Seven, all I did was stasis him and then throw a little uh, little explodey sack uh, at his side, and he died just from that, which surprised me. Mm. So, yeah, and and I was doing a little bit of experimenting with the first brute, where I was like lighting him on fire and using different weapons and stuff. And it's really weird. I think the brute isn't very well designed in terms of the way the damage works with it, because depending on what you do and what you shoot at him, you could use a whole bunch of flame ammo and contact beam ammo, and it'll still be alive. Like, or you could just like apparently do one thing and it dies, and it seems really inconsistent with sort of how it behaves. Because this brute fight for me on the Valor, he crossed over onto the like that shocky pad. I stasised him while he was on the pad, and then I only had shot him like one time, and he just like died. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. It was like a super inconsequential fight, really, when I was expecting it to be a proper boss fight. Um, so I don't know what's going on with the numbers and how it takes damage or how that. It's very strange. I can understand, like in this case, your footage, Mahler, like the lightning bringing down his HP to such a a level that you well, know, it shouldn't takes do one that, more though. little thing to finish him off. Oh, okay, I'm not sure. But like I figured the brutes were completely invulnerable at the front side. So I wouldn't have thought like shooting a limb at him oh, from the front. Yeah, to, to explain original, that, you, I picked up I picked up the limb for whatever was gonna come next. I heard him, I saw him get lit up and I thought to myself, I didn't say it maybe imply it on stream, but I wasn't expecting that to do anything. I was just throwing it because I had it and then I was gonna yeah, use it. Yeah, I mean I've else. got it, yeah. But, yeah. I assume, but that's why I was like, what the fuck when he died? I was like, uh oh. Yeah. So, right. Right, okay. Um, yeah, and In I think the I think original, it's... you could kill them from the front. You could take off both their arms from the front. Yeah, if you aim it right. Were, yeah, their weak points were like a little bit low. They were like their middle shoulder on each side. They weren't sort of semi hidden along the top of the shoulders mm -hmm. and they had some other weak spots behind them. Right. Uh so I don't know. Brutes just seem weird. Now you don't. I don't fight that. You, you don't fight that many to where you could really get a pattern going. But uh, when I go through again, I'll definitely be um, experimenting a lot with uh, different things to see how they work. Yeah, I feel like some kind of bug is happening here because that should not do that level of damage. Or maybe the um, maybe the electricity takes out like a very large percentage of its health. That's what I'm saying. Um, I think I bet... is a mistake or a bug. Like I don't think it's supposed yeah. to. Yeah, I think it's a bug as well. It might be that because of its animation, it could be linked to the amount of damage it takes per like in-game tick. Because a lot of games use like ticks as a way to do like damage over time effects and things of that nature. And it might have bugged out some way to where it took way too many ticks of damage more than it should have. I'm not sure, but um, the I brutes in this just did not seem to be an issue. Because no, not really. Only the first one was any kind of challenge, and it wasn't even a challenge. It was just like oh. I'll stay you and I'll one, move um, around you and The first one was almost a challenge and then I walked him over to the staircase uh, that has the save point on it, I think, and it's just, he can't do anything. You run him around it and then you can get to his back like easily and he's just he's just doomed. 
No, we can't guy. turn quite well enough. It's too slow. It's, it's, you're just circling around a big thing, and that you once you hit the 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 dreaded high ground, he's done for. Yeah. You can just yeah. Yeah, I feel like the I, something something was up with the brutes in this. They're just not that um, intimidating. I feel like they die too. Well, I will easy. say, I think they need to have some built-in stasis resistance or something. I think both uh, brute. Well, funnily enough, I'm pretty sure stasis doesn't apply to them as well as it does everything else. They get out of it a little bit not quicker. Not quite as well. They can turn around better. Yeah, um, this is what I've noticed. I was gonna say, I think they're too easy in the original and in the remake. Yeah, stasis, in, get behind them, blast them in the back. Stasis, yeah. get behind them. In the original, them in you don't ever have to get behind them. You just have to shoot their arms off. It's oh, well, definitely so more of a. It's, more it's of a almost DPS like check. a point of fun for me when when the one for, that kills Hammond, right? The uh, the like boosted brute. He comes out, you just stasis, stand behind, just go, and then a second he like looks like the blue is going off from stasis, apply stasis again. It's just like, yeah, this is supposed to be kind of an engaging boss fight where he runs at you and you dodge and you try and shoot the back and then pick things up, throws it, you know, like all making use of the dead space mechanics. But ultimately, it's like, why would I do any of that? I'm just gonna yeah, freeze him and shoot. Um... It's kind of just one of the like this game shines when you have necromorphs in the varying arenas to fight. Yeah, whether attacking small you hallways once. or large. Yeah, and, and rooms. credit to the different kinds of necromorphs that keep making me think about how I'm going to take them down, and the environment's changing and little pieces of things on the floor. I feel like it's, I could play these mo uh, missions again and again and have different results because I'm picking up different things or reacting different ways. Brutes, on the other hand, like. I'm not even sure Br Brutes benefit from being a part of a group of them because they mostly start to cross paths. That happened once in uh, Age of Seven that almost made it easier because uh, like they can't get past the Brute to get to you and you can just freeze the Brute yeah. and then you freeze all of them. And it's just like, yeah. But, you know, um, I think, funnily enough, thinking about it now and talking about it now, the Brute might actually be the one they need to do the most work with out of all of them and you wouldn't have thought that would be the I case. Would, yeah, I would agree. I think the Brute needs to have... Um fewer but maybe more distinct weak points on each arm that you have to get behind like if you had to take off both arms instead of just stasising him once and just shooting weak spots a few times and having him die i'd make him stasis resistant uh, where he's just like so big the stasis doesn't have as much of an effect on him or something like that to just make mm -hmm. him more difficult and maybe and just sort of have him be his own dedicated thing uh you you have an arena to fight him in a few times or maybe he, you know, he, it ambushes you and, you know, knocks you into some sort of a place to fight it in. Um, on, but, um, yeah, how it's implemented, you know, pretty, pretty weak. On the note of these sorts of things, I feel like it's suitable. Should we talk about the final boss, Mr. The Hivemind? Mr. Hivemind. Um, Mr. He's fine. How do you know it's not you a know, Mrs.? He's fine. I asked fine him. final boss. Uh, I... Uh, it sort of gets into an, a, a minor weird thing that, like, I noticed, but I guess Mahler didn't maybe, I don't know, maybe it's just my copy, but I don't know. Um, so, I the way that Isaac sort of behaves in this game is really, really good, except for one thing that I don't like. Oh, no, two. There's two things I don't like. For, minor one first. Um, it's purely cosmetic. Um, in zero gravity, you can lift off from the ground and start floating. That's cool. In Dead Space 2 and 3, though, uh, Maybe it was in two. I think it was in two. It was in three. When you're like sprinting forward and then you lift off, your character like really, it, it really um, naturally just sort of pushes off the ground and you go into and you go into the air. Um, it's it's it looks very smooth to the point where I think they specifically made it with that in mind. And that's not present in this game. If you're sprinting forward or moving forward and you begin to rise up in zero gravity. Um, the animation looks not great for it, uh, to where it almost looks weird. And it's kind of strange that they didn't, uh, uh, make an animation like the old Dead Space games have, where if you're sprinting forward and you press Z to lift off, Isaac very naturally just sort of like runs and, you know, just steps up and he's in space now. It looks really neat. Um, but, uh, minor thing. But the other thing that I was having a problem with, I had a problem with this boss, not because of the boss or anything. Um, and I say problem in many quotes, but it was because there seems to be like the, the game wants you to, it like auto sprints for you. Um, I noticed this when I was in zero gravity, uh, when I was fighting the Leviathan remnant in space is when I first really noticed it. But there would be times where I'm like, I'm, I want to go forward and I would press shift to sprint, but I would like already have been sprinting for some reason. And then I would cancel the sprint by pressing shift. 
and I have no idea why, and there's no option to toggle this off in the, the, the settings, but it happens also when you're on the ground where I would be wanting to like sprint, start sprinting back and forth to avoid the tentacles from hitting you. And I would just like cancel apparently an automatic sprint um, or just by pressing W, I would be in a sprint. And I, and I never like that. I don't know what it is. Um, I don't know if it was my specific game and if that was a, like a, a weird bug or some sort of a control issue, but it was kind of frustrating in this fight when I want to be constantly moving and starting and stopping with the tentacles. And it would be, it just, I just like, oh, I press shift. Of course I'll be sprinting. Nope, you're already sprinting. Now you're not shift anymore. Now you're slow and the tentacle hit you. And I'm like, why the fuck is this a thing? No, if, I, if shift is held down, I want to be sprinting. If it's not held down, then I don't want to be sprinting. But I don't know, I, I guess the devs have other plans. No, I, I experienced the same thing a few times, not just the final boss. I don't know if it was, in my case, if it was like the game auto sprinting and me canceling the sprint or just That's my sprint didn't, yes. or if it just didn't register at all. Be because That's what I figured in, it was in my case. Yeah, because in every video game, you know, it works away and this game's like, no, we're, you, you want to sprint, even though right. you're not pressing the shift key. We're just, you're just going to be sprinting. Sprint and hold crouch are evil. Mm. Um, it's, it's definitely a, um, it's, it's, it's just annoying. I don't know why it does that, but it, it got annoying in the, in, in a couple fights By the way, where I wanted to be sprinting and it just doesn't. I need people to appreciate this. Go watch Fringy dealing with this fucking part of the game with clown sticks. Now look at what I'm doing, right? Oh my God. I did the same thing. It was, a I'm not, I'm not particularly good with mouse and keyboard, but look at the precision of how I can move the cursor to be matching with this target. Like it's, yeah. it's you can't fucking do that on clown sticks. <laughs> like with, oh with yeah. clown sticks are so horrid God. for shooting. It was so bad. It's just I felt like, I felt no, so bad me. for Friggy. It was so painful. Because mm -hmm. I had to do the whole boss again. But I was playing uh I was playing on PC with the the just because of the setup that I needed to do to make it stream properly, because my computer would be chugging along on this one, streaming and playing it at the same time, and I was using the clown sticks and then I died. And, oh, and let me and let me clarify. So... When I say you cannot do it on clown sticks, I don't mean you can't complete the game. I mean, that would I be a retarded fucking thing yeah. to say because of course clown you can. Sticks. I've done it. What I mean is you can't do what mouse can do with a clown stick. Yeah. yeah. Oh god. <laughs> clown sticks. <laughs> You just it's can't. A funny the, way mouse, the, term is the mouse so is a beautiful piece of engineering. Okay? It's so accurate too. <laughs> oh, it's just oh, wonderful. God. I find it really funny. Imagine I don't know aiming with these weird little superior sticky gaming things. race. I, oh god! I, yeah, the, yeah the well, truth is the truth. Wow. I would truth find truth. the term funny. Right, we can, any we word, talk about any word you know, where you just inject well, the word I mean, clown in I'll it. I'll be playing this game on a harder difficulty with the clown sticks, so I guess it uh, makes me better. Oh, than you people can it. get really good at using <laughs> uh, using controllers for shooting for sure. It's just man. Like, why would you keyboard. if you have the option for mouse and keyboard? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I can make an argument for um, sticks with gyro being better than just sticks. I prefer dice. controller for this game. It just Ugh. feels right. Ugh. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Sorry. I, just... I, I, yeah. I mean, you can you can at least can reconfigure the whole layout. But like, I remember, like, yeah, I was happy with keyboard and mouse until the Leviathan fight, where you have to press E to fire, and in doing that, you have to take your index finger off of the D key, which is strafe right. No, you and don't. Then... <laughs> you just move your other finger to it, and you use your middle. You use your middle finger to press E, obviously. And then you. Okay, well, in really? the in the heat of that moment where I wasn't expecting mean... to do that, it felt a little awkward no, at the time, actually, where I was no, just like, right. you know what? Actually, I wish I was playing with the controller in this instance, but I, I, I mean, it was remedy. It could have been remedy. How many people? How many people use the middle finger for the interact? No, 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 no. Specifically in the instance in the Leviathan yeah. Remnant fight, if you want to be oh, strafing right. to the right in zero G and pressing E to aim the lasers. Oh well, yeah, I guess that's then all, you that's move. All you yeah, then you yeah. move your middle finger from <laughs> W to choice. E because you don't need W. Yeah. And that is, yeah, then you just press it, and then when you go back, you just go back with A and E. It's yeah. just what you yeah. Yeah. Sure. I would almost, <laughs> what I was going to say is I would almost prefer if I just did not have the ability to fire my normal weapon in that sequence and I could just still fire the cannons with left mouse. Right. Um, Cause uh, I mean, that's what you're doing. It's you're firing the cannons with E and your left mouse still fires your actual. I gun. don't think so. I don't agree. I think that there could be a reason here. If you want to really expend the ammo to kill the nodes super fast, you could do both. I thought that was the reason that they made it that way. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, so really? if you want we, we, to, you, you can, can break open the shield them. with the with the ADS, and then you can use your own weapon on the. the you, oh, obviously, right. you have to in the end of the last one because they they break all the cannons. Yeah. yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if, like, for either for speedruns speed yeah. or just so that you could just to get it over with faster. Because if you want to expend the ammo and just you know get I, to yeah, the think... you know stages faster, you have that option. Yeah, I guess I wasn't really thinking about it for speed. I I only use the cannon up until the last one where the cannon breaks because I. I... I didn't think there was a point at using ammo when oh, I well, had, yeah, No, like, to be fair, I, I, I think I focused on the ADS because I was like, why would I use Oh, yeah, ammo? I only pressed... Yeah, only yeah, but like Rice just said, like, they're gonna... It's it's an option. Uh, yeah, yeah no, an option. Uh, that, that's cool, though. I, I didn't try, so... so I didn't either, I, I just assume, yeah. Something I really wanted was for them to spawn literally, like, fucking 50 necromorphs on the other side of this arena and just... Have, <laughs> I, I was like, just give it to me. I just want to try just it. It's a massive fight. Yeah, let's do it. Come on, let's fucking go. Fucking throw everything. I want to see if I can handle it. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I was saying, Mahler and I were kind of talking before the stream and we were saying, like, man, I would love a horde mode yeah. in this. I would love an arena mode, like an arcade version where it's, like, an endless, you know, wave after wave. Um, that seems I, like a I fun would, idea. Oh, cool. man, if, I'd does play the thing. shit out of that. Yeah, and it's it's like low resource demand, right? For creating it, it's just like take any of these. So you could you could use this one, right? And it could be ten maps, and uh, you know, first map can just be like the bridge in um in the Ishimura, uh, that hall, that big place. You just lock off all the doors, drop a, an easy amount of ammo to start with, and maybe three weapons. You spawn with one. There's two more in the map. Try and balance it so that you know it can be of a particular difficulty, or make multiple difficulties if you have the time. And yeah, you just have to pass up to, let's say, round 10, but you can go on Endless if you want, or you unlock Endless when you beat the first 10 or something like that. And then you get a skin, maybe, at the end of beating all 10 of them. Just, just th that's, that's something that shouldn't take too much resources and be really cool to have, I think, as just bonus yeah, stuff. Yeah, I would, I'd, ooh, fingers crossed they add it as a mode later, because I, I, I think mean, it would be really fun to do. Yeah, Resident Evil has always had, like, the Mercenaries mode. Gears of War pretty much invented the Horde mode, and I'd say Dead Space has a lot in common with both. Like from yeah. a like third person shooter standpoint at least. Um what the, it's free for all time. I got nothing else to prompt. What else do you guys want to talk about? This game. Good game. I mean I uh, fucking agree. Gosh, Good speak. game. Um one yeah, out of ten another, too woke. <laughs> I've got another uh a, a complaint. It's sort of story wise. Uh I'd mentioned earlier that I think one of the issues of Isaac being a voice protagonist is that I feel that even though it's a vastly positive there are times when Isaac should be speaking and he doesn't. Um, and ex an example that really kind of broke me from the game for a moment, or broke me out of my immersion, was when you get onto the Valor and you go into the briefing room, you find the text log that describes the Valor's mission, that it's going to the Ishimura, it could be infected, if so, you need to destroy it. You know, it's got the nuclear warheads on it to deal with the, the ship just in case. But it is And you definitely want him to there. comment on that? Yes, when I mean, you read should, the text right? log and you close it out, Isaac needs to be saying something. He needs to be talking to Hammond and Kendra yeah. and telling them that. But that's not the only that's issue the, with that That scene. specific text log, because, but if it's like every other text log, then we run into that issue of like character now won't stop talking, you know? Yeah, no, uh, I, yeah, I agree with Ragzo, that one. That log, that, that's a good log for him to be like, yeah, wait a minute, what? That's a big important <laughs> one, uh, but... Unfortunately, that's one of uh, that's only one of the two issues that this presents. Um, the other issue is that you read this text log; it's very obviously in a, a placed. It's it's like impossible to miss this text log. It's one of the most obvious ones in the game. You read it right, and um, you then sort of rediscover this information, and it's supposed to be a revelation to you about why the uh, why the valor was here even though you know it um the player obviously knows it you're reading the log but uh it's my understanding that isaac is also reading these logs as well he's staring at the thing so um it, it's it's a break in sort of the story in terms of what the story is telling us and what you've actually given us as information uh so they, they needed to rework that they needed to probably combine these conversations into one where isaac begins the prompt um and says hey i found i found the log in the briefing room the valor was you know they weren't out here by accident um so they needed to you know they needed to fix that a bit right 
And yeah, um, uh, to to provide an, an an idea of like there are going to be the amount of corpses he comes across in all scenarios. You could have it be that every time he does, he has a variation of one of ten things of like, oh god, or or oh no. But like, <laughs> it's probably for the best that he shuts the fuck up uh, for a lot of things. Yeah, because yeah. I get to make like those noises it. myself. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, Isaac I played is, um... this brilliant game called Resident Evil Village, and uh, that that level oh. of character chatter was. What is going <laughs> on here? Kiss. What the heck? It's I never would have <laughs> yeah. known oh that gosh. something was terrible unless Ethan Ethan's commented on how horrible so something terrible. was. He's so terrible. I fucking I hate that game. Like in <laughs> balls. I found that talking thing comically excessive in Days Gone as well. I played a bit. Yeah, of that. that's true. If you want to know our um, shut up. extended oh, opinions on Reaper. Resident Evil The Village, we have an EFAB episode on it. Go check it out. You, this is a common thing when we bitch about video games. It happened in Amnesia Rebirth. Uh, and yeah, it happened little. in Resident Evil Village, where our character is just like, it's like stop, stop Shut the fuck up. Yeah. I, I think they're it's making a, a new really Amnesia game. But they are. I heard game. the new Amnesia takes place in like World War One though. I was like, okay, oh, I'm um, in. I'm like, that sounds um, kind of cool. I think it takes place, yeah, uh, around it, around World War One. I. I feel I nothing but people sus about them. Yeah, because of now. Rebirth. <laughs> I heard it was yeah, terrible. That, uh, that I, I, I like some fear flashes. Mm. It's just surprising. That's, that's literally the worst contribution to the horror genre in history. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> They're not jump scares, guys. They're fear flashes. Surprise mechanics. Shut up. Surprise mechanics. Full spoken okay. EFAB. I, I, none of us have played that as far as I know. Uh, Ackman, oh, you play really? full spoken EFAB? <laughs> you crazy? I, I, I caught it some for of... like an hour. Was it great? Yeah, how was it? Was, it? Uh, so uh oh boy, it. oh boy! Yeah, it was it was so good I couldn't handle it. I oh, nice. literally could not play it anymore. I was not worthy. I've seen some people trying to make the honest case that it's as good, if not better, than any of the infamous games, and I don't believe them. But I haven't played it, so for all I know, no. Oh, if only Fringy wasn't away, he he speaks highly of Infamous. Yes, uh, yeah, I, I like. That means he'd speak well. highly of Forspoken. <laughs> Forspoken is one of the most. It just has the worst fucking protagonist. I've never seen a protagonist <laughs> so unlikable and irritating and annoying oh, that I just oh, wanted Act her Man. to die. We, so what you're saying is you're racist and sexist. Act no, Man. yeah, oh yeah, if hating that character is racist and sexist. Sign me up to the sign game. me. <laughs> According to God of War creator David Jaffe, if you don't buy Forspoken, you're racist and sexist. I knew. <laughs> or it. you hate PlayStation. He did throw that. Well, do, do you remember? Oh, uh, I'll take options. A, three, a game that I, uh, <laughs> I guess, suppose it shouldn't be controversial, but I, I guess controversially said was okay. Uh, was a uh, Wolfenstein Youngblood. The protagonist in that game sucked. I hated them. I hated every second of them moving their fucking mouths. Yeah, that's why I'm scared about Redfall because I feel like of the arcane projects that uh, have come out so far. Structurally, it sounds like Redfall is going to be a lot like Wolfenstein Youngblood, and uh, Arcane awesome. Austin was the the primary. Well, <laughs> I, basically, it's a co op game where you have a a home base that you return to, and you venture out into a world where you do missions in addition to side missions and you know main story stuff, and then return back to that home base and kind of gear up, and then go out and do it again. There's a lot of focus on co op and uh, the cringy. 1980s teen girls from Youngblood are now being placed by cringy Zoomer vampire hunters. So I see, like, not one to one, but there's a there's enough shared uh, you, stuff going on there that I, I worry. Just said you said the level design and combat was neat, right, Rags? Yeah, I, I enjoyed playing Wolfenstein Youngblood. I love the like the level design. A lot of the weapons were cool, and I, I really enjoyed playing it. God damn, the story was garbage, and I hated the protagonists. I, I didn't shit like decision. I didn't like the gear system. Like uh, having a shotgun in a Wolfenstein game be ineffective at point blank range at first if it's not high enough level was really strange. I, I never ran like, into that problem. Work. Um, I I think that you you very quickly reach the levels that you need to be at. Um, I. I don't know. I, I don't know why everyone was uh, complaining about that. It, I did very, very little extra stuff and I was uh, appropriately leveled for everything. So I don't know. Yeah, fair enough. I, I just I wasn't a fan. I, I like the other Wolfenstein games. Although it didn't new, have levels. New um, but uh, new I, never found 
I never found the levels ever, you know, impeded on things, but um, I don't know. Oh, like the the character levels, not the level design. Oh yeah, the the character levels are like well, it, it it's fine, but I I think you know it didn't really add anything. It just I just don't think it really took anything away either. It was just sort of like that's a thing. Like okay, the upside um, at least for Redfall is it is Game Pass, so it's uh it's gonna be a pretty easy one to try out if uh, if you have oh, Game Pass. Alan Wake is getting a sequel, right? Yes. I think so, yeah. How does everyone here so feel about Alan Wake? The dark. I loved the first Alan Wake. I did not play the remaster, though, because they made it Epic exclusive. I never played Alan Wake. So, uh, oh. yeah, I've, I'm a... I'm I a quite Alan loved the original. I, I even played the arcade game that came out, or quote-unquote arcade game. It was on Xbox Arcade, I think. I can't remember. It's like Alan Wake. American Nightmare. American Nightmare, that's the one, yeah. Yeah, it's good. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed I that game mechanically, but I wonder if I still would if I played it today. I don't know. I, I played it um, the month before Control came out on Steam, and uh, they they both really hold up well. I, liked, I played um, the first one, and I got bored of it, and I stopped. And, well, you know uh, what? It's maybe bored I should... of you. <laughs> yeah. I don't think... Maybe I didn't give it a fair shot. I should pick it up again. Well, uh, obviously, if they're releasing a sequel, which... Does anyone know a date on that, or...? I, I don't think there is a firm date yet. Oh, okay. I, I don't think they've announced the... Have they announced the year on it? Or maybe I think it is supposed to be this year at some point, but... It says 2023 on okay. com. so... Uh, initial release date was... No, it's the original. Uh, yeah, the, there's a... Yeah, Alan Wake 2... Uh, da, 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 yeah, da 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 in 2023, so who knows? I wonder so, if that would cave and install the Epic Store. Uh, worth mentioning that... Uh, apparently if you play this game on New Game Plus you can collect pieces of marker something, there's 12 of them and if you mm. do it changes up the dialogue and does it give you a secret ending? I can't confirm, people it in does. chat will yeah. Does anyone know what it is? I'll have to... No, I don't want to know Oh well, I was going to say because we could talk about it but I mean fair enough if you don't want to know Well okay. I guess we'd have to, I mean how many of us have completed New Game Plus? Well no, but that's the thing right? I'm assuming it's pretty straightforward to explain then we could talk about it but if you don't want it, no problem. Well, I, I'd rather just because that's actually spoilers for me. The uh, secret ending that I. Uh, it's fine, Rags. We'll keep it new. nice and secret for you. Hooray! But um, just to to be clear, you have to beat New Game Plus and collect all the markers along the way, and then you get the end. Apparently, oh, that's all I know. Yeah. You, obviously, you can yes. search it up if you want to just get. Um, I'm gonna be playing New Game Plus more so just to be testing out all the other weapons because I only did Hold plasma on. cutter. Am I mm -hmm. having a am yeah, I having a Biden enjoying. moment, or did we not talk about the ship being like fully traversable and backtracked? Oh shit, we haven't talked about. Oh, oh my god! We, oh, <laughs> my god. Yeah. oh my oh, god! Oh, 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 I can't believe it. Um, oh, That's like yeah, one of the so best bad, things actually. they've done in this whole game. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Phenomenal in the original change. Dead in in the original Dead Space, uh, it's a very linear game. You don't really have any exploration options, uh, uh, which you know it, it is a thing. But uh, in this game, they completely changed that. Uh, the Ishimura tram system uh, is a is a working tram system. Uh, as you go to new areas, you essentially unlock the ability to take the tram back at any point in the game. And you use this to revisit areas to get rooms and unlock uh, you know, unlockable Ishimura. zones and cabinets and well, Different uh, parts closets. of the ship is a big thing. You know, uh, like yeah, you can actually uh, freely move between areas that it used to be you always had to use the tram to get around. Sometimes you can walk. You can walk from the bridge to the crew quarters. You can walk uh, down to like engineering. Um, it's great. You can zero G yeah. from a couple of places. It's That's the, right. Like the meaningful, the, the big thing here is that with the, with the sort of addition of side missions and uh, incentives to revisit areas to unlock things. Because there's a little bit of a Metroidvania um, yeah, thing going here. Um, yeah, as you go through the game, you will essentially upgrade your ship clearance from levels one to master. Uh, and getting the, uh, like the, the master override is a side quest that you do by gathering rigs from all over the ship. And then you could go back and unlock things that you previously couldn't. Uh, so you can use the tram system to go to like mining and engineering or hydroponics or medic or bridge, you know, th 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 those kind of places. And it works really well. Um, I, it works I think amazing. that it, in a way, it, it, it just 
it's you use the tram to be a tram. It's really nice. Listen, okay. Uh, really Ishimura just... went from being a sort of game world that I really like to something that I, I can happily say I love the Ishimura now. Yes. It has a real sense of place about it through that change. Someone said one to th someone said nope one to one to three no one to master. One yeah, to one, master two, one, three, one two three clearance. Master. Yeah, correct. It yeah. feels a little bit smaller Four now little. overall, but in a good way because they do in like a sense that it's connected. Yeah, I see what you mean. Like because mm -hmm. you can explore so much of it and it seems so connected, you almost feel like you get a better understanding of it and it becomes more familiar, which almost leads to it feeling smaller. So I could I can understand I think, in a uh... sense. I think what John's referring to is more so the notion that when you go through the tram, you can almost loading imagine screen, that there's yeah. so much of the ship that you're not seeing. That well, you actually, have, have a loading screen. Yeah. The ship is like a mile long. Yeah, like, both was yeah, both, both of you guys hour. made great points there. Yeah, I agree with both you guys. Well, but I mean, like you yeah, were, I, you were I saying, Rex, like... in between chapters, you have that loading screen where you see the layout of the whole ship. And as you're waiting, it's sort of like, it's like the loading screen is the tram ride. It's a bit obvious to point out, but I'm just saying it f it feeds into the illusion of making the ship feel like a much bigger thing yes. relative to uh, the longer. Uh, like if you go from mining all the way to the bridge, it's the it's a longer trip. It physically mm -hmm. takes longer for the you know it, it, they 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 make the train the ride longer, and they have the little progress bar of where you are and all the points you're passing along the way to make it seem like you're actually moving in you know physical space across a spaceship whereas right. you know going from hydroponics to medical is a lot you know shorter so it's a quicker tram trip which is uh, um, really nice i think we so, can safely say this was a universally positive change that like, would anyone make the argument that the old system was better i don't, I don't see, how see you can. what the argument would be it's yeah. the same but also you can explore it freely the only thing I, that was mentioned uh, when we had pacing? we were talking about first impressions with Mel, he said that is there a is there a worry though that it can make the f ship feel smaller by connecting these areas via walkways? Um, uh, yeah, in a although... way, yes, I understand that. I think it's going to be subjective as to how it makes you feel. Um, I but... think it's also massively offset by the removal of loading screens and what that does for immersion, because more of the game time is spent in an uninterrupted way without ha having breaks between chapters. Now. I mean, the ship is as big as, you know, it can always be a lot bigger. There's so much stuff we're not going to. These are all mission-based Yes, there's a casino. You could see the ads for, like, all the plate, like the spa and the counseling center. All, there's all sorts of places on... Like that you see the posters for and you just don't go to those places theoretically there's plenty of the ship you haven't seen in fact there is a lot of the ship you haven't seen um but on the um the note of loading screens by the way i have a quest chin did any of us here because i know i did encounter the tram stopping and yeah. hearing like big cracking noises yeah. yes so I, that was like this time damn game yeah, first time that happened, I was like, oh my god, what's gonna happen? And then it goes, it's like, it's chill. And it's like, oh, nice. It happened again, and it was the exact same thing later, and I was like, wait, is this for when they actually have more to load, and that they didn't manage to do it in time? <laughs> oh, interesting. <laughs> it only, ha it only happened once happen. for me. It happened twice um, for me, which is why I was like, it. hmm. Interesting. I it's See, a good I stop kinda, gap, but <laughs> I I wouldn't even have thought of. I sort of just thought that it might be another sort of intensity director thing where they're like, "Hey, we haven't given them a thing in a little while yet, but they're they're short on resources, so let's just give them a little scare." You know? they're they're, yeah, they're I, using the tram. Could be. I let's thought it was a scripted thing, just sort of meant to you know spook you a little bit. But yeah, no, yeah. Molly, that's a really good this hypothesis. Guy's loading I screen. But yeah, you no, know, that, I, well, in the case I didn't even the... recognize it as a loading screen. If if Mahler's right, yeah, and I bet he thing. is. I didn't. I wouldn't have even thought that that was an an addition to the loading screen if it needed extra time. That's well, what would you super expect? Right? It's a fucking movie game. Sometimes, right? sometimes the man behind the curtains doing some cool True. shit. The remake <laughs> and it turned a couple of things where you had control into more scripted sequences. So it's a movie game. Fucking movie <laughs> game. When he threw that stasis on Isaac Boy, and he couldn't EA move, EA I was like, now. great movie yeah. time. The introduction wow. to the infector, you used to have full control in that, and then they turned it into a cutscene. Fucking worthless. This, I like that uh, cutscene. This <laughs> yeah, cutscene. I personally think there's some value to be had in 
having the player have control there, but I think it's not really a significant loss at all. I mean, do you really? Because, I mean, technically you're in control, but you just watch it happen anyway behind glass, and then it sure. breaks through. So it's it's like, yeah, technically you have control, but it's meaningless control. Okay, I got a, the killer um, argument for how they made it a movie game. The um the Weezers, it's now a cutscene to get rid of them when it oh, used yeah, to be you you kill them. them movie game. <laughs> nice, nice little camera zoom there. I, I enjoy that. The um, uh, getting into the God, what was I gonna? I think I, I lost track. I thought, uh, carry on. Weezer well, I mean, is a pretty good band, too. Yeah, that's a, that's a good oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, Cross is you know, like those were her previous crew members, and she really was invested in like, like, she was really sad to see this weird shit happen to him, and it really mm -hmm. is traumatized her a bit. Um, and she's really glad that they're essentially at peace now. Uh, and yeah, instead of shooting them, you inject them with something which. Uh, allows you to uh, you know, it weakens the uh, the leviathan. Yeah, it's connected to the. Leviathan. Yeah, so by injecting them, you also hurt the leviathan as well. Um, Good enough. Um, yep. One thing I will say, I just I kind of want more. I want to. I want to. I want more. And this I is more, part of yeah. why I think the normal person thing to say is give us Dead Space Four. I kind of want Dead Space Two with this with this version as well. I just want I want the story to continue now. And it's like, well, it does. Yep. You can go play Dead Space 2. And I'm like, I kind of want their yeah. continuity. I kind of want their... Yeah, exactly. Yep. <laughs> All the little flourishes that they can do to sort of, yep. you know... I want to see what they do to Ellie. Yeah. yeah, I'm curious to see what yeah, changes they'll make in all kinds of ways. Because I kind I of... I want a horde mode. I don't actually like every yeah. change, but I still trust these guys that they're making changes they believe to be important and faithful. Like Yes. Uh, and their changes are generally very positive. So... Um... Yeah. It seems it was done with a real sensitivity for the source material. Yeah, they and, really uh, seem to be big fans of Dead Space. Um, yeah. Oh, they I have a complaint. Them. I have a complaint. Um, Go Good. So, the minimap. The minimap, I'm so glad that we have a minimap. It's really useful uh, because, you know, you go through the floors, you look for rooms that you have missed or rooms who, whose clearance at the time you didn't have, but now you do and you're going to backtrack. But boy, oh boy, I think this game would have benefited a lot if I could ping a room and I could set a waypoint there and my 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 yeah. tracker would take me there. Because there was a couple oh, yeah. times they're like, oh, I got to go to the bridge, floor four, to find this one room. I'm like, oh, okay, how do I get to floor four? I got to sort of got to go here and go there. And it's not always intuitive, sort of how the floor connections line up. Um, I had to Google the location of one of the places uh, because it's it's the floor six of medical. Um, it's not connected to the other floors through any place on the actual map itself, really. You have to, like, go into a zero-G section and go up this elevator shaft. Hey, Rags, I think I found there. the part. I'm literally, like, trying to figure it out. Yes, I think right yeah. Now. I, had a, I had a big stretch where I was just, like, looking. Where is it? How do you get there? And I was going through all the floors. I was trying to line up the little connectors where the one floor becomes another. And I was just like, fuck it. How do I do it? And, boy... It was auto-filled in Google. Google knew exactly what I was looking for because a lot of people were also trying to figure out how you get to uh, floor six in medical. Hmm. Well, what's good about the map is it does that alignment automatically, right? It lines up stairwells and elevator paths. Sort of. It, it does it. So the one, it sort of does it. The um, one that's causing problems for everybody is the one where you're walking through the area and then it breaks and a bunch of stuff is in the way. So you have to zero G up. And through like gaps and stuff and the map does not <laughs> really tell you that it like so when you go back there late game you have to remember all of that and like luckily obviously i'm streaming so my chat can be like oh you need to go there and i'm like oh someone in chat suggested you need to go to the coolant pipes area or something and i looked on the map and i just selected a bunch of rooms until it said coolant and i was like oh that's yeah, the one i got go on to the then. map because the coolant uh room it just looks like a long room that just ends there's no connector connectors there the map doesn't show you that there's actually a, a zero g section um and you have to fly up it it's just you just i wouldn't call it know. intuitive uh, um no it's not I, um but that's i mean that's I why everyone at google was asking the same question they're like how the fuck do you get there i have an interesting point to add because i don't think you can do this but i know that in dead space 2 you can set your tracker to give you a save point or a shop or a, or a workbench and i don't think you can do that in this game can you like or i don't, th was it? No, I don't, I don't think so it, you can set um, it to your side objectives or a main objective yeah I which i think is kind of yeah, a missed opportunity on their half uh, behalf I, I don't know why 
it can't be implemented that you can maybe they did try it and it was like fucking up too much and they didn't have time to yeah, like, complete yeah, it. I, I think the theory. only the only thing that I could assume is that they did it for gameplay like or challenge balance reasons more so than like can player convenience or like quality of life because I don't think there's any reason why functionally I wouldn't want to know where the nearest save point is if I want to save my game. Other I than think... we want you to be scared that maybe there's not a save point around that corner. We want you to kind of try to remember, hey, what was in this room, you know? I think it might be because I felt there were enough of these scattered around that you were never really that far from any at any given point. And just looking at your map, it'd be easy enough, but it would be nice to have are, those. Are they marked on the map even? Because I, I Yeah, they I, are. Yeah, save oh, really? and everything's marked on the map, yeah. Oh, yeah, see, maybe. That's I, how I'd I'm find benches probably. when I need them or stores and stasis refills and stuff. It's a, yeah, it's a really good mini map. It's just missing that very key component. Very the often, mini map kind of sucked ass. You thought yeah, the mini map yeah. sucked? Yeah, it was like this weird old 3D one. thing that was really hard to look at. So oh, I the old one, did. right? I never used it in the original. I can't even remember the old one. I can't remember I the old one either. I using it though. I don't the remember thing is, I know Dead Space one, one, one so well. I don't feel like I. I don't think I've ever needed it. Because well, yeah. there hasn't Dead Space one really a... is a lot more linear than Dead Space remake. Yeah, yeah, you've never had the reason to use the map and really backtrack. Um, so now that you do, I was actually using the map a decent amount to make sure that, oh, did I get every room? Yeah. Did I, you know, and, and it helped a lot in making sure that I explored pretty much everywhere. What a great... Min-maxing, baby. Hell yeah. What, what a great ship the Ishimura is, or Ishimura. Or a good ship lollipop for the <laughs> Ishimura. A little thing with the map I really appreciated is um, when you've got the map up, you can still move around. Yeah, it updates super cool. in real time. You can kind of just use the arrow to like navigate as if you're like the arrow, like it's a pong game or yeah. something. Yeah, mini map know. only challenge win. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, like, but you can't open doors with the map up. That's the only drawback, dude. Uh, I have, I'm clearly traveling. Majority of Diablo two, I would play with the like transparent map over the full game, and after a while, you kind of just think, "Am I that little triangle, or am I the druid guy?" <laughs> Look how many fucking gremlin things they said I have to be at this part. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh wow. <laughs> That's my little gremlins. <laughs> my little gremlins. Just like yeah, seriously. That's a what, lot are those, what are those blue lights? Uh is that which... stasis or something or oh, it's like oh, a no, I see coming from something as well. I don't know. Something mm. broke over there. I don't know what it was. Um what Yeah, what is that? I'm not I'm that not sure. Maybe it's like a stasis effect that's trying to attach itself to what the game says is a prop or something. I'm not sure. Yeah, that looks about right. I don't Sounds know. Sounds about right. So I'm assuming everyone here would recommend this. Absolutely. Yeah. Big yeah. recommendation. Yeah. Two thumbs up the bum. Easily. Two, I, three if thumbs you like, up the bum. I'll put an extra if, one up there. <laughs> if you're, oh, that's great. There's always room for more. Nice. <laughs> um, if you guys if you guys like uh, Dead Space, if you like survival horror, if you like atmospheric games and good third person shooters, highly recommend Dead Space, uh, the remake. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm very grateful for this game, and I think it's a miracle it turned out as well as it did. And like Resident Evil 4, I feel like this is something I'll be playing like 20 years from now, probably, you know. Because I'm I mean, still playing Resident Evil 4, so... I was going to say, yeah, I, I, I had been replaying Dead Space semi-regularly. I mean, like, you know, once per two years or so. And so it's just like, yeah, I'll continue to do so, and it'll probably be this now instead of the original. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hope this is not the end of the franchise. No, I hope it's not. I either. imagine. And I suspect it won't Dead be. Because Dead Space 3 yeah. was the end for a good, solid decade. That was a sad way to end... Yeah. Kind of think of it though, yeah, the well, era that EA went through in that decade, maybe maybe it wasn't a bad thing, but Dead Space was uh it, on it was ice. shelled That's during that time. Sort of get yeah. put on ice and then come yeah, back now. It's uh it, it just Dead Space Life. two Dead just Space. didn't make that much money. And so they were EA got worried. I think they had a lot of changes made to three. Three just didn't make enough money. And so they just is like now it's not worth it's not worth it to make another Dead Space game. We're gonna do other things with the money, and it's a shame, yeah, especially because Dead Space Dead Two Space is so well world. received. Even to this day, it's such a highly regarded game. 
but it just yeah. didn't make enough money. I think they spent so much making it and they had a big marketing campaign. Like the whole thing with moms, they'd show like they, it was super cringe. They had this ad campaign mm. where your mom hates dead space. I think is what it was called. Yeah, it was so your mom's going to hate this game. Yeah. I thought it was cool when I was in high school. But then... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The commercial was school, made for I teenagers think. in like the early 90s. You mean my mom oh, won't yeah. like Mortal Kombat? All right. Whoa. I'm going to get your it mom for is game lame. Here. We're not your mom. Like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, that about does that. Uh, space. Cherish this game because it's very it rare is. to find a remake that so well captures the spirit of the original. Yeah, yeah this it, might it, be one of the best gaming, too. like video game remakes ever. Might be. Yep. Yeah, very, very possibly. In it's fact, a I'll contender. It probably is, yeah. It hits a good mix of the few different types of remakes because you have the ones that are kind of like the, the blue point ones for Shadow Colossus and Demon Souls where it's shot for shot. Yeah, it's effectively the exact same game. It just oh, looks and runs not. a lot nicer. And oh, sorry, which one is it? Uh, both of them. Blue point really? have this really bad habit of making very notable uh, changes in terms of art direction and visual design oh, and aesthetics. Uh, yeah. Yeah, art but, direction uh, and but layout and gameplay, the... layout and uh, gameplay are basically a shot for shot remake. Yeah, I, just, I, I know at least for Demons, for <laughs> Demon's Souls, they, they made a point of having things even be equal frame timing, although extrapolated out to 60 because yeah. obviously Demon's Souls ran it. Well, it tried to run at 30 most of the time. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, I was wondering, like, I was gonna read out just a couple of examples of. Uh, there was a recent review of the game, five out of ten, from uh, a certain Sterling. And you know, <laughs> what? Oh, which game? Do you know Jim Dead Space remake? Five? Well, it's um, woke. Of course. What? No, out that's that's it. Would be the opposite. It would be that it's fascist or something. Um, so I just want to read that. I'm gonna read out a couple of quotes from the from the review. Okay, this is one. Quite why the remake felt the need to completely redesign protagonist Isaac Clarke is thoroughly baffling to me. He never looked particularly striking to begin with, but this new one is just a guy. To redesign Isaac is one thing, to be so unstunning about it is paradoxically stunning. Wow, sorry, well, Gunner. So, so if, if yeah, anyone doesn't what, know, that's Gunner right. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> you you not tell him. Well, guess, uh, what the fuck does that mean? I don't like even know guy? what it means. It's like, red salad. Does he just want Isaac yeah. to be the Giga Chat? But it like, gets what's... better. It gets better. Someone, someone let them know. And now you got, apparently they just copied, it says edit. Apparently they copied the face of the voice actor, so they didn't even design it. Oh my god. That can't, that can't actually that's no, real, that's this, gotta be a meme. Insane. That has this to be is, a meme. This is coping not after a meme. Has, that has to be a meme. They, whenever you I put the actor in the game, shit. you are just copying. Is that what is that what that means? They You're didn't even copying. design it. What losers. Oh man. The Sterling like defend Last of Us super hard. Yep. I mean, that's all. I mean, oh, okay, I guess yeah. But there are a bunch of this is well. Things. This is just retarded. What? What do you mean? Like they they do this all what the time. The There's a person's face. What do you mean? Yeah. But also, yeah. you know that there's work that goes by into other it. people. It was designed by God. It was designed. It was designed. <laughs> you still, and he, I mean, you and still got to transform into that data. You still got to take the data and then translate it into like an in-game asset. It's not like your job is done once you scan the face. I mean, let, let's be honest. Isaac Clark looks very handsome. That's a that's a handsome yeah, guy. Of course. He, he, like he guy. looks fine. He looks um, like, he, looks, he looks like a handsome guy. He's he's a normal a person, dude. god damn it. Really really it's really it's how how every man look. engineer looks like just kind of a guy. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like he should look cooler, you know. Uh, I've been I seeing just... a bunch of people say he looks like Adam Sandler. I don't see it. I don't get what? It. <laughs> I don't see yeah. it at all. There, there are like Adam elements Sandler of Adam Sandler in there. I Adam Sandler's it. goofy in a lot of movies, but even Adam Sandler's a pretty good-looking dude. Like, he looks fine, yeah. Um, Adam yeah, Sandler is, was an just, engineer. It reeks, <laughs> it reeks of incredible cope. He got. He made a statement that sounded was just stupid as fuck. 
he got corrected for it and he's doubling down on it. It's okay to of, walk like, back a statement. Is, You're allowed to yeah. say, oh, you know, whoops, got it's that one like wrong. People, it's like all the people who are like, oh, they're just making Nicole ugly now. It's part of the... And like, it's two that's sides the voice. of the same coin, isn't it? It's, it's just yeah. it's equal. And she's really attractive. You are insane in multiple layers. <laughs> Brain rotted by unrealistic media expectations for beauty. Uh, it, it, no, we yeah. must continue the culture wars in all aspects of our life. Oh yeah, you're we right. We must look for it. We we must look for opportunities to fight this culture war whenever we can. The evil backstabbing bitch's hill. boobs aren't as big. Mm. <laughs> Isn't that the I think Nicole looks fine now. Like Dude, boobs. when you put it like that, <laughs> the evil backstabbing bitch. <laughs> they made her boobs smaller yeah. and we're just sitting here yeah. talking about uh, why the writing for her is so much better and why the, the nuances of her expressions because of the mocap work is really nice and appreciated and uh, I mean, I wait know, uh, big, came and said, you should check out the archive version wherein uh, he calls Isaac out for being a generic white man it's been stealth Bro, deleted. Come on, man. Okay. Oh what? <laughs> Generic white man. What the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> what is the engineer? Mean? Yo, Sorry. hey, anyone, <laughs> any, Sorry. any one of you guys out there who has like a link to that, uh, send it to me on Discord. I would legitimately like to. Uh, I would like to oh see. Oh my that. god, is right. Most generic white dudes don't, don't have a mother no, who's in a role just just cult. I just I'm call. Just I, just I, I love the idea that you get generic. rid of it because you're like, <laughs> you look like a generic white man. Then like, I, I gotta write is like, what is okay, I, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm I didn't so mean to. <laughs> I didn't mean How to. How does be one so look like an atypical white man? Isn't that what kind is of it? fucked? It is. Of no, course, yeah, it's really kind of is. fucked. We're already laughing because like the absurdity. This is a real fucking yeah. and thunder. Thank you. It's just as bad. It's just as bad as the people like, oh, Nicole's ugly, but it's a real person. Can we stop? Can everyone Can stop? Stop? just talk about yeah. Is it so hard to talk about the mechanics? The, um, talk about the, the, uh, game. the article says um, he's not so much generic by video game standards as he is by real life ones. Oh my yeah. god. Oh, <laughs> wow. Just a regular <laughs> white man. Sorry for breathing. It would have been way better if he was a white guy with oh, dreadlocks. That would have made it poor that made him right. unique. Just yeah. a regular white man who has a lawn is really proud of it and bought a top of the line sprinkler that he memorized the specs of and talks at length about to anyone who feigns interest. So no what joke, is that the, sounds like the exactly oh, the type man. of thing that this Isaac probably might do. In a domestic situation, it just sounds so spiteful. Would... <laughs> oh, he yeah, he would figure out every way to win max his sprinklers. And ironically, who <laughs> hurt you? Get me out of here. Get me out of this world. To redesign <laughs> Isaac is one thing. To be so unstunningly mid about it is paradoxically <laughs> stunning. Oh my God, what it's like <laughs> if I can, um, Sterling, if I can read the final paragraph of this review. Oh, oh please, every. God. Everything good about Dead Space 2023's basic gameplay, combat, and narrative is a result of what Dead Space 2008 built. Most of what this remake adds is either less appealing artistic alterations or side content that generally amounts to unnecessary padding. And quite frankly, I'd have been more interested in a remaster than a glitchy new take that's less enjoyable and costs more. When you add the you repulsive, hang on, when you add the repulsive context of EA benefiting from a series it once destroyed right down to the developer, you get a game that leaves a sour, bloody taste, even if it's an acceptable mimicry of its predecessor. Dead Space 2008 is 15 quid on digital storefronts. 5 out of 10. Now, I, the one thing I just wanted to say about this is that I saw people saying this on Twitter and I totally agree. It's really cool that you can still buy the original and it's just available. Yeah. 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 Appreciate Nintendo, that. by you. the way, <laughs> you might think that if you might think to say, well, of course you could still buy the original, but oh, no, no, this is 2023. Yeah. This, yes. If you can't buy the originals of some, sometimes publishers or developer, or developers, I remember the Dark Souls remaster. They will well, not. Yeah, allow there you was that. And the then there originals. was Rockstar when they re released the PlayStation 2 games. I believe that they delisted all of the individual. Grand Theft Auto games that they had on Steam. A lot Warcraft, of games. A lot of them and of course, another example, oh, right? Yeah. Nintendo is not very good about porting games yep. over or say, backwards compatibility lately. It, it, Generally, there now, were it's like, two, yeah. two other Metroid games in the entire series that you could play on a modern Nintendo platform when Dread came out. 
You can play the original yeah. Metroid or Super Metroid on the both. That's right, on the, on the oh, Nintendo, also you need Nintendo online. Switch switch. online. You need the online yeah. service. To do that you too, had yeah. to subscribe to Nintendo Flix. So the fact that, and, and fundamentally, I think that a problem I have here is, so EA is always going to exist as a company. I want them to do better at, by way of like the games that they're making and the practices that they have. I don't know that eternally punishing EA forever is like a good way to encourage EA to become a better company. The way to encourage EA to be a better company is to look at the single player games that they're making that don't have microtransactions that are fully featured, complete on launch, and to throw money behind those projects rather than FIFA 26 and like the whatever the next Battlefield if it turns out to be another disaster. I don't know. I want to encourage like more stuff like this. I think it's worthwhile to encourage more like this. Or should Dead Space be left to what? To just rot away forever because of what happened 10 years ago? They yeah. made Dead Space 3 and killed Visceral Games. Therefore, and this is a yeah. whole team yeah, of artists. They should never this is a bring team of programmers series. and artists. Yeah. Yeah. Like, these people worked on the game and they gave a shit. These Why should they should be not have had Well, to, to, to bolster yeah. that, right, uh, one of these quotes says, uh, either less appealing artistic alterations or side content that generally amounts to unnecessary padding. Referring to this incredible addition that fits in with the original story and now story. adds more to it than yeah and yeah. boosting nicole's story and character yes, why yes. are we complaining about this sterling, hard, sterling writes bios for characters and vampire survivors is that not useless padding like there's i mean uh, don't get me wrong i love vampire survivors and sure it's great that the characters have little bios but i mean that is the same kind of it's not necessary content for the type of game that is and yet, the stuff added to Dead Space is useless. And right? you got, like, I just, yeah, there's a, just throwing fury at <laughs> There's a common... Ah, uh, yes. The comment underneath that says, Never. It's really sad to see people put up with and defend this kind of practice. $70 for a game from 2008 is insane. It's, it's, a, it's, it's stop, it, stop. it is built no. up from the ground! It it's is so, so big. It's this is a, up from the ground. You can't, yeah, you can't make the this is basically a remaster. Yeah, I think you can for The Last of Us. The Last of Us Part One. I think you could. Well, you could easily oh, you can make, make way more of an argument for that. Game. Well, yeah, I mean, you there's could, that, but also well, we then five hours talking about all the mechanical and storytelling and graphical and world building like changes. This and, and, and we all forgot about oh, it, the biggest let's... one, which was ex making the ship fully explorable. <laughs> yeah, which yeah. is crazy. Yeah. That's yeah. a crazy yeah. change. It's amazing. <laughs> think about that, and then think, the think about the technology. fact that exactly. Think I about changing the layout of the Ishimura's exploration, then think about the fact that Naughty Dog said that they would not be able to add the prone crawling from Last of Us 2 into The Last of Us Part 1, which it's they build the as a ground-up remake. No, no, it's not. Because you it would change the, the level design. If you watch the cutscenes, you will notice that there was a lot of similar animation. Like, yeah. as in, similar to the point that it's probably the same mocap uh, stuff that they had earlier they would have had to do like facial animations because i don't think they were using the facial capture back then but compared to this where it's like is there even a shred of the original code in this game i wouldn't yeah, I, I wouldn't I be really surprised if the answer so. was no it's sound effects I wouldn't be maybe when oh, I, I, be, I, I don't say. know well the no, value there's a 70 dollar uh, game is yeah. uh, maybe a like, few uh, but like as far as remakes this is go game, like this is and then I, I, game I, plots <laughs> and it's fully explorable with side <laughs> missions <laughs> This and is a fully has, featured game. Well, let, let, let's uh, let, we'll talk about price and value and everything like that. What's everyone's play time? Uh, uh, well, I think uh, I'm pretty sure I'm at 15 game. hours already. Hours, so far. What a take! 10, me. 10 it took me like 13 that? hours to to complete the game, and I'm gonna go back. Basically, oh. like probably after we're done with this stream, and we start up another Surprisingly, it seems like I'm the longest. Uh, my play time is 20.2 hours. Um, I. Generally, take uh, I do take my time with games, and I made sure to explore everything I could. I don't know if there's a room that I missed. There, may, there probably is, but uh, I took a lot of care to really, really enjoy this game and, and you know play it at a nice, uh, nice pace and make sure I didn't miss anything and do all the missions. So yeah, I'm you could, and that's just one playthrough. I haven't even gone back on hard or impossible or just new game plus yet. That's just one playthrough. I don't know why we want to discourage stuff like this. Thoughtful uh remakes of old games that may well see old franchises that weren't for whatever reason were essentially deemed uh non-viable projects to make a resurgence like i don't know man seems well, pretty good to it, me isn't it obvious why we talk bad about it it's because i don't like ea five out of ten yeah yeah so 
Fuck yeah, the developer. So brave. Who, like not put in EA. all of it. I know it's the late. It's it's this point. It's Lazy, an incredibly yeah. lame, boring take. Yeah, EA sucks. Yeah, cool. Get a new opinion. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <sighs> well, boys, I think uh, I think that's about it for me. Well, yeah, fair um, I think we did Thanks a pretty decent announcing. job of, yeah, of going over the bad. whole situation. Good job, oh, yeah. game, and yeah. go check it out if you found <laughs> this to be interesting. Nonsense. <laughs> that yeah. too, of course, yes. And um, yeah, super thank you to um, Ackman for, for joining us as well as um, everyone else, of course. Um, yeah. I have got another recording engagement, so I'm going to have to go now as well, unfortunately. Uh, I gotcha. Yeah, um, I, uh, I gotcha. Been... I got a birthday party to go to. Oh, oh, don't we all have respect? Well, I was going to say, before you go, uh, Ackman, you, you can go either. first for this, because uh, if you do have to go now, but do you want to tell people where they can find you and what you're up to? Oh. Yeah, just search the Ackman. You'll, you'll find me. What do you do? And why should anyone <laughs> care? <laughs> why should anyone care? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I do. I do video game reviews. Uh, I've been on EFET before. Your, your audience yeah, you have. knows me, I think. Yeah, I think yeah. they do, yeah. They're happy to see you. Yeah. Thanks for joining a, us. I have a Dead Space 1 review. I never reviewed the second game for whatever reason. Uh, I have this problem with reviewing sequels. Uh, I usually just get tired of the game and then I'm like, okay, on to the next thing. Um, but I do all sorts of video game reviews and uh, commentary on all sorts of gaming topics. I stream on Twitch and then I have like smaller videos on, on my second channel. So yeah, Act if, Man, um, Act Man TV and the acting mail. If anyone was curious, uh, you know, you have been when you joined us last time for you, it was uh, it was Halo related, right? Uh, it was I, think, I think I kept. Yeah, it might have been for the show, and then I think before that it was uh, after Game of Thrones season eight had just come out, and Good I was God. like, <laughs> I was like in panic mode. Well, hey, uh, obviously we'll have you on whenever you want to. If uh, talking games slash, yeah. there'll be a Halo season two. Don't you worry. Uh, there'll be a Halo season two <laughs> long before what a there's another video game. There might be a season three before the next video game by this. Yeah. <laughs> oh my talk, talk the only Halo. Master Chief will be John Halo. He'll be the John, only one. Yeah, John Halo is the, the robot Halo John Halo. Halo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It could be years. It could be a decade. It could be a while at this point. It looks like oh, Halo's uh, seriously in trouble. Um, but yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. You can find link in description. You can find him doing his doing his Thank thing on kindly. multiple platforms. Thank you for joining us, sir. You are you are now yeah. you are now allowed to leave. <laughs> I'm allowed. How to. gracious! <laughs> you, may, been you may leave. Yeah. Thanks for having me on, and uh, enjoy the rest of your night, fellas. It's good to good, good, good yeah. hearing from yeah. you, man. Take care. Bye, boy. Um, John, what are you up to? Where are you going? What's happening? Uh Oh, I'm John Graham on YouTube. I like to write stories. I make machinima. I think I'm one of the few people still doing that. You but, are. Uh, Nobody I'm, does it anymore. <laughs> I'm quite happy doing it. Sometimes I do like review type stuff. I did a Dead Space stream the other night, so I'm, I want to do more of that. It was fun. I heard and, you had uh, yeah. trouble with launching it. It was uh, happening, apparently. Managed oh, God. I mean, it's, that was not... It wasn't a problem with the game. It's just streaming in general. Streaming, like coding, a million fucking game. things. <laughs> yeah, like I, I literally sp like two hours configuring streamlabs and bit rates and fucking everything. Um, it felt like it took forever to get it started, and then I had like every time I would Alt Tab, it stopped the audio playing. But I was also capturing footage so I could use it in a video later. So that was a headache because like I need to Alt Tab out to get to Super Chat. It was a lot of fucking figuring out, but eventually it got like I kind of smoothed it all out, and uh, it was a fun time. So I anyway, got to the yeah, point that I'm using two PCs and a capture card. So. That's a a good idea. I probably should have had a second computer out. I it, should get my laptop me, next time. Easy, though, and honestly, if I'm playing a first person shooter, that drives me up the wall. But uh, it does make the stream and the game run better. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, but well, it look better at sixty, I guess. Right. And so, uh, thank you very much for having me. I, I love survival horror shit, and it was cool to talk about this in particular. So, thanks. well, love to have you. I think you're climbing the ladder in terms of like person with most. EFAP time and appearances. You're in the top five, probably going to be at some point. You'll be yes. coming for Metal's crown, which is going to be difficult to collect. <laughs> I warn you. Um, Mark, what are you up Hello, to these everybody. days? 
Um, I've up some interesting stuff. Um, I think I mentioned it earlier because he popped up in the chat, but uh, earlier this week I was on Lofty Pixels channel talking about um, that uh, that super gay episode of The Last of Us that uh, <laughs> both of us loved, and uh, the chat kept calling us gay. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's all right. I mean, I, I think we made some pretty decent arguments, though Lofty is pretty famous for having bad takes, but I, I think he's a pretty good guy. Um, and then I was on Metal Commander's channel with uh, Mr. John here um, talking about Dead Space yesterday. Um, I also have my yeah. my own YouTube channel, Mark the Cyborg, Mark with a C. I'm Cyborg Mark on Twitter. And if you go to flagranttriggers.com, I'm, uh, I'm selling my independent movie. I have a bunch of DVDs of it. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's 20 bucks if you, if you want to watch a movie I made in 2010. Sweet. When I had two legs. Good for you, man. That's rad. Yeah, it's okay. It's it's a very campy slasher action movie, but uh, I think it's fun. It's got a lot of heart. Nice. Um, yeah, and and uh, there was like you said, a forge with metal and uh, John and Mark here as well. If you guys want to see a bit more discussion on the game, I imagine you covered similar points, but different things would have been said. And metal was unable to make it today. He would have been here as well. But uh, uh, he's got friends over right now, and I was just going to bring up, because it was mentioned as well, he's got his birthday tomorrow. Uh, I'll be there once I'm done with a different other thing I've got set for recording, because I'm just non-stop these days. Um, but he's going to be doing, I think, Gardic Phone slash uh, Champed Up. Which, if you remember, the last time we tried to do it, it fucking just got destroyed for no reason at all. But he's hosting it this time, so it probably will work. Be there or be square, <laughs> chat. Exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know the deal with me i i'm writing but you know opinions are hard to have uh, uh you know stay away until maybe something happens in the future it's <laughs> it's it's gonna happen i'm sure of it and when it does i want it to happen great. <laughs> where's my video there <laughs> uh all right well uh fringy rags you guys want to mention anything um gosh um no, not really. No. I'm just working. Drink water. <laughs> Drink water. That's all I got. Drink water. My oh, ass working ass. on scripts, <clears throat> making some art and shit. That's the general thing. Um so, yeah, doing the working. same thing. I'll be I'm cooking up them Last of Us videos weekly. Uh the episode three came out just before this stream went live. So if you want to see what we thought of that episode. And have a totally non-contentious discussion with other viewers in the in the <laughs> respective sections for commentary. I'm sure you can do that. I have no problem. The, it's it's a very mundane episode with very little discussion about it from anybody really. So that's kind of neat. It's uh, you know one of those ones. That's Prepare out. Prepare to be called gay. I am. I'm editing those uh, myself. But when there's going to be a bit of crossover with Mando season three when that comes out, and I'm going to have to make sure to get Mr. Fringy's help with being able to get all of them out as minis, but in the meantime, I am, of course, just working on a video, but it's going to be a while. As uh, And everything else is going to be continuing as expected, like Open Bar, Real BBC streams, and catch-ups popping out here and there for us and for the other shows. So, um, yeah, that's about that, I'd say. Nice. Uh, were you going live after this? No, it's an offline thing, but um, there's just so many of them anyways, so there's no point in even trying to explain what's going on anymore <laughs> um things things will happen in future and they're to be excited about i suppose uh but yeah anything else anyone want to mention before we pop off and i, I the, and remember like just say there's things about this game we haven't even really gone into like benjamin matthias and fleshing out like the unitology aspect of it and you know oh, yeah. some things like that but there's just the, again, really you reward the good. The a lot of work went into this game. Please do buy it uh, if it seems like it's your kind of game. Uh, it, it's really fun to play, and I'll uh, and I'll leave you with that. At least throw it on a wish list. <clears throat> we get notified when there's sales. Also, play Hi-Fi Rush. I've been trying to tell everybody about that game. I keep hearing that that game's cool, dude. That game has been recommended to me by no less than eight people. I am wow. so curious Everyone. as to what Theo God. thinks. You guys have no idea because it's like a Devil May Cry style yeah. beat em up, oh. with hack and slash. Everyone but it's also rhythm based, so you're kind of <laughs> playing music with every action you perform in the game, like be the attacks I'm you do. Fascinated by the and it's yeah, it's it's really good. And I like, I mean, honestly, it could be the kind of thing that I've just got my perspective on it, and Theo's going to tear it apart. 
And if it's anything like Elden Ring, it'll be like, well, <laughs> you weigh those concerns more, but also you're not wrong. Uh, I, <laughs> I like I, the game more than you do, but you're correct, and that sucks. <laughs> I, I have a lot of faith that I will like the game a lot when I play it, because basically everyone who's recommended to, yeah, recommended it to me has opinions that I like trust quite highly. So, I think yeah, the uh, Resident Evil 4 creative team is behind it. Well, it's Shinji Mikami. Yeah, it's the Evil yeah. Within team. Oh, Tango okay, game right. What a weird pivot, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, it seems to me like it was probably the kind of thing that a group of people at the studio were just kicking around in the background as like an alpha. And then <laughs> Ghostwire Tokyo didn't do fantastic, so maybe they're like, you know, we could uh, <laughs> give us some budget to get the music together and we could That's have this game crazy. ready within a year. <laughs> yeah, like... <laughs> Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's uh, cheap on Steam. It's thirty bucks US, and it's on Game Pass. So if you don't want to buy it, uh, there you go. If you're on Game Pass, oh, give it a shot. I will mention, depending on whatever the hell's going on uh, next week, we might finally put out that there's an EFAP episode that's waiting to just be released. It was one of the ones we went live with that got fucked for uh, getting like it got torn up and and re-edited to add on like catch up and stuff. That one might go out, and if it does, then you know what me rags and fringy will be doing instead is you know, uh, sorting out like a catch-up or possibly streaming something else, I don't know. But point being is, next week might not be a new live episode, so to speak, because again, we're still really far ahead. But you'll be getting uh, Last of Us coverage no matter what. So don't panic. We're alive and well. We're just doing lots of other things, okay? Now, mm -hmm. on that note, thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for keeping us company. Thank you for the kind donations and the additions and discussions thank you of course to all the guests that stayed in for the night we appreciate it but it's time to go to bed oh well do whatever the hell you want really but um bye goodbye everyone, yeah, goodbye, everyone. Thanks, see you later toodaloo bye, bye, -bye.